Hey everyone. Welcome back for the second part of What If Naruto Was the God of Fuenjutsu. As always, huge thanks to all of my Patreons, making these videos would be impossible without you guys' support, especially with all the restrictions YouTube places on my type of content. As always, the full story is already out over there for you guys along with about 30 other different stories you can enjoy. Also feel free to send me any messages over there if you have any questions or even if you just want to chat. Link to all of that will be in the description. Anyways, everyone, enjoy the video. Chapter 14, Sasuke vs Naruto, Endgame. Sasuke looked at Naruto with fear in his eyes as an image of a giant nine-tailed fox appeared behind him. What is he? Sasuke was actually starting to shake out of fear from the power coming off of Naruto. What are you? There is no way a normal person, especially you should have this kind of power. Naruto chuckled and looked at Sasuke with his silted eyes in a sad gaze. Who said I was normal? Naruto vanished and reappeared beside Sasuke. Sasuke turned and before he could react he was kicked into the trees. The trees fell on top of where Sasuke was kicked too, but before the trees could fall all the way Sasuke managed to jump out of the tree's path. Sasuke looked up just in time to dodge a punch from Naruto. Sasuke rolled out of Naruto's reach before throwing a kunai with an explosive tag attached to it. Naruto watched as the tag fizzled then exploded in a giant fireball. Sasuke scanned the area with narrowed eyes trying to pick up the slightest movement from the fire, but that was when movement to his left got his attention. When Sasuke turned he saw Naruto looking at him with a confused look on his face. That could have killed me if I didn't dodge. Naruto looked and saw Sasuke's hand clench. What is wrong with you Sasuke? Ever since we returned from Wave you've been getting angrier and angrier at me. You wanna know why? Sasuke once again had that dark tone in his voice. Because you did nothing. This confused Naruto as he looked at Sasuke. You came from a clan that no one ever heard of and as soon as you step foot in that place you're the talk of the town. You did absolutely nothing before the event on the bridge, but even then you would have died if it wasn't for me. Naruto looked and saw Sasuke's Sharingan began to expand and a third Tomoe appeared. But you know what those pathetic villagers did they gave you all the credit. Sasuke you know that's not true, Naruto said this trying to reason with his friend. The people of Wave gave us all equal credit. Really Naruto, Sasuke yelled this out making Naruto flinch slightly. Did they make us any nifty little cloaks or gifts, but I guess it fits you to have such old and stupid relics from some forgotten clan. Naruto's eyes hardened a little at that. This guards used to belong to an old family member. Naruto looked at Sasuke as he popped his neck. So I ask you not to insult my family again Sasuke. Sasuke smirked a little. Or what? Sasuke said with sarcasm in his voice. What are you going to do? You may be strong Naruto, but you are still from a nobody clan. Everyone has heard of the Uchiha clan and they both respect and fear us. Or what is left of you, Naruto said this without thinking and almost immediately Sasuke's entire demeanor changed. He got a cold air around him like he was trying to freeze the very atmosphere with his anger. I am an Uchiha I am the elite of Konoha and there is no way a nobody like you can beat me, Sasuke said this and dropped into a fighting stance. That is where you're wrong Sasuke I'm not a nobody. Naruto just stood his ground and frowned at Sasuke. I am Naruto Uzumaki the last surviving member of a great clan. I am far from being a nobody. Sasuke just charged with anger in his eyes. Naruto left the ground in a swirl of dust and rock as he ran at Sasuke, but just as he threw a punch Sasuke ducked and delivered his own punch to Naruto's stomach. Naruto was then kicked in the head forcing him to jump backwards to avoid Sasuke. Before the third Tomoe appeared he couldn't keep up, but now I can't land a hit on him. That was when Naruto heard a deep growl in his head. Would you like some more power brat? Kyuubi growled this out with sarcasm in his voice. No I don't trust you besides I can handle the situation. Naruto heard Kyuubi laugh before he ran at Sasuke. Naruto threw a shuriken at Sasuke who easily dodged the spinning blade, but he was forced to duck under a kick from Naruto. Naruto spun in mid-air and dropped his leg in an axe kick aimed at Sasuke's head. Sasuke jumped backwards and spat out a giant fireball that consumed Naruto. Sasuke smirked as everyone watched as the fire began to spread that was when movement caught everyone's attention. Naruto jumped out of the flames his shirt was burnt until it was only holding on by one sleeve revealing a bandaged torso. Naruto cursed and bit both of his thumbs while using Kyuubi's remaining chakra. Naruto slid across the ground and slammed both of his palms against the ground. Kushios no Jutsu. Everyone in the stadium rose to their seats after the Kyuubi's container uttered those words. Naruto was covered in smoke and Sasuke brought his hands up to defend against whatever Naruto did, 
but when the smoke cleared he nearly laughed. On both Naruto's shoulder were two toads one was yellow and the other was a reddish orange. Yeah Gamatatsu. Naruto smiled at the yellow toad who smiled back. Yeah Gamakichi. The red looking toad was cleaning his ear with his finger, but nodded to say he was listening. So this is your big comeback, Sasuke chuckled at Naruto. A pair of idiotic toads please don't insult the power of an Uchiha. Gamatatsu looked visible hurt while Gamakichi glared at Sasuke. Let me at him. Gamakichi leapt towards Sasuke only to be stopped by Naruto. I will, but we need to work together. That is when Gamatatsu spoke. What's the point? Naruto looked at Gamatatsu who looked sad. What he said was true Gamakichi and me can't do anything to help you. So why did you summon us when you could have summoned our father? Because I believe we can beat him together. Naruto smiled at Gamatatsu. Besides I don't think your father would be too happy being summoned in such a cramped area, Gamatatsu chuckled at that. I'll take you both out for snacks after this is over deal. The brothers nodded and looked towards Sasuke who was smirking at the three. I hope you're ready to lose Naruto. Sasuke charged at Naruto who held out his hands for the toads. Nope we're ready to win. Naruto threw Gamatatsu and Gamakichi into the air while he charged at Sasuke. Naruto threw a punch that Sasuke blocked just as he threw his own punch. Naruto ducked under and tried to deliver a kick to Sasuke's stomach only for Sasuke to catch it and throw Naruto. Naruto used momentum to turn himself in the air and land on his feet, but when he landed he saw Sasuke with a kunai ready to plunge it into his chest. You lose. Sasuke made to kill Naruto, but Naruto smiled. Now Gamatasu. Sasuke's eyes widened when he turned and saw the yellow toad spit out a large glop of oil. The oil hit the ground between Naruto and Sasuke, but Sasuke was already putting his foot down. Sasuke slipped and was about to fall when Naruto punched him in the stomach sending him backwards. Gamakichi appeared once more in front of Sasuke and spat some oil on him. Sasuke made to grab Gamakichi when Naruto kicked him in the chest sending him backwards once more. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Sasuke stood up more angry than ever. I'm winning. Sasuke eyes widened when the two toads placed their hands together. Katan, Sokusha, flanking fire. The two toads spat out a fireball each, but they didn't go straight. The fire arced and went to the left and right side of Sasuke. Sasuke looked at both of the fireballs and Naruto who was just waiting with a kunai. Fuck. Sasuke snarled in his mind as he placed his hands together. The fire hit Sasuke's oiled body and it resulted in a pillar of flame that made everyone back away. Naruto we're not like our dad we don't have a lot of chakra, Gamakichi said making Naruto look at the two toads seeing them tired. We need to go, but don't forget that you owe us a snack. Naruto nodded head and looked at the fire slowly die out revealing Sasuke laying on the ground with burns all over his body. Naruto was about to approach when he was roughly kicked in the back sending him forwards hitting the ground with a thud. Naruto looked up and saw Sasuke smirking at him, but was clearly tired. How? Sasuke just smirked even bigger. You've been using that cage bunshine around me long enough for my Sharigan to pick it up. Naruto eyes widened as he realized what Sasuke meant. You copied my cage bunshine. Naruto stood while the remaining sleeve fell off revealing his entire torso was bandaged up. Do you know how dangerous that is? Sasuke shrugged like he didn't care and just continued to smirk. I see you still have a trick up your sleeve. Sasuke just watched as Naruto gritted his teeth from the mild pain from standing up. But it won't be enough to stop me. Naruto just glared at Sasuke. I didn't make this seal for you. Naruto stood up and looked at his right hand. I can only do this once. Naruto looked at Sasuke while he held his right arm up palm out. Sasuke just smiled as he began to charge up his second Shidori. Fuinjutsu, Tenron. The funnel of wind blasted its way towards Sasuke who just smirked and charged not thinking. You can't beat me with such a pathetic jutsu. Sasuke had a very evil gleam in his eye that made Naruto a little worried for his friend, but he knew he had no choice. I didn't plan on it. Naruto threw a red tag in front of him that made Sasuke wide-eyed. Fuinjutsu, Shukyaku. Instead of sending a jet of flame forward the seal just exploded, but, thanks to Tenron the fireball soon became an inferno that headed straight towards Sasuke. Naruto could only see the wave of fire and just as he lowered his arm Sasuke suddenly appeared with his right arm burnt a little. Die. Sasuke thrust his chidori and nailed Naruto in the chest. Blood started to roll out of the blonde's mouth, but what scared everyone was the fact Naruto was smiling. I told you that you couldn't beat me like that. Suddenly Naruto began to laugh. And I told you I didn't plan on it. 
Suddenly Naruto exploded in a giant smoke cloud. Sasuke turned around just in time for Naruto to deliver a brutal chakra-laced punch to his face that sent the Uchiha backwards. Naruto was breathing hard, but was still able to stay on his feet. Sasuke on the hand was a different story. After the punch he was disorientated and having the worst headache he could ever had, but, thanks to his second Shidori his chakra supply was near depleted and this only added to the fact he could barely move. When did you switch? Sasuke mumbled out with a pain-filled face. While you were busy dealing with my little wall of fire. Naruto gently sat down and looked at Sasuke. You can't continue you know that. Shut up. Sasuke tried to move and only managed sit up. I am an Uchiha that means I'm the best in this village. Naruto just shook his head and stood up on wobbling legs. Just because you carry a special last name doesn't make you the best. Sasuke glared up at him. You have to continue training to get better. It doesn't matter if you have a special skill the only thing that matters is what you do with it. A master with a pebble can beat a novice with a shuriken remember that Sasuke. Sasuke still wasn't ready to give up just yet. I don't care you are a nobody who doesn't even deserve to be called Chunin. Naruto looked at Sasuke with surprise as Sasuke continued. Do you honestly believe that becoming Chunin will make them like you? You are a fool I notice the way they look at you with nothing more than utter loathing in their eyes. Do you think this village will ever give a shit about you? Naruto looked at the ground with a distant look in his eyes. It doesn't matter anymore, Naruto said surprising Sasuke and the people in the arena. Because I have people who care about me. Even if the village doesn't love me I have people who do. Naruto turned around just as Sasuke collapsed with a grunt. Winner Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto looked around and saw nothing, but shocked looks and a few smiles. No one cheered still shocked at what they saw, but that was when Naruto noticed someone standing up clapping. She wore a black hood that had a crescent moon with a sword going through it and a chain wrapped around it. Naruto looked around and noticed that everything seemed to have froze in place. The birds in the air stopped moving and even people who were talking seemed to have been stuck in mid-sentence. Very good Uzumaki, she said this as she jumped from her position on the stands to the floor in one graceful move. You certainly have a lot of power behind you. Who are you? Naruto demanded as he got into a fighting stance. The woman seemed puzzled by this, but from what Naruto could see she was smiling. Well people call me Enmatsuki, Devil Moon. Enmatsuki kept her smile plastered even with Naruto glaring at her. Now I'm not here to hurt you I'm here to warn you. This made Naruto relax his stance for a second. Warn me? Naruto asked confused. Warn me of what? Did you truly believe people wouldn't take notice of a boy whose name is Uzumaki and is skilled in Fuenjutsu? Enmatsuki just watched as Naruto seemed to be getting what he was saying. A certain man is trying to gather up his forces to kill you and anyone who is associated with you. But why? Naruto completely let down his guard to busy listening to this woman with intent. Because of who you are. Enmatsuki looked up at the sky and smiled. But sadly it is not my place to tell you, but make no mistake. War is coming with all its glory and all its horror. So I suggest you be prepared for it. Suddenly Naruto opened his eyes and looked around to see no one in front of him, but Genma who was shaking him. You okay you look like you zoned out for a minute there. Genma watched as Naruto nodded his head and looked up to the stands to see a black cloaked figure leaving the stadium, but before Naruto could go after him a white feathers began to fall on the stands followed by a giant explosion. We're under attack. A shinobi shouted this out while every other ninja pulled out their weapons. And Matsuki's words rang in Naruto's head. Make no mistake. War is coming with all its glory and all its horror. Naruto looked as the scene around quickly became a battlefield. Is this what he meant? 30. Kumagakur. We have no choice we need to act now. A council member screamed out. If what Senji said is true then if this Uzumaki tells Konoha that we had a hand in the genocide of the Uzumaki clan then they might want to attack us, but even if they don't the Uzumaki might take Mattis into his own hands. The council nodded their heads, but when they looked at the rakage they saw concern on his face. What's wrong rakage sama One councilman said as he watched he raise his head with worry in his eyes. What if Senji is telling a lie? When the words left E's mouth everyone looked at each other in surprise. I mean he may have helped us in the past, but we have to remember what his subordinate tried to do. Yes we all remember that Broody tried to take over Kumo. The council room got quiet as they remembered the day. But that doesn't mean the same thing is going to happen again. And what if the Uzumaki doesn't know about our involvement, he said this as he looked at the council around him. We left no evidence behind to even lead Konoha or a surviving Uzumaki back to us. But what if we missed something? A white-haired council man said this as he leaned forward. 
If we missed a single piece behind it could have a horrible result for us. E leaned back into his chair and sighed. So are we ready to make the vote, E said as he looked at the council and watched them nod. All right then let the voting begin. 30. Naruto was dashing through the forest with Shikamaru, Shino, and Sakura chasing after the San siblings. What could they be up to out here? Shikamaru began going through various possibilities when a noise behind him caught his attention. Great were being followed. Shikamaru stopped on a branch which made everyone stop. What's wrong Shikamaru? Sakura called out which made Shikamaru sigh. We're being followed, Shikamaru said plainly. Someone is going to have to stay behind and handle things here. Everyone looked at one another. Heil. I'll do it. Everyone looked and saw Sakura looking down at the ground with a sad expression. Out of everyone here I can benefit more being here than up there. I'll hold them off and you guys go on ahead. Naruto opened his mouth to protest, but Sakura beat him to it. I don't care what you say Naruto I'm staying. Nordo closed his mouth and smiled as he pulled out three kunai with seals on them. He handed them to Sakura who looked at him as he created three cage bunshines. Where does he get all this energy from? You guys stay here and help Sakura out. The bunshines nodded and walked over to Sakura. The kunais are made to shoot my horn seal to ensnare and trap the opponent, but use it wisely it will only last for four seconds. Naruto turned to leave, but looked back in a worried look. Be careful. Sakura nodded and watched as the group jumped towards the direction the San siblings went. That was when Sakura let worry flood into her face. I'm so dead. The clones looked at her and shook their heads. No, you're going to be fine. One of them said as he patted Sakura's back. We just need to set up a trap. The clones nodded and jumped to other trees and began to place explosive tags on the trunks. Now remember to use those to restrain them to allow the trees to take them out. Sakura looked thoughtful for a few minutes until she snapped her fingers. I have an even better idea. The clone leaned forward and listened to what Sakura had planned. 30. The sound group ran through the woods until they saw a blonde kid standing in front of them with his arms crossed. Hello. Naruto's clone said politely. That's the kid from the tuning exams. Thought the leader as his group stopped. Now what are people like you doing in a place like this, Naruto said with smile. The sound nin just smiled but kept their guard up. Look kid we're in a hurry so if you step aside them there won't be any trouble. The leader said. Well I'm sorry, but you're going to have to deal with me first. The clone lowered his arms and got into a fighting stance. All right fine kid you asked for. The leader stopped when movement caught his eye. He turned to his left and saw another Naruto, but when he looked the other way he saw another one. Shit a trap. The clones were holding a kunai each, but before they could stab the leader they were stabbed in the head by two thrown kunais destroying them. The leader smiled, but that stopped when Naruto threw his kunai which the leader dodged and threw his own hitting Naruto in the chest. You should have known better than to take on a jonin. The leader boasted, but that too stopped when Naruto began to laugh. What is so damn funny? Because I wasn't aiming for you. The clone raised his hand in a tiger seal. The sound nins looked and saw the kunai begin to glow and before they could react orange tendrils shot out and wrapped around the group. Now Sakura. The clone screamed out before disappearing in a puff of smoke. The group heard a crack and turned to see tiny explosive seals floating down towards them. All right here we go. Sakura threw a kunai with an explosive tag at them. The kunai exploded which resulted in the tiny explosive tags exploding. Sakura watched as the area was turned into a dome of fire. I did it. Sakura was happy until she heard a noise from inside the fire. She turned and saw that she only managed to hurt the nin severely. Some of them had burns all over their bodies and they were bleeding. You're going to pay for that bitch. The leader growled out as the horn wore off. The group tried to make their way over when a swirl of leaves caught their attention. Sakura turned around and saw Asuma standing behind her with a sound nin on his shoulder. I don't think you're in a position to do anything, Asuma said as he dropped the man on his side and pulled out his trench knives. 30. Naruto's eyes narrowed as the clone's memories flooded into his making him look back towards Sakura. Please be okay Sakura. Naruto turned around just in time to see a puppet charging at him. Naruto ducked at the last second and landed on a tree looking up to see the puppet retreat back to the user. Konkuro was looking the group with a vague sneer in his face. This is as far as you three go, Konkuro said this with determination as he pulled his puppet closer to him. Then I guess we'll just have to go through you then, Naruto said this as he gripped his left arm and brought a shuriken, but was stopped when Shikamaru stepped in front of him. This is so troublesome, but we have no choice. Shikamaru yawned and looked at Naruto with bored eyes. Go I'll hold him off. 
what are talking about if we stay together? Then the enemy ahead of us will have enough time to finish whatever they have planned. Shikamaru began to stretch his muscles as he moaned as he felt his bones pop. Besides that Tamari girl already knows what I'll do if we fight again. This is the best option I can come up with without all of us staying behind. Naruto opened his mouth, but closed realizing that Shikamaru was right. Naruto reached behind him to pull out something for Shikamaru, but he stopped him. Don't you'll need all the help you can get up ahead. Shikamaru just watched as Naruto nodded his head, but didn't look too happy about this situation. But just when Shikamaru turned around Naruto slipped a seal into his pocket. Just don't die on a Shikamaru. Shikamaru nodded his head and turned to face Konkuro. Naruto and Shino both jumped towards the direction that the other San siblings went. Do you think the others will be okay Shino? All we can do is hope that they can win their respective fights. Naruto's eyebrows dropped a little and he frowned. That doesn't really answer my question. Shino looked at Naruto and Naruto quickly shut his mouth. I wonder if I went down the wrong path would I ended up like Yugara. Naruto thought as he continued forward. Chapter 15, Lonesome Demons Naruto was not a happy at the moment. The three people he came into the forest with were now gone. Sakura stayed behind with some of his clones to hold off some sound nins, Shikamaru is fighting Konkuro at the moment, and not just a few seconds ago Shino said he would hold off Tamari. I'll have to beat Gara quickly and get back to the others. Naruto hit the next branch and when he jumped he snapped it in two as he began to pick up speed. Naruto began to see some sand and knew he was close to Gara. Just then a wave of sand tried to catch Naruto, but he created Cage Bunshine who grabbed his arm and swung him to a nearby tree. Naruto turned and watched as the clone was consumed by the sand and crushed. Naruto flinched as he almost felt what the clone felt. He looked towards the source of the attack and saw something that would give him a nightmare for days. Gara looked like something that came out of the darkest nightmare half of his body was covered in sand making him look deformed. Uzumaki I was waiting for this moment. Gara crouched as his single tail swung behind him. Naruto ready himself just as Gara jumped from the tree branch and went after Naruto. 30. Shikamaru was currently hiding behind a tree while Konkuro's puppet was hovering in the middle like a phantom trying to find him. This is so troublesome. Shikamaru thought this as he looked up at the sky with bored eyes. I just wanted to marry a girl who wasn't super pretty or super ugly. Have two kids a boy then a girl retire when my son becomes a ninja and my daughter marries, but I guess life is too troublesome for that. Shikamaru stood up, but then stopped when he heard the puppet clanking right next to him. Shikamaru ducked just in time to avoid a blade from giving him a close shave. You think you can run from me? Konkuro called out as he pulled his fingers and sent his puppet after Shikamaru. Shikamaru looked back and saw the puppet aim one of his arms at him which then went back on a hinge and revealed a hole in the puppet's arm. Shikamaru's eyes widened when the puppet shot a black sphere at him. Poison. Shikamaru thought as the sphere exploded and surrounded Shikamaru in a black cloud of poison. There is no way he can survive that poison cloud, Konkuro said with a laugh, but was forced to dodge when three kunai came sailing at him. Konkuro jumped and landed on another tree and looked to see Shikamaru attached to a tree above the poison with ninja wire wrapped around his left hand. That is correct I wouldn't have been able to survive that poison, but nothing said I couldn't dodge it. Konkuro gritted his teeth and twitched two of his fingers and his puppet fired off a barrage of senbon. Shikamaru let go of his ninja wire and jumped out of the attack's way, but all the while Shikamaru kept a close eye on both the puppet, but mostly the puppet master. If I can figure out the finger movements then I can figure out when I need to dodge. Shikamaru thought to himself as he dodged the puppet once again barely getting out of the way of a poison kunai. I can't allow Konkuro out of my sight. Shikamaru at that moment saw that Konkuro had vanished making the Nara curse. Stupid fool he didn't think I knew he was trying to figure out my puppet's movements. Konkuro thought this from his hiding place under a bush. He is a fool if he thinks he can do that by watching me. Shikamaru began to think through his different ideas as he tried to avoid being stabbed by the puppet. I need to find a way to find him, Shikamaru continued to dodge until he managed to jump behind a tree and throw a smoke bomb to hide himself. He has to have a good enough view to see me, but it also has to be well hidden so I don't see him. Shikamaru took out what little ninja gear he had left and glared at it. Damn I told him that I he would need all the help when he got to Gara. All well it's too troublesome to stay mad at him, but I might as well get this over with. Shikamaru stood up and prepared to put his plan into ran out from behind the tree he was behind while he threw a flash bomb into the air blinding the entire area with a bright flash. Konkuro block saw the bright light and nearly fell out of the tree which gave Shikamaru his location because of the leaves falling. Found him. 
But just as Shikamaru turned and ran at him the puppet appeared in front of Shikamaru and stabbed him in the stomach with a poison-tipped blade. Blood began to drip down Shikamaru's lip as Kankuro slowly came out of hiding with a smile on his face. And that is why you should have never messed with them. Kankuro stopped talking as he felt his body grow stiff. What the hell? Kakuro looked and saw that Shikamaru was smiling with his fingers together in a rat seal. Kankuro looked at the ground and saw a shadow line that attached to him. I knew. That if. Your. Puppet got me. You would come out. Shikamaru managed to breath out as he twitched his fingers and had the puppet slowly back away surprising Kankuro. The puppet fell out of the trees and crashed to the ground with force. Shikamaru began to walk over to Kankuro and Kankuro did the same. When Shikamaru got within arm's reach of Kankuro he pulled out the seal Naruto gave him. Whatever this thing is I won't make it through today. The poison is spreading faster than I anticipated. Shikamaru brought the tag up and placed it on Kankuro's chest suddenly the seal began to glow bright blue. Shikamaru had his shadow detached from Kankuro's as he collapsed along with Kankuro. Damn this is a chakra seal, Kankuro said as he tried to reach for the seal, but could barely move his arm. At least you're still going to die here Nara. He looked and saw Shikamaru just looking up at the clouds with a bored expression. Right as Shikamaru was about to respond a footstep could be heard on the branch with them. The two looked and saw a woman with a black cloak with a moon with a chain wrapped around it and a sword going through it. I don't think he is going to die just yet, Enmatsuki said this as she picked the Nara up carefully while looking at Kankuro. I would suggest you get out of here before someone stumbles on you. With that the stranger jumped off the branch leaving Kankuro behind. Shikamaru looked at the woman carrying him with a little suspicion. Where are you taking me? Shikamaru asked as he tried to move. I'm going to take you where a Konoha ninja can find you, Enmatsuki continued to jump from branch to branch until she stopped. Looks like I won't need to go far. Shikamaru was confused as she laid him down. Someone is coming and the speed they're going I could summarize that they're friendly. As if out of the blue Shikamaru turned and saw two ninjas heading their direction with Konoha headbands on their heads. Shikamaru turned around to say something too, but he saw that she wasn't there. Hey isn't that the Nara air? One of the Konoha nins said as he landed on the branch with his teammate. Yeah it is. The girl said as she placed her hands on his chest. A green glow began to irradiate from her hands. He's been poisoned we need to get him to Shibi or his father right away. The man nodded his head and the two turned back to the village abandoning the order to search for enemy ninja in the forest. Right before he succumbed to the darkness Shikamaru thought one last thing. How troublesome. 30. Shino was having trouble dealing with the wind using Tamari. Every time his insects tried to get close she would blow them all away with a gust of wind. There is no way you or your bugs are getting anywhere next to me. Tamari swung her fan again and destroyed the tree Shino was hiding behind blasting him forward. Shino turned his body around and saw Tamari swing her fan sending a wave of sharpened wind blades at Shino. Shino jumped onto the closest tree to dodge the attack. I need to conceal my bugs or lure her into a trap. Shino began to jump from tree to tree and watched as Tamari kept on swinging her fan cutting the trees down. What is he up to? Tamari thought, but decided to blast the tree Shino was going to land on next sending the bug user plummeting to the ground. Tamari looked at the area Shino fell at and was forced to step back when he jumped out of the trees towards her. Tamari swung her fan and sent a single wind blade at him. Shino was cut straight in two, but he simply fell apart as his body turned into bugs. Tamari's eyes widened as she looked to her left and saw Shino, but when she looked to her right she saw the ground begin to crawl towards her. You now have a choice, Shino said this getting Tamari's attention. You can take me out or take my bugs either way you're going to lose here. Tamari gritted her teeth and glared at the Shino, but then smiled. I guess I'll choose. You. Tamari swung her fan ripping chunks of earth out of the ground while the blades of wind gut Shino to pieces, but to Tamari's surprise Shino just turned into bugs once again. Tamari turned around and saw the bug army was almost at her feet, but when she went to jump she was shoved into the bugs. When she looked up she saw Shino staring right back at her. Tamari glared at him and with what little bit of her chakra left she swung her fan catching Shino in the side with a wind-infused fan. Shino was slammed into a tree while he gritted his teeth in pain he could feel that he had a broken rib or two, but he also had a nasty gash on his side. I guess I won't be moving on to help Naruto after all. Shino said this as he slowly laid down on a tree and felt his eyes grow heavy. 30. Senji was waiting patiently in the Reikage's office when E returned in a burst of lightning not even making the old man flinch. We have come to an impasse, E stated and watched as Senji's hand tightened, but relaxed. I want to hear why you want this Uzumaki killed, but if I suspect you of lying I will kill you myself. 
Senji for just an instant glared at the rakage, but relaxed once again. E what could I gain from lying to you? E kept watching Senji showing no emotion. I want to make sure I keep the people who helped me kill off that clan safe. If this Uzumaki tells the right people it could be very disastrous for you. I'm only doing this to help you why would I lie? E smiled and this made Senji cautious as he slowly placed his hands together. The problem is that you subordinate that assisted us tried to kill me, E said and watched as Senji stood up. And he said the craziest thing that you were the one who gave the order. E disappeared in a burst of lightning making Senji narrow his eyes as the area he was standing on exploded from a lightning charged punch from E. E jumped backwards and watched as the smoke and dust slowly vanished, but when it cleared that was when E got the shock of his life. Senji was an inch from the crater with not a single scratch on him. You just made the biggest mistake of your life you stupid bastard. Senji lost any calm tone in his voice and it was replaced with anger. Suddenly out of the corner of the office an Anbu jumped out of the shadows with a sword swinging it at the man's head. Senji despite his old age spun on his heel and dodged the blade, but just as the Anbu's head passed by Senji reached forward and grabbed his head. I told you Reikage you just made the worst mistake of your pathetic life. I don't need your help to wipe out this nuisance there are other who would be more than happy to help. He gave the Anbu's head a squeeze and the Anbu began to try and clutch at anything that could he could use to get away, but almost instantly the man stopped moving and Senji released his grip. E was about to charge when Senji suddenly disappeared in a burst of smoke. E cursed, but when he looked at his fallen Anbu he saw something that would haunt him. The Anbu's mask fell off revealing a head that looked like a someone beat his head in with a hammer. I need to double security and kill that man before it's too late. E thought as he glared at the spot he was just a few seconds ago. But I can't allow this Usu Masinta a chance to tell anyone about our involvement. Sorry Uzumaki, but the moment I find out who you are you will be dead. E turned around and disappeared in a bolt of lightning. 30. So I take it didn't go well. Senji glared at his Asiatan that managed to summon him over four miles away from Kumo. Shut up. The man immediately clamped his mouth shut. Change of plans we need to find some help from some very special people. Tell everyone that we're going find a certain group of people who have black cloaks and red clouds called Akatsuki a little visit. Senji's eyes seemed to sparkle with a black fire. 30. Naruto back flipped to dodge several spears made out of sand which embedded themselves into the trees. Damn I can't get close to him. Naruto watched as more sand seemed to bond to Gara's body. What's the matter Uzumaki are you afraid of me? Gara said this with an insane smile on his face as he sent sand-shaped shuriken at Naruto. Naruto summoned another clone that grabbed his arm and swung above the shuriken, but the clone ducked just in time to avoid the spinning sand. Gara looked at the clone and Naruto just as both pulled out those familiar red tags. Fuinjutsu, Shukyaku. The two fire streams collided with Gara's sand body and began to turn the sand into glass, but suddenly the sand around Gara erupted into a sandstorm that blasted both Naruto and his clone away. You're going to have to do a lot better than that Uzumaki. Gara held his arm forward and Naruto was nearly swallowed by sand, but his clone wasn't as lucky. Damn it I can't get close enough. Naruto looked back and saw Gara smiling at him. But I can't give up if I lose then my home is going to be destroyed. Naruto placed his hands together. Suddenly with a burst of chakra 20 clones appeared around Naruto. Gara's eyes went wide as he saw all the clones. Where does he get this power? Suddenly all the clones and Naruto charged at him. You will prove my existence Naruto Uzumaki. Gara began to suck in a lungful of air. Futan, Mugen Sajin Daitapa, Wind Release, Infinite Sand Cloud Great Breakthrough. Gara blew out a wave of wind combined with sand that blasted all of the clones to dust, but before the last clone died it smiled confusing Gara. Suddenly Gara heard a sound behind him and when he turned around to see what it was he saw Naruto already in the process of stabbing a kunai into his back, but, thanks to the sand armor it didn't penetrate that much. Gara growled and swung his tail catching Naruto in the chest ripping his bandages on his chest right off and throwing him to a tree. You cannot beat me Uzumaki. But Naruto just smiled at the beast before him and said one word. Boom. Gara's eyes went wide as he was consumed in a giant fireball that destroyed three trees that were around him. Naruto slowly stood up and his bandages fell of revealing a tattoo-looking seal that started on his chest on ended on his back. The seal had some sort of storm brewing in the front and on his back it showed a fox-looking creature. Naruto watched as the smoke and rubble finally began to clear away and that was when he saw Gara still standing and very much pissed off. This is getting bad I'm starting to run low on chakra. Gara looked up at Naruto with rage in his eyes and gave off a roar. Suddenly Gara was consumed by a pillar of sand that shot upwards forcing Naruto to jump backwards. 
Naruto looked up and saw a sight that he swore he never wanted to see again. A giant raccoon dog looking thing appeared with Gara on his head. I chibi no shukaku, Kyubi said with an amused growl. So this is the first tale, Naruto said as he narrowed his eyes, but when he tried to move he found that sand was wrapped around his ankles. Shit. Naruto looked up and saw more sand falling towards him ready to crush him. I have just one chance. Naruto bit his thumb and began to go through hand signs as fast as he could. Kushios no jutsu. Naruto slammed his hand down just as the sand above him fell right on top of him. Suddenly in a giant cloud of smoke the sand was blasted away Naruto on the other hand was on top of the smoke cloud with his legs bent and his arms resting on his knees. When the smoke cleared Gara saw a giant elderly toad was what Naruto summoned. What do you want brat? Gamabunta growled this out as if he wasn't happy about being summoned. My sons told me what you had them do. Sorry Gamabunta, but I couldn't summon you or I would have destroyed the stadium, Naruto said this with a smile as he looked down at the chief toad. But I need your help now. Gamabunta looked at the creature in front of him and narrowed his eyes. Shukaku why would I want to get into a fight with Aim? Gamabunta stated this as he took his pipe out of his mouth. Naruto gritted his teeth. Because I really need your help here. Naruto said in an almost begging voice. But why should I fight for you? Gamabunta looked at Naruto. Because if you don't help me then Konoha will be destroyed and I don't think you would want that. Naruto looked back at Gamabunta who sighed. Fine, but the next time you summon me you better have sake. Gamabunta pulled his dagger out of its sheath just in time to see Gara put his hands together in a tiger seal. Suddenly Gara went limp which made Gamabunta curse. Naruto was confused until he looked and saw Shukaku's eye begin to spin and change color. I'm free. Shukaku screamed this to the sky as he began to laugh like a maniac. Oh, goody someone to slaughter. Shukaku reeled backwards while sucking in a massive amount of air. I'm going to jump. Gamabunta warned Naruto who applied chakra to his feet and hands to stay on the toad. Futon, Rinkudan, wind release, drilling air bullet, Shukaku spat out a compressed sphere of wind at Gamabunta who jumped over it. Gamabunta put his hands together. Sutan, Tepodama, water release, gunshot, Gamabunta spat out his own sphere, but instead of being wind it was water. Shukaku looked up and spat out his wind sphere and when the two attacks connected the area was drenched in the water. As Gamabunta landed on the ground he took his dagger and slashed Shukaku's arm off with some difficulty. Damn he's tough I barely made that cut. Gamabunta though to himself with a glare. Shukaku turned and faced Gamabunta with rage in his eyes. You fucking bastard I'll kill you. Shukaku began to suck in more air forcing Gamabunta to try and dodge his attacks. What should we do? Naruto shouted as he tried to stay on the moving toad's head. You need to wake up the medium, Gamabunta said as he dodged yet another bullet of air. The what? Naruto looked at Gamabunta who let out a sigh. The kid on his head wake him up, Gamabunta said as he saw Naruto smile with a glint in his eyes. All right just get me close enough, Naruto said as he began to draw on Kyubi's chakra. Gamabunta nodded his head and began to charge at Shukaku while dodging his air bullets. Shukaku's eyes widened as he saw an image of a giant fox behind Naruto. When Gamabunta got close enough Naruto jumped off his head with the added chakra and before Shukaku's sand could stop him Naruto delivered a punch to Gara's head. No I just got here. Shukaku screamed this out just as his body began to break apart. Gara woke up and found himself falling out of the sky with Naruto with him. The landed on the ground with a loud thud, but the two surprisingly got up despite their injuries. How are you so strong? Gara asked as he gathered what little bit of his chakra and made his sand come to him. Because I fight for everyone who was ever close to me? Naruto said this as he took out a kunai and slashed his hand opened and smeared the blood on the seal. I know what it's like through Gara. I've been in that dark and lonely place, but I'm telling you that fighting all by yourself is not true strength fighting with others as Naruto then put his hands together and began to concentrate. I only have three seconds I better make them count. Suddenly the seal on Naruto's body began to glow and spread until Naruto's entire body seemed to shimmer like wind. Fuinjutsu, Makazit, storm caused by the devil's hand. Naruto charged at Gara as the sand came at Naruto, but instead of moving out of the way Naruto ran straight towards it. As soon as the sand came into contact with Naruto it vanished surprising Gara. but before he could react Naruto punched Gara in the face sending him skidding backwards. Gara managed to stop himself from going any farther back and willed his sand to surround Naruto. Naruto looked around as he saw the seal begin to fade away. I have to end this and now. Naruto watched as the sand came pelting at him with force. 
Suddenly the sand vanished once again Gara watched as Naruto disappeared and then reappeared in front of him delivering a divesting kick to the side of Gara's head that sent him smashing straight into a tree. Gara fell to his back and was gasping for breath as blood dripped from his head. Gara looked up and saw the seal begin to disappear leaving behind a tired Naruto. How? Simple my clan developed a special seal that allows us to manipulate the states of matter, Naruto said as he collapsed on the ground. In short it allowed me to turn your sand into dust, but it only lasts for 3 seconds. I can tell you don't have anything left either Gara, but please don't live this life anymore it will only bring sadness. At that Naruto blacked out from exhaustion. Gara looked at Naruto and held his hand towards the boy. What remained of his chakra was infused into the remainder of his sand that slowly crept towards the boy ready to end his life, but that was when it stopped. Don't live that life it will only bring sadness. Gara began to shake his head trying to get rid of Naruto's voice. His strength comes from the love of others is that why he is strong. Love. Gara lowered his hand and looked up at the sky as he slowly closed his eyes. Chapter 16, The Search for the Hokage. Naruto slowly opened his eyes to see the white ceiling of the hospital, but when Naruto turned to his left he saw Hinata with her head on his bed asleep and Jiraiya standing at the doorway with his arms crossed. So you're finally awake. Jiraiya smiled as Naruto nodded his head, but was still confused. What happened? Naruto asked as he rubbed his head trying to get rid of the cobwebs blocking his memories. Jiraiya's face suddenly got a depressed look about it. We won the fight, but we lost some good men and women. Jiraiya looked at the ground and said the one thing that he knew would hit Naruto hard. Also Sarutobi died in order to try and kill off the one who started this entire thing. Naruto's eyes were wide when he heard that Sarutobi died. That's not possible the old man is too strong to be taken down that easily. Naruto looked at Jiraiya, but he still wouldn't met the Uzumaki's eyes. When is his funeral? That's just it Naruto you've been out for three days, Jiraiya stated shocking Naruto. That seal you used nearly killed you. It not only drained your supply to a dangerous level it drained a good chunk out of your other source as well. Jiraiya watched as Naruto gently reached up and grabbed his shoulder. I don't think it is safe to use that again, but before you interrupt let me explain. That seal was meant for people who have a considerable amount of chakra and don't get me wrong you do have that, but what you don't have is control. I warned that seal I placed on you was a temporary fix that you would still need more training to fix that problem, but you didn't listen did you? Naruto looked away from Jiraiya's stern look. I had no choice if I didn't do what I did then the village might have been destroyed. Jiraiya heard a groan and looked to see Hinata moving around threatened to wake up. I know, but every clan has a fall point Naruto and your clans was their recklessness, Jiraiya said this as he walked forward and looked at Naruto with a sad expression. The Uzumaki were always quick to sacrifice themselves to save a few. Jiraiya looked and saw Naruto relaxing. But I do bear some bad news. Ever since you were brought here the council has been trying to keep you here in the village until further notice, but I managed to convince them I need you for a mission of mine. Oh, and what's that? Naruto asked as he looked up at Jiraiya. We're going hunting for our next Hokage. Jiraiya smiled at Naruto and turned and walked to the door. I've already cleared you with the doctors. You have two hours to get up, get ready, and met me at the gate. With that Jiraiya left leaving Naruto with Hinata. Naruto looked at Hinata and smiled softly as he stroked her hair. Hinata stirred slightly and looked up to see Naruto smiling down at her. Naruto. Hinata wrapped herself around Naruto and gave him a tight hug. I thought you weren't going to wake up. Naruto looked down and smiled as he hugged Hinata back. Sorry for making you worried, but it's going to take a lot more to take me down, Naruto joked making Hinata laugh a little. Listen Hinata I have to go on a mission with my sensei for a few days. This made Hinata jerk her head back in surprise. What, but you're in no condition. Hinata looked shocked, but a smile from Naruto and him getting out of bed quickly silenced her worry. Actually I feel fine. Naruto smiled as Hinata shook her head. One day you're going to run into something just as stubborn as you are. Hinata placed her hands on her hip just as Naruto gave her a quick kiss. But that is why you love me, Naruto said as Hinata blushed. Come one I need to get out of here. Naruto grabbed Hinata's hand and the two of them began to leave before Naruto realized he was still in his hospital gown. 30. Senji was in the woods walking around when he suddenly smiled. So instead of me finding you you found me. Senji turned around and saw Kakuzu and Haiden standing a few feet away. We heard from our spies that you have people looking for us, Kakuzu said narrowing his eyes. Why? At this Senji chuckled. Because I believe the Akatsuki and I can work together, because we have a common enemy. Senji watched as Hidan's hand rose towards his scythe while he smiled. 
stop hide and our orders are to bring him in to speak with our leader, but if he refuses we kill him. Kakuzu looked at Senji who only held out his hands with a smile. I'm all yours. This scent chills down both men's backs as Senji just continued to smile. 30. Naruto said his finally goodbyes to Hinata and was now walking with Jiraiya with a determined look in his eyes, but before he got to the gate Tenten managed to corner him and ask him about him to help with the seal she was trying to work out for her weapons. Naruto promised to give it a try when he came back. Naruto walked up to Jiraiya who waited patiently for his student. So what am I going to learn now? Jiraiya looked at Naruto and sighed. I'm going to try and teach you one of the fourth Hokage's prized jutsu the Rasengan. As soon as those words left Jiraiya's mouth he saw a glint in Naruto's eyes that made him smile. He is a little bit like Minato always wanting to learn. Okay so when do we begin, Naruto said this with an eager smile on his face. Well, we'll begin immediately besides I can't have a weakling as an apprentice. Jiraiya knew this would bug Naruto and that was what he was after. Just you watch Uro-sensei I'll master this jutsu in no time at all. Naruto smiled as he saw Jiraiya glare at Naruto slightly. I told you to never call me that again. Jiraiya began to chase after Naruto who decided he enjoyed life too much to get beaten to death and ran for the hills. 30. Senji was blindfolded and Kakuzu had his hands wrapped up to make sure he couldn't weave hand signs. All the while through Senji had a smile and was humming a happy tune as if he wasn't afraid of anything. Suddenly Senji was stopped and the blindfold was removed to reveal a ghostly image of a spiky-haired man with a ripple pattern eyes. So I came all this way for a ghost image, Senji said this with some sarcasm in his voice. This is as far as you get to see me now speak, Payne said in a commanding voice. Alright I'll just cut straight to the chase then, Senji said this with no sarcasm. I think we can help each other out. You see I know that you're capturing Baijuu and you just so happen still need to catch the QB's host. Payne's eyes narrowed slightly. I'll help you capture what remains of your little collection if you promise that I can handle the QB's Jinchuriki alone. This surprised everyone in the area as they looked at the man as if he was insane. Why would I grant you that? Payne questioned as he looked at the man more closely. Because I know who he is and what he is capable of. Senji smiled bigger as he saw the leader's eyes shine with interest. I can have him to you in a few minutes if you promise that after I bring him to you that you kill him. Payne took a thoughtful look on his face as he looked at the man in front of him. I will consider this offer, but until then you will be held until further notice. Senji smiled as he was taken away from the area. Soon the Uzumaki clan will be history. Senji's eyes seem to have developed some sort of dark flame that seemed to bore its way into your soul. And then there will be nobody to stop me. Senji began to chuckle at the thought as his smile got even bigger. 30. Naruto was in the apartment that Jiraiya managed to rent for the day while he went to do research leaving Naruto to finish his Rasengan training so far Naruto made it to the final stage surprising the sage but was having trouble getting his chakra control. Suddenly someone began to knock on the door leading into the apartment Naruto was in. Uro-sensei wouldn't be back this soon. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he placed his hands together and created a clone. Naruto jerked his head to the door and hid behind a corner waiting with a kunai with an explosive tag. The clone opened the door and was greeted with two men looking down at him. Both of them were wearing black cloaks with red clouds, but they were different in their appearance. One looked like a shark with sharpened teeth and a sword behind his back wrapped up in bandages with a skull on the handle. The other one was a man with black hair, but that wasn't what caught Naruto's attention it was his eyes. Naruto Uzumaki you need to come with us. The Sharingan spun wildly in his eyes. Uchiha, but I thought the entire clan was wiped out. Naruto's clone said as he slowly backed up. Sadly you thought wrong. Kisame suddenly reached forward and grabbed Naruto and slammed him into the wall behind him. Kisame don't kill him we need him alive. Kisame just looked at his teammate and smiled. Don't worry about it I'm not going. Kisame stopped when he heard Naruto begin to laugh. I have a secret, Naruto whispered out. I'm not the real one. Suddenly the clone erupted into smoke leaving two very surprised men who turned back to the room to see the real Naruto throwing a kunai with a tag at them. Itachi and Kisame were then consumed in a giant fireball that left a hole in the building making people run out of their rooms to get to safety. Naruto took one last look at the smoke before making a run for the window, but before he could even reach the window frame he was hit in the stomach with Seimata sending him backwards. Naruto hit the wall and slid down breathing hard. What that felt like my chakra was sucked out of me. Naruto looked up at Kisame who was smiling down at him. My sword is able to consume chakra brat. Kisame then began to reach for Naruto when Itachi spoke. Hello little brother, Itachi said while turning slowly towards Sasuke who was glaring holes through the man. 
I did what you asked brother I've lived my life in hatred of you. Suddenly Sasuke's hand erupted into a lightning ball. Now I'm going to kill you. Sasuke charged with rage in his eyes. Sasuke stop you don't know what you're getting into. Naruto watched as his teammate ignored Naruto completely and continued on his course. Sasuke swing his arm trying to cleave Itachi in two, but in a blink of an eye Itachi's hand shot forward and grabbed Sasuke's wrist and twisted downwards breaking it. Foolish little brother you're still not strong enough to kill me. Itachi just watched as Sasuke tried to throw a punch, but Itachi applied a little more pressure onto his broke wrist making Sasuke scream in pain. You don't interest me at the moment it is Naruto I'm after. Sasuke looked at Naruto who was struggling to get to his feet. Sasuke gritted his teeth, but when he tried to attack Itachi he quickly pulled Sasuke forward before driving a kick into his stomach sending him crashing into a wall. Itachi suddenly appeared in front of Sasuke and looked him in the eye. Sasuke suddenly began to scream before he fell into unconsciousness. Itachi was about to lay Sasuke down when the area they were in turned into flesh. Kushios, Gamaguchi Shibari, summoning, toad mouth bind. The group looked and saw Jiraiya smiling at Itachi and Kisame, but when Itachi turned back to Sasuke he saw the flesh wrap around him making Itachi let go. You're both dead no one has ever escaped from his stomach. Suddenly the flesh began to wrap around the two nin's legs, but they managed to break free and began a mad dash to the end of the hallway while a wall of flesh came charging at them. You do know we are heading straight for a wall, Kisame said this as he looked at Itachi only to see his right eye begin to bleed. Oh, I see. Kisame pulled back and positioned himself right behind Itachi. Amaterasu, illuminating heaven, Itachi whispered as the area he was looking at erupted into black fire. Jiraiya couldn't see anything because of the wall of flesh but he did hear something. A loud explosion could be heard which made Jiraiya pull the flesh back revealing a hole in the flesh surrounded by black flames. Impossible no cat and is strong enough to burn through this toad's stomach. Jiraiya thought amazed as he slowly pulled out a scroll and sealed the flames inside. You okay Naruto? Jiraiya turned to see Naruto looking at Sasuke with sad eyes, but before Jiraiya could speak he was promptly kicked in the face by Guy. Guy was smiling, but not until he saw who he kicked. I'm so sorry I thought you were the enemy. Guy apologized to the toad hermit. Well, how about you check before you decide to kick people in the face? Jiraiya was bleeding from his nose and he didn't look all that happy. But besides that we need you to take Sasuke to the hospital in Konoha immediately. Guy nodded his head and grabbed Sasuke before jumping away. You know he didn't mean to, Naruto said as he looked at Jiraiya with a smile. Shut up, Jiraiya yelled out at Naruto. Besides what did I tell you about not stirring up trouble? I can't protect you all the time. Yeah because you're too busy being a pervert, Naruto said back at Jiraiya who looked slightly offended. I am not a pervert, Jiraiya said as he stood proudly. I am a mega pervert. Jiraiya turned to see Naruto walking away. My point exactly, Naruto said with a smile making Jiraiya grit his teeth as he went to go catch up with the blonde boy. 30. Kakuiki was sitting on a bed clenching and unclenching his fist. Finally I think my strength is coming back, Kakuiki said to himself, but got an answer from the doorway. That's good you're going to need every last drop. Kakuiki turned to see the old man staring at him with soft eyes. Ananami, demon wave, Kakuiki said this with both happiness and confusing in his voice. It's good to see you again my old friend, but what is it that you need from me? Ananami just smiled even more and sat down on the chair. A new Uzumaki has appeared and I've taken great care trying to make sure he's safe. For the first time in a year he sounded just like an old man. But I can feel my time drawing ever closer I need someone to watch him and bring him here when my time is near. That is where you, Ishiki, and Denpa come in. So when the time comes you want us to capture him. Kakuiki looked very hesitant to capturing a someone, but what Ananami said next eased his mind. No we don't need that kind of attention. Ananami then reached into his robes and pulled out a scroll. But if you show this to the current Hokage then we'll be able to take Naruto without any resistance. Kakuiki grabbed the scroll just as the old man was sent into a fit of coughs and spitting out a little blood. Kakuiki went to help him, but he waved him down. Okay, but what if they don't let him go? Stark waited for Ananami to regain his breath. Let us hope it doesn't come to that. When Ananami looked Kakuiki in the eye Kakuiki knew exactly what they would do. Kakuiki sighed and leaned back into the side of the wall right behind his bed. Yeah I don't think they'll take too kindly to us if we do that, Kakuiki said this with a mild smile that made Ananami chuckle. Even after all these years you still haven't changed have you, Ananami said this in more of a statement than anything. Kakuiki just shrugged as he turned and laid down on the bed and fell asleep. 
Ananami's smile disappeared and was replaced with a worried frown as he looked out the window. Just survive for a little bit longer Naruto. 30. Hell no, Tsunade yelled out with a red color to her cheeks. Jiraiya just sighed as both Shizun and Naruto just looked with confused looks. Why would I want to be Hokage? Whoever gets the job is being sent to death our sensei should have known better than to take up the mantle again. Tsunade was too busy talking to notice the Naruto grabbing the table with such force that it began to crack. I mean looked at what happened to all the other Hokages all of them died to protect that village. Sarutobi was brave I'll give him that, but he was. She never finished as a chunk of table was thrown and hit in the face. Everyone turned to see a Naruto glaring at Tsunade with angry with a chunk of his table missing. Why you little fucking? You're pathetic, Naruto said this as he stood up and turned to leave leaving the shocked group behind him, but before he got a few feet away he turned his head around to see Tsunade getting out of the booth. Don't fight me, Naruto said this with force in his voice that made everyone stop. You spit on the name Hokage like it is nothing, but a title. I'll let you in on a little secret the name Hokage means you're the strongest, but it also means you are willing to sacrifice yourself to save your village. Someone like you who loathes in self-pity doesn't deserve to be called Hokage or be a member of Konoha. I on the other hand am willing to put my life on the line to protect the people of Konoha even through they don't like me. So go back to your pathetic life and let us go about in a finding a much more deserving individual. Jiraiya and Shizun both looked at Naruto as if he just lost his mind. Tsunade actually glared so hard at Naruto everyone in the bar thought he was going to burst into flames. Take that back you brat. Tsunade approached Naruto who turned fully around and glared back. Fine let's make a bet since you're so fond of making them, Naruto said and didn't give Tsunade enough time to speak. If you beat me then I'll apologize, but I if I win then you come back to Konoha. I thought you said I wasn't worthy, Tsunade said with smirk. Our mission is to bring you back to Konoha what happens next is up to the council, Naruto stated plainly. Tsunade just shook her head and smiled. Fine, but just to prove I'm not going to lose I'll throw in my necklace. Naruto looked at the necklace and just shrugged. So do we have a deal? Tsunade glared and walked outside making sure to hit Naruto in the shoulder with a chakra-infused arm. Naruto was spun making him turn completely around facing the door surprising him. She is sure is strong. Naruto actually began to sweat as he followed the woman outside. Naruto you fool. Jiraiya gritted his teeth as he literally threw himself at the door to get outside to make sure his student didn't die. Jiraiya got outside just as Naruto was thrown into a side of a building leaving a crater in the wall. Why don't you give up you can't beat me. Tsunade smirked, but frowned when Naruto just picked himself out of the rubble and glared at her. Because I don't know how to give up. Naruto stood up fully while he spat out some blood. I am Naruto Uzumaki and I'm going to be Hokage one day. Tsunade's eyes widened as she saw an image of both Dan and her brother. Naruto noticed this and decided to act. He placed his hands together and created two clones and charged the distracted woman, but just as he got within range and was pulling out his seals she blasted both the clones and Naruto with a punch to the ground. She looked up and watched as the two clones disappeared into smoke, but what shocked her was when Naruto disappeared as well. Where did he... Tsunade was snapped out of her thoughts when she heard a buzzing sound. When she turned around she got the shock of a lifetime. Naruto was holding a blue spinning ball with seals all over his right hand and was smiling like a fox. You lose. Naruto slammed the sphere into Tsunade's back and watched as the sphere started to grind away. Rasengan. Tsunade was launched forward and slammed into the building in front of her. Don't you ever spit on the name Hokage. Naruto just watched as the rubble gently fell on top of Tsunade glaring form. Chapter 17, Deals and Battles Jiraiya was stunned, no to say that was an understatement. We barely got into his training and he already got the Rasengan completed. Jiraiya walked forward and looked down at his student who smiled back. How? Simple I used my Fuenjutsu, Naruto said and watched as Jiraiya looked on confused. It's simple I couldn't focus on two things at once, gather my chakra and spin it. So I created a new seal that does the spinning for me. The seal is designed to activate whenever I place chakra into it so now I can pull out my Rasengan just as fast as you. Why didn't I think of that? Jiraiya threw his hands up in the air with a little bit of anger. Because you were too busy looking at girls, Naruto said, but looked back at Tsunade who was helped to her feet by Shizun. I guess that means you're coming with us. Tsunade tried to get to Naruto, but was stopped by the pain shooting through her back. Why did you teach him that jutsu Jiraiya? Tsunade glared at Jiraiya who smiled at her. Fine don't answer me then. So you beat me brat I guess everyone gets lucky every now and then. Tsunade reached up and gave the necklace to Naruto and proceeded to try and get away from him, 
but was stopped by Naruto's voice. Where do you think you're going? Naruto turned to Tsunade just as he placed the necklace around his neck. You also have to come with us to Konoha. Tsunade just gritted her teeth and glared at Naruto who smiled back. A deal is a deal. Naruto just stared at Tsunade looking directly into her eyes. Listen Tsunade I just want to say one thing. Hiding isn't going to make your demons go away. The only thing you can do is go and face your demons and then and only then will you be free. Tsunade turned her head in a huff and was led away from the away to get the wound on her back treated. What if she tries to leave? Naruto looked at Jiraiya who watched his teammate leave. Well, we'll just have to keep a close eye on her. Jiraiya winked at Naruto making him groan. What did I do now? Jiraiya watched as Naruto walked away with smile on his face. You're still a giant pervert Uro-sensei, Naruto said as Jiraiya got angry at his name again. I told you to never refer to me as that you brat. Jiraiya screamed as he began to chase Naruto once again. Naruto took off in a full run wearing a smile that would put a fox to shame. If you're going to punish me you have to catch, Naruto laughed as Jiraiya began to run faster trying to catch up to the much more energetic Naruto. 30. Senji was tied down by his hands in a dark cell, but all the while that smile never left his lips. Suddenly the door opened up and in walked three individuals. One was a girl, the other was the man he talked to, and the last one was wearing an orange mask with a spiral. So this is the one. The orange masked man said. Yes he wants to join us, Payne said as he looked at Madara with no emotion. And why should we do that? Madara looked at Senji who smiled at him even bigger. Because even through these chains are absorbing my chakra I can still put up quite a fight, Senji said this as he stood up making Konan wrap him in her paper. Stop let's see what he can do, Madara said with a wave of his hand. Konan reluctantly released Senji who smiled all the more. Senji shut his eyes and began to hyperventilate making the three look at him in confusing. Suddenly Senji's eyes shot open and revealed enraged eyes. The group watched as a seal expanded along his arms, but that wasn't what surprised them it was the fact that his muscles were growing. Senji shot his arms upward and shattered the chains that held him in place making the three stare at him in surprise. You see I had a partner that had a unique seal Senji said this as he calmed down and the seal began to disappear along with the new muscle. The seal that was designed to tap into his anger not his chakra. What the seal did was simple it increased his strength in proportion to his anger. So when he died I decided to put his seal to better use. Madara nodded his head and looked at Payne who just stared right back. That was quite impressive, but we will need a much more decisive verdict. Madara looked at Senji only to see him a few feet away from him. What did you have in mind? Senji said with an unnerving smile. Madara looked on with a single eye shining in the darkness. You will fight one of the Akatsuki in a fight, Madara said this as he turned around. If you win then you join, but lose will kill you where you stand. Madara turned around to see Senji busy stretching his back. Bring it on. Senji smiled at Madara. Follow me and chose your opponent. Madara turned and led the way out of the cell with Senji right behind him. The two enter a room with all members of Akatsuki staring down at them. Toby what are you doing here? Datara screamed out. Madara quickly adopted his Toby personality and charged directly at Datara. I wanted to see you again Datara senpai. But before he could reach he was punched in the face by Datara, but his arm went right through his head. I hate it when he does that. Datara shook like he was cold, but still gave Toby a glare. Who is this asshole? Hidan said while he held his prayer necklace. Everyone stared at Senji before turning their attention back on pain. He wishes to join, but first we need to test him, pain stated plainly. He looks so fucking weak. Senji's hand twitched, but he still smiled. He has the choice on his. Pain never finished when Senji walked forward. I want the freak with the prayer necklace. Senji's eyes were almost glittering with happiness, but underneath was rage. You think you can beat me? Hidan looked slightly offended. I'd be sure to sacrifice you to my god Jashin. Senji began to laugh at the name of Jashin which made Hidan go mad with rage. The god Jashin. Senji seemed to have taken great pleasure in hearing that name. Well you better be praying to your god for help because you're going to get ripped apart by me. Hidan suddenly gripped his scythe and jumped down bringing his triple-bladed scythe down. Senji simply sidestepped the blade and tried to deliver a kick to Hidan, but he jumped backwards avoiding the kick entirely. How dare you insult my god you fucking heretic. Hidan dropped into a stance with an evil glint in his eye. I'm going to make sure your death is as painful as possible. Senji just shook his head. If that is the case then why don't I let you have the first attack? Senji held his arms out. Go ahead I promise you that this is the only chance you're going to get. 
Hidan got mad at that point and ran at Senji before swinging his scythe sideways nailing him in the stomach giving Senji a nasty gash. Now you will suffer for you Hirari. Hidan stopped when he looked at his scythe and didn't see a drop of blood. Hidan looked at Senji and saw his blood slowly almost a crawl dropping to the floor. I did warn you. Senji smiled as he tore his shirt and wrapped up his stomach. Now it's my turn. Pain on the other hand had a different idea in mind. Pain threw one of his chakra receivers at Senji who turned around just to see the point of the pike. Then to everyone's surprise the receiver slowed down allowing Senji to move out of its way lazily and gently grab it. So that's it, Pain said as his rinnegan shined in the darkness. You're using a Jukuken ninjutsu, space-time techniques, to slow down time in your personal space. Senji smiled as he just broke the pike in two. Why out of all the enemies I've ever fought in my time you're the only one to have figured it out. Senji actually began to clap at Pain. I'm impressed does that mean I get my wish? Pain looked thoughtful for a moment, but he took a quick look at Madara who gave a quick nod. Very well Senji welcome to Akatsuki. Senji just smiled even bigger and cracked his knuckles together. 30. What did you say? Tsunade stared at her old teammate in shock. Orochimaru smiled as he figured he had Tsunade exactly where he wanted her. Heal my arms and I'll bring your dear brother and lover back from the dead. Orochimaru smiled as he realized he had Tsunade exactly where he wanted her. All you have to do is heal me and you can be reunited with your loved ones. Lady Tsunade you can't be seriously considering this. Shizun looked at Tsunade with shock in her eyes. Think about what my uncle would have done. Orochimaru began to laugh. Look at her she is more than considering it. Orochimaru looked at Tsunade who seemed to be conflicted. I'll give you one day to decide. Until then Tsunade. With that Orochimaru and Kabuto both vanished in a swirl of fire. Tsunade. Shizun couldn't finish as Tsunade turned on her heel and began to walk away. I'm going for a walk Shizun, Tsunade said this in a way that made it clear that she wanted to be alone. Tsunade. Shizun thought as she ran to warn Jiraiya of what just happened. Shizun arrived at the apartment to find Naruto sitting in the lobby with a book, but Jiraiya nowhere to be seen. Damn that pervert. She was about to turn around when Naruto called to her. You looking for Uro-sensei? Naruto asked looking up from his book. Yes do you know where he is? Shizun smiled at Naruto who just shrugged. He said something about talking to Tsunade. Naruto closed his book and placed it inside his shoulder seal. Why don't you sit down I'm sure he can handle Tsunade just fine. Shizun just shook her head and went for the door, but Naruto spoke again. He already knows about Orochimaru. Shizun stopped dead in her tracks and looked back at Naruto who pulled out his book once more. What do you mean? Shizun turned around and looked directly at Naruto. Before you guys left he managed to place two seals on the both of you, Naruto continued to look at his book. One he said would track you and the other would allow him to hear your conversations. Shizun looked stunned, but Naruto continued to speak. He said that if one seal was destroyed he could track you with the other. This was all to make sure that Tsunade didn't try and make a run for it. Shizun breathed a small sigh of relief and moved towards Naruto noticing the necklace he won from Tsunade on his neck. Should I warn him? Shizun looked at Naruto as he finished his book and stretched his arms. Naruto about that necklace its curse. This made Naruto raise an eyebrow. Everyone who has ever worn that necklace has died except for Lady Tsunade. But instead of freaking out like she thought he was calmed and even shrugged it off. I guess I'll have to change that, because I'll never die not until I become Hokage. Naruto said this with a fierce determination in his voice that seemed give off courage. Come one let's go to bed it's getting late and I'm tired. Naruto yawned and turned and began to walk upstairs with Shizun watching him. 30. Shizun woke up the next morning expecting to see Tsunade only to be greeted by nothing. That was when she remembered Orochimaru's offer. Shizun got up as fast as she could and ran for Naruto's room. She knocked on the door and Naruto answered rubbing his eyes. Shizun what's wrong? Did Jiraiya come back? There was a slight panic in her tone which woke Naruto up more. No he never. Suddenly a kunai sailed by Naruto's ear and hit the door frame missing Shizun by inches. Naruto turned around and was about to throw a kunai aimed at the man's head when he realized it was Jiraiya. Jiraiya was gripping onto the window frame for support as he breathed hard as if he ran for days. She drugged me, Jiraiya said and that was when Shizun went to work to help. We need to hurry she might already be with Orochimaru. Shizun nodded her head while Naruto looked out the window with narrowed eyes. What are you doing Tsunade? Naruto thought as he looked back at Jiraiya. 30. I need to talk to you Nagato. Pain stopped dead in his tracks and turned to see Madara approaching him. 
Yes Madara, Payne said standing at full attention. I want you to watch Senji. Madara alone I narrowed making Payne nod. Whatever he is truly after we have to make sure he doesn't interfere in our plans. Don't worry he will be watched. The two looked at each other once more before parting ways, but unknown to either of them a small bird was resting on a window seal. The bird flew off and flew through the buildings until it came to rest on Senji's shoulder. The bird leaned forward and began to chirp into his ear. I understand, thank you. The bird gave a small bow and vanished in a puff of smoke. So they think they can stop me. That is so pathetic it is laughable I think in due time I need to show them that you can't control the actions of a true god. Senji sat in the dark and began to laugh as he thought about all the things he would do to the Uzumaki when he caught him. 30. Kabuto dodged yet another attack from the enraged Tsunade who was looking to kill. If she hits me it is game over. Kabuto actually began to sweat as he continued to jump backwards until he hit a boulder. Damn. Kabuto looked forward and saw Tsunade raising her fist up to deliver the killing blow, but Kabuto quickly brought a kunai up and slashed his hand open. The blood splashed on Tsunade's face making her stop in shock. Blood? Tsunade froze and brought her hands up to her face with wide eyes. Kabuto smiled and delivered a swift and brutal kick to her side. You call yourself a medical ninja. Kabuto smiled as he slowly approached her. You're pathetic now die. Kabuto brought a chakra-enhanced hand towards Tsunade's throat, but was forced to jump backwards to avoid a barrage of kunai. Kabuto looked up and saw Jiraiya, Naruto, and Shizun standing in front of Tsunade. That is quite enough four eyes, Jiraiya said in a snarl. Naruto looked behind him and saw Shizun trying to calm Tsunade down. I guess we're on our own? Naruto asked in a polite voice as he took off his cloak. Jiraiya looked back and saw the state Tsunade was in and growled. All right Naruto. Jiraiya turned to see Naruto already running towards Kabuto who just smiled at the blonde. Damn him. Jiraiya was about to run at Naruto, but was blocked by Orochimaru who smiled at his old teammate and friend. And where do you think you're going? Orochimaru said with a snake-like smile. Jiraiya just gritted his teeth and dropped into a fighting stance. Shizun stay as close to Tsunade as you can. Naruto screamed out as he released his shuriken. Things are about to get a little rocky. Naruto threw his shuriken at Kabuto who dodged, but the shuriken disappeared into a puff of smoke revealing a cage bunshine. Kabuto managed to bring his hand down just in time to punch the clone in the head. Kabuto turned his head and saw Naruto already next to him throwing a punch that caught him in the face. Kabuto was sent spinning backwards, but not until he kicked Naruto in the side. The two combatants were sent spiraling in opposite directions until they came to a stop facing the other. You've improved from outlast meeting. Kabuto smiled as he rubbed his jaw noticing the wet feeling. If that impressed you I have some good news for you. Naruto smiled as he held out his hand. You haven't seen anything yet. Kabuto watched as a small sphere started to form in his hand. 30. Orochimaru dodged a fireball sent his way by Jiraiya. Why do you bother with that useless boy? Orochimaru said in a mocking voice. I have an eye for talent and all I see from that boy is idiocy. Exactly, Jiraiya said confusing Orochimaru. Why would I want to teach someone who already has everything to be a good ninja? It's not ninjutsu that makes a ninja it is the guts to never give up and Naruto has that in spades, Orochimaru chuckled as he looked at Jiraiya with a glint in his eye. Oh, he reminds you of you. Orochimaru took a slight glance at Naruto and saw him holding the Rasengan giving Orochimaru a surprise. Impossible no child should be able to master a technique like that. 30. Kabuto watched the sphere spin a little more before speaking. Why do you want to protect her? Naruto looked at Kabuto with wide eyes. Tsunade said she doesn't want to go to Konoha so why bother protecting her? Naruto's eyes narrowed slightly. Because she might be a bitch when it comes down to it. Tsunade looked at Naruto as he brought his free hand up and formed a tiger seal. But she is still a member of Konoha and I won't give up on her. Kabuto went to run at Naruto but suddenly found himself unable to move, thanks to a cage bunshine. What when did he? Kabuto was snapped out of his thoughts as he saw Naruto suddenly take a running start towards him. Shit won't have enough time to dodge. Naruto brought his hand back and then rammed it into Kabuto's stomach. Rasengan, Naruto yelled out as his clone vanished and Kabuto began to scream, but unseen from Naruto Kabuto managed to bring his hand up and take a chakra-infused swipe at his chest. Naruto pushed one last time and sent Kabuto backward slamming into a boulder. Kabuto collapsed on the ground only to see Naruto standing above him with a slight glare in his eyes. Well what are you waiting for kill me, Kabuto said from his position on the ground, but to his utter surprise Naruto just shook his head and began to walk away from the down shinobi.
What are you doing? Even if you don't wear the headband you used to be a Konoha Nin. Naruto stopped as he felt pain shoot through his chest, but he kept going. I'm not going to kill you this time, but if you ever try to hurt my friends again I won't just kill you I'll rip you to pieces. Kabuto watched as Naruto suddenly collapsed on the ground in a huff making Tsunade run over to check him out. Kabuto watched as Tsunade tried to heal Naruto. Why? Kabuto narrowed his eyes at Naruto. Why would he keep me alive? Tsunade started to panic as Naruto's heart stopped and Kabuto felt his teeth clench as he bit back a retort, but suddenly Naruto's hand came up and gently smacked the top of Tsunade's head. Why are you crying? Naruto stared up at Tsunade weakly. I thought I told you I won't die until I become Hokage. Kabuto just laid there with wide eyes as he saw the dead boy smile and fall asleep. I don't understand. Kabuto bit his lower lip as he gently rose up. That should have killed him outright. Kabuto looked over and saw Orochimaru heading his way as Jiraiya began to perform seals for a summoning. Lord Orochimaru. Kabuto bit his thumb and rubbed his blood on Orochimaru's summoning tattoo. Tsunade bit her own thumb and began to perform hand signs. Then all at once the three shinobi slammed their hands on the ground. The entire area was covered in a thick layer of smoke, but when it cleared the three ninja were standing on massive creatures. Hand me the boy, Orochimaru said while he was on top of Manda which hissed at him. He could become trouble for us all if he is kept alive. Tsunade looked at Naruto and thought back to what he said. She looked at Orochimaru and sighed while she gently slapped her forward. All right so you want him you can have him, Tsunade said surprising everyone. Over my dead body, because like him or not he makes a lot of sense. I may not like this, but I have been selected to become the next Hokage of Konoha. So I won't hand over my shinobi to you without a fight, Orochimaru sneered and looked to see his former friends and teammates getting into fighting positions. Orochimaru saw no other way around it and the giant snake charged at the two with deadly intentions on its mind. Just hold on brat. Tsunade looked back and saw a mini slug pick Naruto up and jump down. I still have a score to settle with you. With that she also charged ready to die for a fellow Konoha Nin. Chapter 18, The Homecoming The group slowly began to see the front gate to Konoha which made Naruto smile, but also brought about a feeling of sadness. After being away from the village he got used to the kind faces he saw outside of the villages, but he was still happy that he can now see Hinata again. Naruto looked back and saw Jiraiya and Tsunade talking about the old days while Shizun just listened with a smile. Hey, guys is it okay if I go on ahead? Naruto shouted making the three look at him. Sure Naruto go on. Jiraiya waved to his student and watched him run like he was being chased down by rabbit animals. If I only had his energy. Jiraiya rubbed the top of his head as he watched Naruto stop at the gate. After getting past the guards Naruto made his way over to his favorite ramen shop, but just as Naruto was about to get close he spotted something that caught his attention. Hinata and Tenten were walking together when they also spotted Naruto. Naruto you're back. Hinata ran at Naruto and gave him a hug with a kiss to the cheek as well. Yeah I just got back, Naruto said with a smile. How about you all join me I'm going to get some ramen. The two girls nodded their heads and walked with Naruto into the ramen shop. So Tenten you wanted me to look at a weapon seal. Tenten's eyes immediately flew open with eagerness in them. Here you go. Tenten gently gave Naruto the seal as they sat down at the booth. Tenten watched as Naruto's eyes narrowed in concentration as he took a bottle of ink and a brush and began to work on the seal. Hinata smiled at Naruto as she gave Tuchi the order of ramen Tenten, Naruto, and herself wanted. After about a minute Naruto finally took his eyes off the tag and laid his brush down. Are the weapons already sealed inside? Naruto asked and watched as Tenten nodded her head. Alright let's see if this works. Naruto slapped the seal on the ground and applied chakra suddenly a small circle could be seen about three feet away from Naruto when a sword suddenly shot out of it. That'll work, Naruto said with a smile as he passed the seal off to Tenten who accepted it with a big smile. Thank you Naruto. Tenten turned and began to eat while Naruto wrote a quick sketch of the seal for future use later on. Naruto turned to Hinata just as she shoved his chopsticks in his mouth with noodles on them. Stop working and eat, Hinata said with a stern look on her face but Naruto could see the blush on her cheeks. Oh, I will start to eat, but not until this. Naruto gave Hinata a kiss that made her blush even more, but a cough behind them caught their attention. Naruto turned and saw Hyashi along with Neji standing directly behind the two. Hello Hyashi-sama, Naruto said with a smile. Hello Uzumaki I hate to ruin your evening, but Hinata is needed back at the compound for further training. Both Hinata and Naruto looked a little disappointed, but didn't argue. 
Hinata gave Naruto one last kiss on the cheek and followed after her father who was walking away. Naruto smiled himself and turned back to his food to finish his meal, but no sooner had he finished that an Anbu appeared behind him. You are needed in the council room immediately Uzumaki-san. The Anbu gave a small tilt of his head as Naruto paid for the food and turned to follow the Anbu. 30. We can't do that, Tsunade yelled out as she was trying to convince the council to stop what they had planned. Tsunade if Naruto keeps going on missions like these then we might lose one of the strongest Konoha shinobi, Koharu said as Homura and Danzo nodded their heads. The door opened and Naruto stepped inside before popping his neck and fingers with a bored expression on his face. Okay so what do you people want now? The council flinched at Naruto's tone and lack of respect in it. You will show us the proper respect we deserve brat, Danzo said Naruto looked at Danzo as he looked back. So what is it this time? Naruto turned to Tsunade who was just shaking her head. They're trying to restrict you to the village. Naruto just groaned and shook his head. I thought I already said this once I don't need your protection. Naruto looked at the council and they all looked into the boy's blue eyes to see his anger and pain. I'm not going to be part of this. Naruto once again turned to leave, but was stopped when Danzo banged his cane on the ground. You will sit down and listen to what we have to say, Danzo said it in a way that left no room for auguring. We are trying to help. Last time I checked I needed help when I wasn't a ninja. Naruto stared up at the war hawk who seemed to have this air of anger around him. But you people didn't want to help then. So I will say this one last time I don't need you to interfere with my life. Naruto turned on his heel and was about to head to the door when he remembered something. Oh, how is Rock Lee, Kakashi and Sasuke holding up Tsunade? Naruto turned to see Tsunade smile at him. They are doing just fine you can go visit them if you like, but I still have to wait for Rock Lee's answer on if he wants his surgery or not. This confused Naruto, but decided to ask Lee at the hospital. If I don't get the QB under control Konoha will lose its strongest weapon. Danzo thought as he gripped his cane while growling low in his voice. Danzo turned and began to leave the room, but Tsunade kept a close eye on the old war hawk. Jiraiya I think we need to keep a close eye on Danzo. Tsunade looked at Jiraiya who nodded his head. 30. Naruto made it to the hospital and asked the nurse where was Rock Lee's room. The nurse looked at Naruto for a second before telling him the room. Naruto walked towards Lee's room when he heard a voice coming from the door. Naruto recognized the voice as Lee's sensei guy and Naruto could tell from the tone in his voice that it was serious, but before Naruto could turn away he heard one sentence that chilled him. The surgery could kill me, Lee said without any of his enthusiasm in his voice. Naruto heard Guy sigh from the other side. Tsunade told me about the risks. Naruto could hear the slight depressed voice in Guy's voice. She said that you won't be strong enough to survive the treatment, but you want to know what I said Lee. Lee just shook his head as he waited for his sensei to tell him. I told her she was wrong. I told her that you had the strength to live through anything. You told me that your dream was to be a splendid ninja using nothing, but taijutsu. Well, Lee you can still make your dream come true. I believe that you can survive this treatment and that you will be stronger because of it. Lee looked a little uncertain about it. Do you mean it Guy Sensei? Guy seemed to be taken back by Lee's question, but he quickly recovered and smiled down at his student. Lee I mean it with every fiber of my being. Naruto smiled as he walked away, but he was still worried over Lee, but he had a feeling he was in good hands. Naruto made his way to Kakashi's and Sasuke's room, but when he went in he saw that Sasuke was missing with Kakashi laying on the bed with his book. Kakashi sensei what happened to Sasuke? Kakashi looked at Naruto then went back to his book. He asked the nurse to let him grab some fresh air, Kakashi said turning a page in his book. I think he said something about the roof. Before Kakashi could say any more Naruto already left the room. Maybe I should tag along Sasuke's been acting very strangely towards Naruto lately. Kakashi closed his book and got out of bed. 30. Naruto opened the door leading to the rooftops and saw Sasuke staring at across the village. You know they've been talking about you. The tone in Sasuke's voice put Naruto on edge, but he still approached his teammate with more caution. They've been talking about how I lost to you. This time Sasuke turned and Naruto saw hate just pure hate reflected in his eyes. Sasuke? Naruto said in a confused tone. And now to further it my brother is after you. Sasuke stood up and walked towards Naruto with deadly intent in each step. He is not supposed to be after you. He is supposed to be after me. What is so special about you? Tell me. Sasuke started to get closer to attacking and Naruto knew it. Sasuke you need to calm. Suddenly Naruto felt the need to duck and was lucky that he listened to his senses. 
Sasuke flew over his head with his chidori fully charged as he glared at Naruto. Naruto looked at the Sasuke he was talking to and saw that it disappeared in a puff of smoke. What were you doing? Naruto dropped into a fighting stance as Sasuke chuckled. I wasn't going to kill you. Yet. Sasuke looked at Naruto with his Sharingan spinning madly. All I want to do is see what makes you tick. Sasuke charged again, but this time Naruto was waiting Naruto ducked below his arm and spun around kicking Sasuke's legs out from underneath him. Sasuke felt himself falling, but just before he hit the ground he outstretched his arm and spun away from Naruto. Sasuke landed on his feet and charged his Chidori yet again, but Naruto already began to charge his Rasengan. Sasuke's eyes narrowed as he looked at the sphere of chakra. What is that? Naruto just shook his head. Sasuke I'll say this one time only, back down. Sasuke looked stunned from Naruto's words. I don't want to hurt you. Sasuke began to laugh. You could never hurt an Uchiha. Sasuke charged while Naruto shook his head while he ran full speed at his teammate. Kakashi suddenly made it to the roof, but saw that Naruto and Sasuke were already throwing their jutsu at each other. Damn I'm already too late. Kakashi tried to make it, but the two collided causing air pressure to start to force Kakashi to hold his ground. Kakashi looked up and saw that Naruto was getting pushed back which surprised him. Kakashi revealed his Sharingan and saw that Naruto was slowly decreasing the amount of chakra to the Rasengan. What is he doing? Sasuke smirked as he started to push with everything he had causing a loud screech to be heard. Suddenly Naruto threw the arm holding the Rasengan upwards forcing Sasuke to follow it. Sasuke looked down at Naruto and tried to bring his Chidori on his head, but Naruto grabbed his wrist and then his throat. Sasuke was about to retaliate, but Naruto quickly jumped back. What did you figure out you can't? Sasuke's words were cut off when his Sharingan and Chidori were suddenly deactivated. Sasuke kept trying to reactivate his Jutsu and Sharingan, but to no avail. What the hell did you do to me? I placed a chakra seal on you, Naruto said pointing to Sasuke who looked down and saw black marking all over his arms. I placed it on you when I grabbed your neck. Now I just want to talk with you. Why should I listen to you? Sasuke screamed out in rage. Because I won't release the seal until you do. Sasuke growled at Naruto with anger in his voice. What happened to you Sasuke? I mean we're teammates and we're friends, but lately you've been acting like an asshole. Why? Sasuke just shook his head with a twisted smile. You want to know why? Naruto nodded his head. I already told you at the Chunin exams remember? I don't have to explain myself to you. Naruto just shook his head and with hand sign released Sasuke from the seal. I don't know what's happening, but I can say this Sasuke, Naruto said with concern in his voice. If you don't get off the path you're on then you're going to die. Sasuke just smirked and walked over to the ledge of the building before jumping off. Naruto looked at Kakashi who I smiled singling that he would talk with Sasuke. Naruto watched as Kakashi disappeared in a puff of smoke. Sasuke please stop whatever it is that you are doing. Naruto turned and began to walk down the staircase with a worried look in his eyes. As Naruto walked down the stairs he heard a familiar voice. Where's Sasuke at? Naruto turned the corner and found himself staring at Sakura. Hey, Sakura, Naruto said with a smile. Sakura turned around and saw Naruto she smiled as she ran over to him. Hey Naruto I was wondering have you seen Sasuke? Sakura asked, but the look on Naruto's face said it all. Yes, but at the moment you might want to stay away from him. Naruto's statement confused Sakura. Why, what happened? Sakura just watched as Naruto shook his head. I don't know, but he's been acting very strangely lately, Naruto said as he looked at Sakura with sad eyes. I just think it would be safer if you just leave him alone for a little bit. Kakashi is already on his way to talk to him. Sakura watched as Naruto walked past her with sadness reflected in every step. What happened to those two? Sakura thought with worry. Naruto continued to walk down the hallway until he ran into Jiraiya. Hey Naruto just got done with your visit. Jiraiya watched as Naruto turned away with sad eyes. Naruto what happened? Sasuke is starting to become more and more aggressive towards me, Naruto said as he looked up at his master. He's nearly killed me twice now I think if he keeps this up is going to do something he'll regret. Jiraiya's eyes seemed to focus on something in the past, but as quickly as it was there it was gone. Naruto I think. But it'll be fine if anyone can talk any sense into Sasuke it is Kakashi. Naruto smiled at his teacher as he walked past. Jiraiya just watched with a concerned look on his face. I hope you're right kid, Jiraiya said this before he vanished in a swirl of leaves. 30. 
Sasuke was leaning against a tree contemplating Kakashi's words until he felt a presence behind him. Sasuke jumped away from the tree and turned around to see a group of four individuals staring at him. Impressive that you managed to sense that we were here. What do you want? Sasuke growled out as his Sharingan activated. Oh, such an angry individual aren't you, said the purple-haired one. First let us introduce ourselves. I'm Ukon, this is Tuya, Kitamaru, and this is Jirobo. The people he gestured to never made a move, but the man named Kitamaru smiled at Sasuke. Are you sure Orochimaru-sama wants this weak-ass punk, Tuya said making Jirobo flinch. I told you not to use such foul language. Tuya simply glared at Jirobo who just stared right back. Orochimaru-sama's orders were to bring him with use back to Odogakur, Sakon said still looking at Sasuke. Orochimaru-sama wishes to make you stronger than you ever could be in this dump. At the word stronger Ukon immediately knew he had Sasuke's attention. He wishes to teach you everything he knows and give you power beyond your imagining and all he wants from you is for you to swear your loyalty to him. Sasuke looked at the ground for a couple of seconds before he looked up at Ukon. You speak of power as if you already have it. Sasuke watched as the group nodded their heads. Then show me your power and if I take a liking to your power I will go to Otogakur. The group nodded and Sakon threw his head in one direction singling a change in scenery. Sasuke followed after the four with a smile on his face. If I'm right I'll have enough power to finally crush my brother and Naruto into dust. The thought made Sasuke chuckle as he continued to follow the group into darkness. 30. Naruto was walking towards his apartment when he saw Hinata standing outside waiting for him. Hinata what are you doing here? Hinata smiled at Naruto as she held out a small bag to him. We never finished our meal. Hinata blushed as Naruto smiled at her. Father said we could finish, but I have to be back in 30 minutes. Naruto nodded his head and took Hinata's hand and took her to the small pond located just a minute from his apartment. The two sat down and ate their meal while they watched the moon shine in the water. Naruto it's so peaceful, Hinata said this as she snuggled up against Naruto's arm making the blonde smile. I know Hinata. Naruto laid his head on Hinata's. The two stayed like that until they noticed it was getting late. Naruto took her home to see Hyashi waiting outside for Hinata. Hello Uzumaki again you were cutting it a bit close, Hyashi said with a little humor in his voice. It's what I do Hyashi-sama, Naruto said with a shrug of his shoulders. I guess I'll see you tomorrow Hinata. Hinata nodded her head and gave Naruto a quick kiss before disappearing into the compound. Have a good night Hyashi-sama, Naruto said this with a bow and Hyashi returned it, but only a small one. You too. Hyashi turned around and disappeared into the doorway. 30. Sasuke was laying on the ground breathless. What power, Sasuke said not believing what he just saw. All this power could be yours Sasuke all you have to do is join you, Sakon said as his curse mark receded. Now what do you say? Sasuke looked up at him and smiled. Where do I sign up? Sasuke got up and watched as the group kneeled while Sakon smiled at him. We start now. Sakon smiled as he realized how easy it was to get Sasuke. Orochimaru-sama will be most pleased. But unknown to the group a slight figure was watching from the shadows, but as quickly as it was there it was gone. Sasuke turned around and narrowed his eyes. I'll be right back. Sasuke vanished leaving the group behind. 30. I've got to tell the Hokage what. Sakura stopped when Sasuke appeared in front of her. What do you think you're doing? Sasuke asked without a hint of emotion. You've got to stop Sasuke. Sakura pleaded. Listen Sakura I can't have you tell the Hokage that I'm leaving. Sasuke vanished and reappeared behind her. At least not yet. Suddenly Sakura blacked out slumping forward only to be caught by Sasuke. Soon Naruto we will have our rematch and then I will gain an even greater power, but first I must kill you. Sasuke began to laugh as he laid Sakura down on the bench. Sasuke then disappeared leaving behind leaves that fluttered in the wind. Chapter 19 the rage and the calm. As soon as Sakura woke up she headed straight for the Hokage's office desperate to tell her about what happened to Sasuke. When Sakura told Tsunade she immediately sprung into action, but she cursed when she realized that she didn't have any more jonin to spare. I guess I'll have to go with another group. Tsunade went to Shizun and told her to bring in Shikamaru. Shikamaru arrived not minutes after being called sporting his new chunin vest. This is so troublesome. Shikamaru yawned showing that Shizun woke him up from his nap. I have no time for this, Tsunade said this with force in her voice making Shikamaru stare at her confused. Sasuke has left for Otogakur and we need a team sent after him to retrieve him, but I have no jonin to spare. 
So Shikamaru you need to find four individuals that you know can handle this mission. Shikamaru nodded his head and turned around with a little more speed in his step. Shizun looked at Tsunade who just sighed. Why didn't you also call Naruto? Tsunade looked at Shizun with a raised eyebrow. I thought you gave him the promotion to Chunin. Tsunade chuckled as she looked outside with amusement in her eyes. He turned it down. Shizun's eyes widened in shock. He said if he took the promotion he would end up spending more time away from Hinata and he wanted to spend a little more time with her. He also said he felt he didn't deserve it yet something about his fight with Sasuke during the Chunin exams rattled him. Shizun nodded her head and continued to watch her mentor. 30. Naruto was walking hand in hand with Hinata with a smile that was as warm as the sun. When the pair was about to enter the ramen shop someone called out Naruto's name. Naruto turned around and saw Kiba, Kuji, Neji, and Shikamaru. I need you for a mission Naruto, Shikamaru said with authority in his voice. The tone in his voice was enough to make Naruto worried. What happened? Naruto turned around as Hinata looked on with worry. Sasuke has left the village and is on his way to Odogakur. Naruto's eyes widened, but before he could speak he could hear someone breathing loudly. When he turned to the source of it he found Sakura staring at him with tears in her eyes. Naruto I tried. Naruto's eyes lowered as he looked at his teammate. I found Sasuke talking to these four people and then I heard that he was going to leave with them. I tried to get to the Hokage to tell her, but Sasuke found out I was spying on him and knocked me out. I'm sorry. Naruto placed a comforting hand on Sakura's shoulder startling the girl. Don't worry Sakura I'll find Sasuke and I'll bring him back. Sakura looked at Naruto, but instead of seeing relief he saw worry. What is it Sakura? Before I completely blacked out I heard Sasuke say he knew you would come and when you do he was going to kill you. Naruto looked on with a vague look in his eyes, but Sakura continued. All I'm saying is try to bring him back, but please be careful. Don't worry I'm always careful, Naruto said with a smile. Naruto turned around and looked at Hinata who smiled back. I'm sorry, but I've. Hinata silenced Naruto with a kiss that left the both of them with a huge blush. It's okay, but I expect to see you back here in one piece. Naruto smiled and gave her one last kiss. Deal. Naruto turned and faced the others. All right let's go. The group nodded and began the run for the gate. 30. Fu was thrown to the ground, but quickly spun her body and landed on the ground. Who are these three? Why do we have to catch this bitch? Hidan said as he held on to his prayer necklace. Because it is an order and it might bring in more money. Kakuzu popped his neck and knuckles as he turned towards their newest member. What about you Senji? I don't care so long as I get to beat that Uzumaki to a pulp. Senji just watched as Fu began to form some hand signs. I don't think so little runt. Senji suddenly ran at Fu with a speed impossible for any normal old man. Fu was taken by surprise, but before she could react she was punched in the stomach. Fu was sent flying backwards into a boulder that shattered when she connected with it. What are you doing she is my offering to Jashin. Hidan screamed out while holding his scythe forward. You take too long if you're not going to finish the fight then I will. Senji didn't even turn around while he watched as red chakra suddenly began to spill out of the ground. Damn. Senji growled out as he saw the dust disappear revealing Fu covered in her demonic cloak. Fu looked at the three Akatsuki members before extending the wings on her back and taking to the sky. And this is what happens when you take your sweet time with Jinchuriki, Kakuzu said looking at Hidan who glared at his partner. Great this is going to be bad. What are you talking about this just got interesting. Senji looked at Fu with a shine in his eyes that made everyone worry. Now show me little Jinchuriki. Show me your power. 30. Ishiki was putting on his cloak along with his brother Denpa. So we're going to deliver this scroll to the Hokage. Ananami nodded his head as he watched the two shrug their shoulders. One more thing, Ananami said stopping the brothers in their tracks. Kakuiki will be coming with you. Why you said it yourself he is in no condition to move. Ishiki looked on as his brother tried to convince Ananami that this was a bad idea, but it didn't work. Before Ananami could speak they all heard footsteps and turned to see Kakuiki walking towards them. I'm fine. Kakuiki looked tired, but other than that he looked like a normal person. Let's just go and get this kid before I fall asleep again. Ishiki and Denpa just looked at one another with concern, but Ananami just smiled at Kakuiki. Yes you should be running along now before he gets too tired. Ananami just waved the group off as they traveled towards Konoha. When he knew the group was out of sight Ananami's eyes hardened. Please be safe because Konoha will not give Naruto up so easily. With that Ananami turned around and headed back into the cabin. 30. 
One day later. Senji walked down the dark hallway and threw Fu at the wall making it crack. Senji was fine for the most part except for a deep gash on his chest that healed slowly. Be careful we still need her alive, Payne said with a slight tone of anger in his voice. Senji just looked up at him with cruelty reflected in his black eyes. You think just because you have the Rinnegan that it makes you God, Senji chuckled at the thought. But the truth is this if you can bleed your no God. You are just a sad man trying to escape your humanity. Everyone looked at Senji with shock in their eyes. When they looked back up to pain they could see the anger just roll off him. Give me one reason why I shouldn't show you how much of a god I am. Pain took one step forward, but Senji stood his ground with a smile. Because I still have information about Naruto and the people going to recruit him. Senji smiled all the wider when Pain stopped in his tracks. And just so you know I'll keep my end of the bargain I will tell you about these three individuals. Two of them are brothers Ishiki and Denpa both are skilled in separate things, but together you won't be able to stand a chance against them. Ishiki specializes in tracking and gathering information through Genjutsu by breaking his opponent's mind, Denpa specializes in Kenjutsu and Ninjutsu Pain's eyes narrowed at that bit of information. I knew them while I was in Uzushiogakur serving as one of the Ochita they were annoying when they were together. The other was Kakuaki a boy I captured and placed in confinement to try and copy his unique ability, but I just got word that Ishiki and Denpa managed to break him free. Who is in charge of this operation to retrieve Naruto? Pain asked hoping to kill the leader before they could get Naruto. I have no idea, but I can say one thing. Senji's eyes gleamed in the firelight making them look demonic. Whoever it is one strong son of a bitch. Senji turned on his heel and began to leave when he turned to Tobi who smiled and waved at him. Senji made a small movement of waving, but deep down he was in deep thought. I need to figure out their motives and then I can kill them off one by one and gain control over all this power. Senji's smile turned upwards into a sneer as he began to laugh deep down. Senji walked until he was outside and turned back to see a faint glow and for the first time Senji's eyes took on a look of sorrow. I'm sorry little girl, but your death will lead me ever closer to my goal. Senji turned around only for a picture to fall out of his cloak. Senji looked down and saw a group of five people standing around the Kfukage. Senji's eyes immediately hardened as he looked at the smiling face of Uzushio. You could have stopped what happened Uzushio. Senji picked up the picture as he glared at Uzushio. It is because of you that I had to choose this path, but I will always keep this picture with me. That way I can remember what I did to ensure I continue down my path. Senji put the photo back into his pocket and began to walk. 30. Madara waited patiently in the meeting room until he heard the door open. He turned to see both Pain and Conan looking at him. Well, what do you think of him? Madara watched as Pain and Conan exchanged looks before looking back at him. He is a good asset to Akatsuki, but he is hiding something. Pain looked at Madara as he leaned against the wall. We need to watch him careful until we know what. Madara nodded his head. Very well until next time. Madara disappeared into his dimension within a few seconds leaving Pain and Conan alone. Conan looked at Pain and saw he had a distant look in his eyes, but before Conan could ask Pain turned on his heel and walked out the room. 30. Sasuke. Naruto screamed out as he stopped on the top of a statue of Hashirama Senju's head. Sasuke stopped running. Sasuke stopped on the head of the statue on the other side of the waterfall. Running? Sasuke's voice had a hint of confusion in it. Why would I run from you? I only wanted to pick the perfect place to bury you. Sasuke turned around and Naruto saw that half of his face was covered in black marks along with his left eye being a different color. Naruto just looked on in disbelief as he watched his teammate smile at him. What's with the look Naruto? Naruto shook his head and narrowed his eyes at Sasuke. What happened to you? Sasuke held up his hands and looked down at them. Power. Was Sasuke's response. Power is what's happened to me. Sasuke watched as Naruto glared at him. Sasuke I'll ask you once. Naruto pulled out two scrolls and created two clones. Come back to Konoha or I'll break every bone in your body and drag you back. Sasuke looked at Naruto a little bit longer before breaking out into a full-blown laugh. That is a real laugh Naruto. Sasuke looked at Naruto just as the curse mark began to recede. Don't you see the power I hold in my hands? Naruto shook his head and sighed. I guess I'll just have to break you. Naruto threw the clones the two scrolls and they unraveled them. I'll have to thank Tenten for this idea later. Naruto bit both his thumbs and smeared blood on both scrolls just as his clones laid them on the ground. Sasuke narrowed his eyes and jumped at Naruto in an attempt to stop his jutsu. Fuinjutsu, Hakachiken, A.E., Sealing Technique, Graveyard Blade. Naruto slammed both his palms on the scrolls. 
Sasuke heard a cracking sound and looked down just in time to see four different swords shooting out of the ground towards his body. Shit! Sasuke screamed out as he watched as the blades inched closer, but at the last second Sasuke gripped one of the blades and used it to shove himself out of danger. Naruto watched as Sasuke fell off the edge of the statue towards the water. Naruto nodded towards his clones and they all jumped after Sasuke. Sasuke hit the water and turned around holding up a tiger seal. Sasuke took in a breath and shot a fireball towards Naruto, but Naruto pulled out two of his fire tags and fired the fire streams at the fireball. Sasuke suddenly appeared behind Naruto and his clones. Shit he used the fireball as a distraction, Naruto said as he spun his body around to dodge a kick to his head, but his two clones were kicked and sent flying until they vanished into smoke. Naruto looked up just in time to get punched in the face by Sasuke. Damn he got a lot stronger from our last fight. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he saw Sasuke's Sharingan spinning madly inside his eyes. With those eyes and this new power he is I have to be careful of what I do. Sasuke turned his body around and landed on the statue looking down at Naruto with a smile. This is great all this power just flowing through me. Sasuke looked like he was about to jump for joy. And soon I will collect an even greater power. The tone of Sasuke's voice changed at that moment it became darker and colder than ever. Naruto landed on the water and looked up at Sasuke with sadness in his eyes. What is with you and power Sasuke? Sasuke looked at Naruto as if he never saw him before. Power is nothing if you don't have anyone to defend Sasuke. The path you're going down is not the path to true power. What would you know of true power Naruto? Sasuke glared at Naruto with hate in his red eyes. Even right now I can see that power coursing through your body. Naruto's eyes narrowed at that. If my power is not true power then what about yours? There is no difference in power only in the way you use them, Naruto said this as he relaxed his stance a little. You use your power to further yourself without helping anyone, but you. While I use my power to help others in need that Sasuke is true power. Whoever told you that load of bullshit Naruto is lying to you, Sasuke said as he began to walk down the statue a few feet. Power is the ability to crush any foe in front of you to kill all who stand in your way. Now that Naruto is true power not all this mumble jumble about protecting others or helping them. Power is meant only to further you in this world. I guess there is no point in talking anymore is there. Sasuke's answer was charging up his Chidori. Naruto focused his chakra on the seal on his right palm and formed his Rasengan. Are you really going to fight me with that? Sasuke chuckled as he watched Naruto raise an eyebrow in confusion. We already discovered that your pathetic jutsu can't compete with my Chidori. Naruto just shook his head and smiled. If you truly believe that then come at me. Sasuke glared at Naruto and ran down the statue until he hit the water causing the water to erupt around him. Sasuke suddenly emerged out of the water charging straight for Naruto. Naruto stood his ground for a second then charged Sasuke when the two of them were a few feet away they attacked. The two attacks smacked into one another making a grinding sound but Sasuke was shocked to see that Naruto hadn't budged an inch. Sasuke began to push harder on his jutsu while Naruto did the same the result was the two attacks exploding and sending the two flying backwards. Naruto was sent splashing across the water until he twisted his body around and landed on his feet. Sasuke ended up doing the same thing, but when he looked at Naruto he was angry. How? Simple when I first used Rasengan against you I wasn't using it to its full power. Sasuke shook his head and smirked at Naruto. You had me going for a second. Naruto kept an emotionless face up as Sasuke began to chuckle. But the last time we used these techniques against one another I felt that you wasn't holding back. Naruto just walked over to the rock wall making Sasuke look on confused as Naruto made another Rasengan. This is the true power of Rasengan. And without further word Naruto slammed the Rasengan into the wall. Sasuke watched as the Rasengan dug its way through the wall with ease, but what shocked Sasuke the most was that the entire wall actually began to shake and cracks began to form making chunks of rock fall into the river. Naruto ended his jutsu and took his arm away. Naruto turned to Sasuke and without looking gave the wall a tap the result was that half of the wall fell into the water causing waves. That is the difference between Rasengan and Chidori. Chidori is a assassination jutsu used to get in and get out, but the Rasengan is brute force. It will grind away until you are either launched away from just the force or ripped apart by it. Now I'll ask one more time Sasuke. Come back to the village quietly or I will break every bone in your body. Sasuke gritted his teeth in anger as he watched the last bit of rock fall into the water. I will not go back to that weakling of a village. Naruto shook his head with his eyes closed. I was hoping not to resort to this. 
Naruto opened his eyes and was immediately covered in red chakra. I gave you a choice Sasuke I won't let you go. Sasuke watched the red chakra surround Naruto, but Sasuke just laughed. Don't you remember that power of yours is useless against my Sharingan? Naruto narrowed his eyes as Sasuke continued. The last time you used it against me I saw through everything you did. You can't beat me with that power. If I recall that last time we fought with me using this power you lost. Sasuke's laughter died right there replaced with anger. I will kill you Naruto. Sasuke growled this out as his curse mark began to glow. And then I will have an even greater power. Naruto just entered a battle stance and got ready. Sasuke charged Naruto as he went through hand signs. Katen, Gokaku no Jutsu. Sasuke launched the fireball at Naruto who narrowed his eyes. Naruto jumped over the fireball only to hear the sound of chirping birds. Naruto turned his body just to miss Sasuke plunging his hand through his back. Naruto kept turning while keeping his right arm held out to hit Sasuke in the back, but when he connected Sasuke vanished into smoke. Cage Bunshine. Naruto landed on the water's surface and looked up just in time to get kicked into the water. Naruto's head emerged from the water and just as he looked up he saw Sasuke holding a chidori with black markings all over his face. I hope this hurts. Sasuke plunged his hand into the water confusing Naruto until he remembered one thing, the chidori was a ball of crackling electricity. Naruto felt the electricity flow into his body causing Naruto to scream in pain. Sasuke lifted Naruto out of the water and threw him into the rock wall. Naruto crashed into the wall making a human-shaped crater, but when Naruto went to move Sasuke jammed his still active chidori into Naruto's chest. I guess you lose. Naruto looked up to see Sasuke smiling at him. Sasuke ripped his arm out of Naruto's chest and began to walk away while Naruto slowly closed his eyes. 30. Kyuubi's eyes opened to see Naruto lying face down in the water. You should be grateful that I'm inside you, Kyuubi chuckled as he poured more chakra into Naruto. And soon everything about you will become mine. Kyuubi began to laugh as his chakra descending onto Naruto. 30. Sasuke was about to jump when he felt a strange feeling. Sasuke turned around just as a punch was sent into his face sending crashing into the other side of the canyon. Sasuke jumped out of the wall and looked to see Naruto with his red chakra taking the form of a fox with one tail. How that should've. Sasuke looked at Naruto's chest to see it completely healed. Now where were we Sasuke, Naruto said as he got down on all fours with an animalistic smile on his face. 30. Ishiki was talking to his brother when he stopped. Denpa turned to his brother just as Kakuiki stopped as well. What is it? We have a very big problem, Ishiki said as he turned to the source of the power. Naruto is using a lot of Kyuubi's chakra. This made the other two look at each other in surprise before turning to see Ishiki jumping towards the source of the demonic chakra. Hold on Naruto just hold on. Denpa and Kakuiki followed as they charged through the forest to get to Naruto. Chapter 20, The Valley of the End Sasuke was actually shaking from the power coming off of Naruto. Why? Sasuke gritted his teeth harder and harder as he began to get angrier at Naruto. Why does he continue to stand up? I was positive that should have killed him, but why didn't it? Sasuke finally couldn't take it anymore. What did that power Naruto tell me? Naruto just looked on with sadness in his eyes, but knew Sasuke would figure it out sooner or later. I am a Jinchuriki Sasuke. Sasuke still had a look of confusing on his face until Naruto went on. I'm the Jinchuriki to Kyubi no Kitsune. Sasuke's eyes immediately looked like saucer dishes after that bit of news. The Kyubi no Kitsune. Sasuke thought as he slowly backed up a few steps from Naruto. That demon nearly destroyed the entire village and now it is sealed inside Naruto. Sasuke couldn't help, but feel dread start to grip his heart. Sasuke turned and jumped in the air while performing hand signs, but he never got halfway done when Naruto threw his arm and sent his red chakra sailing towards him. Sasuke turned to avoid the chakra arm, but it suddenly changed course and grabbed him. What? This chakra acts like it has a life of its own. Sasuke was immediately pulled towards Naruto who punched him in the face sending him back to the canyon wall. Naruto looked down at his hand and noticed it was shaking and that it hurt a little. I can't stay in this form much longer. Naruto turned towards Sasuke who was on his hands and knees huffing and puffing. Sasuke looked at Naruto and Naruto saw that the black marks had expanded themselves all across Sasuke's face. What's going on? You think you're the only one that is special. Sasuke looked at Naruto as his black marks began to close in turning Sasuke's skin from white to dark grey. Sasuke looked down at his hands and smiled, 
But suddenly he lurched forward as two things began to try and force themselves out of his back. Naruto turned away as he heard the ripping sound and turned back to see Sasuke sporting two wings shaped like hands. But I have news for you I'm a lot more special than you. Naruto growled and went back to all fours and charged kicking up a wave of water. Sasuke stood his ground with a smile as Naruto rammed into him crashing through the wall and dragging him across the rock's face. Naruto stopped and swung Sasuke into the nearest thing possible which just happened to be the leg of Madara's statue. Naruto watched until he saw Sasuke jump out of the smoke flapping the wings on his back. Looks like the fox is grounded. Sasuke smiled as Naruto disappeared in speed, but thanks to his Sharingan Sasuke followed Naruto running up Madara's statue. Sasuke dodged just as Naruto jumped at him, but that was when he remembered something Naruto's chakra seemed to be alive. Sasuke turned around to see two giant chakra hands grab his wings and throw him into Hashirama chest making the entire area shake. We both can't keep this up Sasuke, Naruto yelled out just as Sasuke jumped out of the smoke wearing a sadistic smile. I don't know about you, but I can keep going. Sasuke placed his hands together and spat out ten small fireballs at Naruto. Naruto stood his ground as the fireballs hit his chakra cloak, but when they went out Naruto got the biggest shock of the day. Everlast fireball was a kunai with an explosive tag attached to it. The tags exploded shaking the ground even further as Sasuke laughed on, but his laughter stopped when Red Chakra launched towards him in the shape of a fox's head snarling at him with teeth bared. Sasuke dodged the chakra barely, but one of his wings was almost completely ripped off sending Sasuke spiraling back to the ground. When the smoke cleared Naruto was shown with his entire shirt blown off with a few burns on his chest and blood running down his left arm, but it was already beginning to heal. The red chakra quickly resurfaced and covered Naruto again. Damn looks like this chakra can't protect me from everything. Naruto turned to Sasuke just as his left arm went numb. What the fuck just happened? Naruto tried to move his left arm, but found he couldn't make it budge. Naruto heard rocks splashing into the water and looked up to see Sasuke standing up still missing his wing. Sasuke took a step forward, but suddenly lurched forward with his face scrunched up in pain. Sasuke please stop this. If we keep going like this we'll end up killing each other. Sakura asked me to bring you back safely, but for me to do it carefully. You are starting to make it a lot harder for me to keep my promise Sasuke. Sasuke just smiled at Naruto with madness in his eyes. Why, we're just getting started. Sasuke disappeared and reappeared right next to Naruto. Naruto ducked a kick to his head, but when he threw a punch at Sasuke with his right arm he caught it. Sasuke smiled and chucked Naruto into the rock wall. Sasuke looked at the wall until a wave of red chakra came sailing towards him. Sasuke jumped in the air and tried to fly away, but fell only to get caught up in the chakra wave crashing him into the wall. Naruto walked out of the rubble with his chakra wearing a snarl. Sasuke looked up just as Naruto's chakra wrapped around his body and swung him into the water below. The river shook as Sasuke hit the bottom, but he quickly yanked himself out of the water landing on the water charging up another Chidori, but this one sounded like a thousand birds taking flight and was pure black. I'm tried of playing around this ends here Naruto. Naruto held out his hand and charged up his Rasengan, but it took a vermilion color to it. Naruto and Sasuke stood by and looked at each other before charging swinging their respective jutsu at each other. The two connected and the river immediately was pushed away from the two. Naruto gritted his teeth and pushed harder on his Rasengan making Sasuke do the same, but just when Sasuke was being pushed back he smiled. Naruto was confused until he heard the flapping sound behind him. Naruto turned to see Sasuke smiling at him holding another black Chidori when Naruto turned to the other Sasuke he had gripped his arm holding a cruel smile as the second Chidori ripped through Naruto back. Cage. Bunshine, Naruto gasped out as blood started to come out of his mouth. Naruto was then thrown as hard as Sasuke could into the statue of Hashirama making the statue shake from the force. 30. Ishiki felt Kyuubi's chakra suddenly vanish and a feeling of dread washed over him. Damn we need to hurry now. The other two nodded their heads and began to pick up the pace. Please be safe Naruto. 30. Sasuke looked down at Naruto who was to his surprise still breathing. Sasuke himself wasn't doing too well either from using the Chidori to the cage bunshine he was standing just from using his curse mark. All I have to do is kill him and then I will have Mangekyu. Sasuke drew out a kunai and was about to bring an end to Naruto's laugh when Sasuke's back was suddenly slashed open. Sasuke jumped forward while turning to see his attacker. Standing right next to Naruto was Enmatsuki with her hood down revealing a woman with brown hair with blue eyes with twinge of red in them. Who the fuck are you? Enmatsuki looked down to see Naruto breathing and smiled. 
I'm no one of your concern. And Matsuki looked at Sasuke and Sasuke felt the air in his lungs being pulled out from the amount of killing intent she was letting out. I don't care about you Naruto is my concern so run away Uchiha before I stomp out your clan here and now. The tone in her voice suggested that she would do just that. Sasuke turned around and with one last look at Naruto vanished in a swirl of leaves. Naruto. And Matsuki leaned on Naruto with her head resting on his chest hearing a faint heartbeat she smiled, but knew if she didn't get him to Konoha then he would die. And Matsuki was about to lean down and pick Naruto up when she heard twigs break. She turned on a dime only to see Ishiki, Denpa, and Kakuiki. Whoa, there it's us. Ishiki held up his hands as Enmatsuki continued to stare at him, but instead of blue eyes she was now sporting blood-red eyes. Prove it. Enmatsuki growled out. We found you at the edge of death we brought you to Ananami to help you, Ishiki said as he slowly lowered his arms. You then asked is there any way you could repay us and from that moment on you helped watch over Naruto. Enmatsuki looked at Ishiki a little more before easing up. Her eyes slowly returned back to normal making Ishiki breath a sigh of relief. Please don't ever stare at me with those eyes again. And Matsuki smiled slyly at Ishiki who smiled right back. Ishiki looked down and saw Naruto and immediately his smile vanished, but before he could talk the sound of chirping birds caught their attention. They all turned around to see Kakuiki with an arm wrapped around his throat with Kakashi standing behind him holding a Reikiri, lightning cutter. Tell me what happened or your friend is introduced to the gates of hell. Kakashi glared at them and everyone felt the electricity begin to build in his jutsu. Do you really want to stand here and talk Naruto is currently dying? Izuki indicated the boy behind him. Besides we just got here ourselves we were sent to deliver something to the Hokage. Ishiki slowly reached into his pack and pulled out the scroll and gently showed it to Kakashi who looked at it with suspicion, but one look at Naruto made his mind up. Fine, but one false move and I'll make you regret ever being born. Ishiki nodded his head towards Enmatsuki who gently picked Naruto up and he the group jumped towards Konoha as fast as they could. 30. Tsunade was currently heading out the hospital after giving Choji the medicine to save his life when she heard a voice call her. Hokage-sama. Tsunade turned around and saw Naruto in Enmatsuki's arms with his eyes barely open a hole punched into his chest that was healing very slowly. Bring him inside quickly. Enmatsuki nodded her head and rushed into the hospital with Tsunade right behind her. Looks like it is going to be a long day. 30. Naruto woke up once more in the hospital this time with a splitting headache and a burning pain in his chest. Last time I can that Chidori version in the chest. Naruto grumbled this out just as Tsunade entered the room. Naruto you're awake. Tsunade ran over and, but when she got close enough she gave him a punch to the head, but without any chakra. Ow. Naruto gripped his head as he glared at Tsunade. What was that for? Tsunade just glared right down at Naruto. That was making us worry so much Naruto. Tsunade took the charts from his bed and shoved at him. Check how long you've been out. Naruto did just that and was surprised by what he found. Two weeks. Naruto looked the chart over and he couldn't believe it. How QB usually heals me up in time to wake me up in two days. Because QB may be able heal almost any wound you receive, but the deeper the wound the slower the healing process. Tsunade just continued to glare at Naruto as he laid the chart down and looked at her. I couldn't do it. Naruto turned his eyes to his covers as he gripped them tightly. I couldn't get Sasuke back. Tsunade looked down and was about to punch again, but realized Naruto wasn't in the best condition physically or emotionally. Naruto if you couldn't bring him back then why didn't you kill him? At the word kill Naruto flinched and looked further down. I was supposed to do just that, but then I remembered my promise to Sakura. Tsunade waited seeing Naruto needed to say more. So I aimed lower, but realized that no matter where I aimed Sasuke was going to die. I wanted to keep my promise if I can't do that then I don't deserve to be Hokage. Tsunade knew Naruto was hiding something, but didn't press the matter. The door opened and revealed Sakura and Hinata both holding flowers, but when Hinata saw Naruto she ran at him and gave him a hug. Naruto felt pain rip through his body, but it passed as quickly as it came. Naruto. Hinata began to cry into Naruto's shoulder hurting Naruto more than any wound. When I saw you I really thought you were going to die. Naruto gently pushed Hinata away until she was looking into his eyes. I told you I'm not going to die anytime soon. Naruto gave Hinata a quick kiss. Naruto looked at Sakura and was about to speak when Sakura beat him to it. It's okay Naruto, Sakura said as she laid the flowers on his legs and gave him a light hug. I know you tried, but I guess I'm to blame. Naruto looked confused for a few seconds. I told you to bring Sasuke back. I tried to relay on you to bring him back, 
but no more. I will help and do whatever needs to be done to bring Sasuke back or. Sakura let the sentence unfinished as she turned around and walked out, but not before giving Naruto a smile. Naruto looked at Tsunade and realized she was hiding something. What is it Tsunade? The council wants to speak to you. Naruto just groaned as he laid down. Tell them I'm not interested in being. Tsunade interrupted Naruto, but with hesitation. It's about that anymore Naruto. Naruto looked at Tsunade and saw sadness in her eyes. It's something a little more serious. Naruto just narrowed his eyes at Tsunade. 30. You can't be serious, Homura yelled out at Ishiki who rubbed his ear. It really echoes in here. Denpa looked at his brother with a smile and received a slap to the back of the head. Yes it does. Ishiki looked at Kakuaki who was sleeping against the wall as Enmatsuki looked at Donzo every few seconds with a slight worry in her eyes. And for your information yes we are serious we are here to take Naruto to a friend of ours for more training. I'm sorry, but that is out of the question Naruto is going to be restricted to the village, Koharu stated as she looked at the group. Look we can play this silly game, but the result will be Naruto coming with us. Danzo stood up and looked more closely at Anamsuki who backed away a little. Have I seen you somewhere before? Danzo questioned making the girl back away a little more. That hair and eye color you're from the Tenakirite, Heaven Cutter, clan. Enmatsuki just glared at the ground. I don't know what you are talking about, Enmatsuki stated as she looked at Danzo with anger. My name is Enmatsuki. That right there proves it, Danzo said as he sat down once more. I met some members of your clan during the Second Great Shinobi War and all of them have been named after the moon. You apparently are no exception, but what confuses me is that your clan was wiped out during the war. My father managed to get my mother away, Enmatsuki said through clenched teeth. And now you are the last, Enmatsuki said nothing, but her silence spoke for her. Before they could continue the door opened and Naruto followed by Jiraiya and Tsunade walked in. Naruto looked around the room and saw two familiar faces. Ishiki, Denpa. Naruto smiled as he walked up to greet the two people who helped him get on the path of Fuenjutsu. Naruto you groaned since the last time we saw you, Denpa said putting a hand on Naruto's head and rubbing messing his hair up even more than it already was. I got a lot stronger thanks to you guys as well, Naruto said with a note of pride. We can tell, Ishiki said shaking Naruto a little. So who are they, Naruto said pointing to Enmatsuki and Kakuaki who was rubbing his eyes just now waking up. You don't remember me Naruto. Enmatsuki looked visible hurt until Naruto's widened. Enmatsuki? Enmatsuki smiled and nodded. Naruto turned to Kakuaki who looked at Naruto with a bored expression. Who are you? Kakuaki yawned at Naruto making him raise an eyebrow as he looked at Ishiki who just shook his head. His name is Kakuaki. Ishiki looked at the man in question and found that he was asleep again. Anyway back to business. Ishikiya looked at Tsunade who glared daggers into him. No need to give me such a look Hokage-sama. I came here not demanding Naruto, but saying that he needs to come with us. And what if I refuse? Tsunade crossed her arms with a defiant expression on her face. Ishiki's response was taking the scroll out and handing it over to her. I'm afraid that is not an option. Ishiki watched as Tsunade opened the scroll and began to read its content. Tsunade's face slowly began to transform from anger to confusing then to sadness. The at the bottom of the scroll Tsunade's face turned to that of sheer surprise. Jiraiya, Tsunade yelled out making the toad hermit jump and run over to Tsunade. See if this is real or not. Tsunade handed the scroll over to Jiraiya who took a hold of the scroll and began to look it over with a concentrated eye. When Jiraiya came back his face told the story. Sorry Tsunade it's real. Tsunade grabbed Jiraiya by the arm and led him out of the council room and into the hallway. Ishiki was smiling at Naruto as they listened to the Tsunade yell at Jiraiya not loud enough to be heard, but still pretty loud. When the two entered the room again Tsunade had a look of anger and despair. If you hurt him. Tsunade growled out. We promise he will be well kept for, Enmatsuki said with a smile. Tsunade just continued to glare at them until she turned to Jiraiya. Jiraiya you're going with them. Jiraiya looked at her, but only nodded with a smile. I expect daily reports writing by Naruto and I will know if it is him or not. Ishiki smiled and looked at the council who was staring at Tsunade in shock. What are you doing Tsunade Haim? Koharu yelled out with the other two members looking on with slight glares. I have no choice in this matter. Tsunade tossed them the scroll and they went over it with shocked eyes. But this means. Hormura was quickly silenced by Denpa who managed to wrap a cloth around Hormura's mouth. Shh. Denpa held a finger to his lips with a smile. That is a secret. 
Denpa released his side of the cloth and looked at Naruto. Okay we leave tomorrow. Naruto was still confused about everything happening and Ishiki could see it. We're taking you to a special individual to help you train for three years Naruto. Naruto's eyes brightened up, but then he remembered Hinata. So we are leaving tomorrow. Ishiki nodded his head and no sooner had he done that Naruto was out the door. Was it something I said? Ishiki looked at Jiraiya who shook his head. No it's just something he needs to go do. Jiraiya turned around and headed out the same door. 30. Naruto finally found Hinata walking towards her home. Hinata. Hinata turned towards the sound of Naruto's voice only for the two slam into each other and land on the ground. Hinata opened her eyes to see Naruto laying on top of her making her blush like a tomato. Naruto quickly got off of Hinata and helped her up much his own embarrassment. Hinata I need to tell you something. Hinata nodded her head listening intently to Naruto. I'm going to be leaving on a three-year training mission apparently. Hinata stared at Naruto in shock not believing Naruto is going to be gone that long. When do you leave? Hinata asked with sadness etched in her voice. Tomorrow. Naruto just looked at Hinata with sad eyes until he grabbed her hand and began to let her through the village. What are we doing? Hinata looked back at her house then at Naruto. We are going to make the most out of the time we have left today. Hinata smiled at Naruto, but looked back to see a figure with a white kimono disappear back into the house. So we're two first? Hinata asked with a smile as Naruto drew her close and kissed her. How about that waterfall? Hinata blushed and nodded her head as the two headed to their first destination. 30. Hinata returned to her house at night with a smile as she walked up to her door and entered. Where have you been? Hinata froze at the voice of her father Hyashi. She turned around to see him sitting in a chair with a calm expression. Father, Hinata said with some regret in her voice. I'm sorry I'm so late for our training session, but I was. With Naruto Uzumaki. Hyashi finished for her as he stood up. So it was you that I saw watching us, Hinata stated as Hyashi walked up to her. Yes. Hyashi looked down at his daughter and smiled a sad smile. I'm sorry he is leaving tomorrow. So you heard. Hinata looked at the ground as Hyashi placed a hand on his daughter's shoulder. Yes I did. Hyashi gave he a small kiss on her head. So I will excuse his actions this time, but this means you will have to catch up on the training you missed today understand. Hinata looked up at her father and gave him a big hug. Thank you. Hinata ran off to her bedroom leaving behind a smiling Hyashi. 30. Did you say all the goodbyes you wanted to? Ishiki asked as Naruto approached the gate. Yeah, Naruto stated as he looked out into the forest. Now let's go. Naruto began to walk with Denpa leading the group towards their destination. Don't worry Hinata I'll be back and stronger than ever. Naruto smiled back at the village. And Sasuke you better watch out, because I'm coming for you. Naruto's face turned into that of sheer determination as a bird flew into the air and vanished into the clouds. Chapter 21 Revelation. Naruto just woke up to find himself walking through the woods on his back. Naruto sat up to find himself being carried by Kakuaki who looked tired as usual. How long have I been asleep? Naruto asked making Kakuaki look at him with a bored expression. Too long. Was all he said before placed Naruto on his feet and continued to walk on. Did I do something wrong? Naruto looked at Ishiki who shook his head. No, we kinda made him carry you because you were still asleep and we needed to get moving. Ishiki smiled down at Naruto as Kakuaki yawned while he rubbed his eyes. Why is he always tired? Naruto looked at Kakuaki who looked like he was about to collapse at any moment. Well, it isn't that he's tired. Ishiki smiled at Kakuaki as he leaned against a tree. He is the most laziest person you can ever meet in your life, but there is another reason. If the enemy believes you are already weakened then he will make a mistake. Naruto looked as Kakuaki leaned against the nearest tree and fell asleep. Ishiki smiled at his friend as he gave him a smack to the back of the head. Come on sleeping beauty time to get moving. 30. One hour later. The group made it to a small clearing with a small cabin in the center. As the group approached the home the door opened to reveal Ananami with a smile on his face. Oh, it's so good to see you. Ananami walked slowly towards Naruto until he stopped in front of him with the biggest smile anyone had ever seen. I've only seen you once Naruto in a tiny photograph. Ananami actually began to cry as he gave Naruto a tight hug making Naruto look around in a confused manner. I'm sorry, but I have no idea who you are. Ananami gently pulled away and looked at Naruto with a look of slight disappointment before he smiled again. I'm sorry I should have introduced myself first. Ananami stood up and looked at Naruto with happiness reflected in his eyes. 
I'm Ananami Uzumaki father of Kushina Uzumaki. I'm your grandfather. Naruto looked at Ananami with nothing more than pure shock. 30. A bird flew towards Senji as he stood on a pedestal. The bird landed on his shoulder and began to tweet into his ear. Senji smiled even bigger as the bird continued to speak. Excellent. Senji gave the small bird a seed and it disappeared in a poof of smoke. So Ananami is still alive I thought he died after he used his clan's most forbidden few in jutsu. All well I guess he is just another loose end that I need to tie up. Senji was about to jump down when a voice behind him made him jump. So you have your own agenda. Senji turned around and saw Madara staring at him. I knew you would find me out Madara. Madara actually lone I widened in shock, but quickly lowered. I thought you forgot all about me. Madara slowly approached Senji who just stared at Madara. How could I forget all about you little Madara? Madara's eye narrowed in anger at Senji who gently stepped off his pedestal. Don't talk to me as if I'm a mere child. Madara watched as Senji walked around him with a calm smile. My apologies I didn't mean to offend the great Madara or should I say the once great Madara. Madara's hands twitched as he glared at Senji. You better watch how you talk to me. Madara turned and faced Senji who slowly got off the wall. I know your secret Senji. You do have a special Jakuken ninjutsu, but the ability to slow down time in your personal space is only a side effect of the real power. It allows you to slow down your aging and even stop your blood flow for a few seconds, but how did you know it was me? At this Senji smiled even bigger. Please you may have some of these fools hooked on your whole Tobi thing, but I was there when you and Hashirama created Konoha and forged that alliance with Uzushi Ogakur. Senji crossed his arms with a smug look on his face. I recognized your chakra as soon as I saw you. Madara continued to stare at Senji for a few more seconds. This stays between me and you understand. Madara walked past Senji who smiled with his eyes closed. But of course I mean there is no gain in it if I tell the rest who you really are. This stopped Madara as he slowly turned his head towards Senji who continued to smile. Have a nice day. Senji then got off the wall and vanished in a slight flicker of speed. I'll have to watch him carefully. Madara thought with concern as he continued to walk down the hallway with a frown behind his mask. 30. What so you're my mom's dad? Naruto asked this with disbelief in his voice. Yes, your mother was named Kushina and she was my daughter. Ananami smiled down at Naruto as his disbelief soon turned into anger. Then why did I have to grow up alone? Naruto growled out making Ananami look away with sadness. I wanted to come and help you, but in my present state I could barely leave the cabin, Ananami stated as a light breeze blew through his mid-length gray hair. I did everything I could through to keep you safe. I had Enmatsuki watch over you and Ishiki and Denpa give you the book over Fuenjutsu. All in the hopes of finally meeting you. Naruto watched as Ananami gently sat on the ground still wearing a smile. Naruto turned to Ishiki and Denpa and glared at them. You told me I was the last Uzumaki left. Ishiki and Denpa both looked at each with nervous smiles. Well, back then we had no choice. Ishiki began, but Naruto still continued to stare at them. What would you have done if we told you that you had a clan member out there still alive? Denpa's question made Naruto look at the ground in thought. You would have begged and pleaded with us to take you to him, but we couldn't allow you to see him just yet. Why not? Naruto asked angered, but the answer didn't come from Ishiki or Denpa it came from Ananami. Because the training I have planned was going to require you to have a few more tricks up our sleeve before we attempt it. Naruto looked at his grandfather with a puzzled expression. And what training is that? At this Ananami smiled as he stared at Naruto. We are going to help you gain complete control over the Kyuubi's chakra. Naruto just looked at Ananami and smiled. Already done it. Ananami looked at Naruto with narrowed eyes making Naruto's smile dwindled. No you haven't. Before Naruto could interrupt Ananami continued onwards. You've learned how to draw on its chakra, but not separate it. Naruto's confused look said everything making Ananami sigh. Okay the QB is made up of two things its chakra and its will. Now tell me what happens when you tap into QB's chakra. Naruto thought back to the last few times he used QB's chakra. I felt angry almost like I had just all this rage building inside me. Ananami nodded his head and continued onwards. That is the will of the QB trying to influence you and take you over. Ananami could tell Naruto was listening with everything he had and that made him smile. When you draw on Kyuubi's power you also draw on its will. The only way to use Kyuubi's chakra to its full potential is to separate it from the beast itself. Naruto nodded his head and smiled with everything he had. Alright then let's get this thing started. Naruto started to walk forward only to be stopped by Ananami again. Sorry Naruto, 
But you can't face the Kyubi at least not yet. Naruto stared at Ananami in confusion until he explained. First you must be the darkness that lies in the deepest regions of your heart. Then and only then can you face the Kyubi. That was when Jiraiya had enough. What are you talking about? Jiraiya glared at Ananami who simply smiled. Naruto can't beat the Kyubi not at the level he is at. Exactly that is why we are going to help him. This brought a look of confusion from everyone. I'm going to send us into Naruto inner mind using the few injutsu seals I've been working on since I planned this little reunion. Once there we will be able to help him fight off the Kyubi while he draws out its chakra and once that is done the real training can begin, but first we need something. Ananami stared at Jiraiya who continued to glare at Ananami. The key Jiraiya we need it. I'm sorry, but I can't allow. Jiraiya stopped when Ananami glared at him with hate in his eyes. I don't have a lot of time left Jiraiya, Ananami stated with no emotion. Besides don't you think Minato would have liked his son to have the key? Jiraiya's eyes went wide as he stared at Ananami in shock. What did you really think I wasn't watching my daughter as she grew up? I was always watching over her, but I couldn't make it in time to save her. So this Minato person is my dad. Ananami looked at Naruto and with a startled expression. You don't know the name of your Yondaime Hokage. Naruto's eyes went as wide as saucer dishes. I guess you didn't know so I'll tell you. Your mother was Kushina Uzumaki and your father was the Yondaime Hokage Minato Namikaze. You wasn't. Jiraiya was stopped when Ananami spoke in a clear and precise voice. He is going to find out sooner or later and besides now that he knows who his family was he has to get stronger in order to preserve their memories. Naruto looked at Ananami and nodded his head. Ananami was about to get off the ground when he gripped his chest and began to cough up small amounts of blood making everyone panic. Naruto made a move to help, but Ananami waved him down as his fit ended. I'm running out of time Jiraiya so if you want Naruto to get stronger in order to protect himself then you need to hand over the key. Jiraiya looked at the group and then looked at Naruto. Jiraiya smiled at the look Naruto gave him of nothing, but sheer determination. You know your father gave me that same look when I said he was going to be Hokage. Jiraiya bit his thumb and rubbed it on his palm. I guess I have no choose, but to believe in you just as I believed in him. Jiraiya slammed his palms together and opened his mouth and out came a very long toad with a scroll for a belly. Jiraiya what are you doing summoning me? The toad stated in a grumpy tone. Sorry, but I'm handing you over to Naruto Jeratora. This brought about a shocked look on the scroll toad. Absolutely not. Jeratora made an X shape with his arms with an angered expression. The kid is not ready to have this kind of responsibility. Besides do you think he is ready to face the QB? Jiraiya thought about it before he answered. No. Jeratora visibly relaxed, but then Jiraiya spoke. I don't think anyone is ever fully prepared to face the QB, but if anyone can beat it is Naruto. He has the best chance possible with all of us here. Jeratora began to laugh. I don't mean to sound rude, but the entire Konoha forces could barely hold the QB back. Jeratora looked at Naruto with an intense stare. What makes you think you can beat it? Because my father managed to beat the QB. Naruto announced without fear startling Jeratora. I don't care what happens to me afterwards, but I will gain Kyubi's power. I have to in order to protect my friends. Besides together with everyone we will be able to beat the Kyubi and that is a promise. Jiratora looked at Naruto a few seconds longer before turning back to Jiraiya. It doesn't really matter what I say does it? Jiraiya smiled as Jiratora unraveled his scroll stomach to reveal seals all over it with a hand-sized one in the middle. Put your hand on the circle and add some of your chakra. Naruto did just that and left a handprint of his on the scroll. Now open wide. Naruto was confused until Jeratora launched himself forward and stuck himself into Naruto mouth. Jiraiya smiled as he watched his godson struggle to get the toad out of his mouth. Jiraiya simple walked forward and with a chakra enhanced push he shoved the toad into Naruto. Naruto gasped for air as he fell to the ground and glared at Jiraiya. Why did you do that? Because Jeratora has to store himself inside you for you to use the key. Jiraiya smiled at Naruto got up, but still glared at him. Now that we got the key it is time for you to face your own hatred Naruto. Ananami got off the ground and lead the way to the cabin with the group following behind. Enmatsuki I want you to stare out here in case we have uninvited guests. Enmatsuki nodded her head and turned around to face the woods. 30. After entering the house Naruto and the group were then guided into a small secret door that lead to a large underground area covered in seals. This is where we will fight Kyubi and you will fight your darkness. Naruto nodded his head and went to the center of the room. Now sit down and meditate let nothing distract you from your mind. Naruto closed his eyes and breathed until it looked like he wasn't breathing. 30. 
Naruto opened his eyes to see the same old sewer as before. Naruto turned down the passage that lead to the Kyuubi and found a iron gate blocking his passage. I see so I have to go this way. Naruto turned around and walked down the opposite passage. As Naruto walked down the passage he heard a voice echoing deep in the sewer. Why? Naruto continued onward without any hesitation. Why do you care about that village and that traitor? Naruto kept walking, but found images of his past flash in front of his eyes. Naruto walked until he was out of the sewer and in an open environment with blackened trees and a scorched earth. Naruto continued to look around until he saw someone standing in the distance with his back to him. Who are you? Naruto called out and watched as the person turned to him and smiled a cruel smile. The person walked towards Naruto until Naruto saw him completely it was him. What's wrong Naruto? Yami Naruto called out. Are you shocked to see the real you? Naruto just stared at his dark half in confusing. What are you talking about? Naruto asked angered at his this dark being that smirked even bigger at Naruto. I'm the real Naruto. Really then why do I stand here before you? Yami opened his arms wide as if in a hugging gesture. You see this area this is your anger and rage. I'm the only one who is the true king of this land. I'm done talking I have to beat you in order to control Kyuubi. Yami's eyes flinched at Kyuubi's name, but Naruto didn't take notice. So I guess all I have to do is beat you down. Naruto placed his finger together and created five clones. You really are a fool Naruto. Yami did the same thing creating five clones. Whatever you can do I do. Naruto narrowed his eyes as Yami charged at him with hatred and excitement reflected in his dark eyes. 30. Naruto's eye flashed open as he laid on the ground breathing hard. How do I win? Naruto asked. So I take it you ended in a tie. Ananami spoke making everyone look at him. I guess it isn't much of a surprise. Every time one of the Jinchuriki of the Kyuubi tries to control its power they usual always tie with their inner darkness four times in the least. Naruto looked at the ground with slight disappointment in his eyes. How can I beat someone who knows exactly what I'm going to do? Naruto looked at his grandfather for help, but found his grandfather looking at him with a sad smile. I'm afraid that is something you are going to have to figure out for yourself. Before Naruto could respond Ananami brought his hand up to silence Naruto. Let me explain. The reason why I can't help you is because it is different for each person. What do you mean? Naruto asked confused. Let me say it like this. Ananami sat on the ground and looked as his grandson did the same thing. Everyone is something that creates darkness inside them. The darkness is created when you refuse to accept that half of you. So to be it you have to do the opposite of what your darkness is doing, but it is up to you to find out what. Naruto thought about everything Yami said during their brief conversation and fight. I know what to do. Naruto looked at Ananami with a grin like a fox making Ananami smile back. Naruto sat down and began to meditate as the seals began to glow. 30. Naruto awoke to the brunt out landscape once again. Suddenly Naruto had to duck as kunai came sailing above his head. Naruto turned around to see Yami twirling another kunai in his hand. Nice dodge, but can you dodge this? Yami threw the other kunai, but it exploded into 30 different kunai. Naruto simple brought his arm guard up and created his chakra shield. Yami simple waited as Naruto lowered his chakra shield and then he smirked at him. Come on aren't you going to attack? No I'm not. Yami's eyes went wide at Naruto's simple statement. You have to attack. Yami's voice was riddled with a little panic as Naruto smiled at him. Why? Naruto asked as Yami glared at him a little. Is it to prove you exist or is it because of my will to protect Konoha and my promise to bring Sasuke back? Why do you defend them? Yami charged at Naruto making Naruto sidestep slightly to dodge. All they did was treat us like garbage. So why do you protect them? Because no matter what happens Konoha will always be my home and Sasuke I will always consider him a brother. Naruto watched as Yami fell to his knees and cried. Then what is the meaning of my existence? Yami looked up at Naruto with rage in his eyes. I will not disappear Naruto. Yami charged at Naruto with a fist raised, but when he got close enough Naruto wrapped both arms around him and gave him a hug. I won't let you disappear. Naruto smiled as he felt Yami weaken a little. You will always be a part of me and nothing will ever change that. If it wasn't for your existence I'd probably never be where I am now. So for that I thank you. Yami's eyes lightened up as he turned into light and faded into Naruto. 30. Ananami watched as Naruto's eyes opened and he immediately knew the result. So you won. Naruto looked at his grandfather with a smile. Okay take a break tomorrow we will fight the Kyuubi. Naruto nodded his head as he laid down on the floor with a smile. Chapter 22 
the beast and the sacrifice. Naruto walked down to the basement with the group who was coming with him. The group consisted of Ananami, Kakuiki, Denpa, and Jiraiya. Jiraiya had changed the most and was now sporting two toads on his shoulder that kept bickering back and forth at each other. Ishiki stayed behind insisting he would only be a hindrance and Enmatsuki stayed behind to guard the area. The plan was simple Denpa, Kakuiki, Ananami, and Jiraiya were to combat the fox while Naruto drained its chakra away little by little, but Ananami warned Naruto that he was the one who had to finish the fox off or they would never beat the QB. Naruto's eyes were distant almost like he was in a trance as he walked down the candlelit stairs. He was thinking about the words his grandfather said to him after he woke up. 30. Flashback. Now Naruto you must pull out the entire chakra of QB in order to control him, Ananami said this with hesitation making Naruto worried. But at the same time QB will be doing the same thing and if he succeeds then he will come back. And what happens if I do fail? Ananami looked down at the ground looking a lot older. Then I will seal the QB into myself for the briefest of second and then I will detonate the explosive tags in the area. Naruto's eyes went wide as he heard his grandfather's suicidal plan. But why? Naruto asked making Ananami look at him confused. If you could seal QB into you then why do you need to kill yourself? Two reasons. Ananami held out two fingers and began to tick off the reasons. One because my body is old and I won't last long. So sealing QB into me would only drain me even further. Then two is that if I can't prevent my grandson from becoming that monster then I don't deserve to live. Naruto was shocked as Ananami rubbed the top of his head and slowly walked away. 30. Are you ready Naruto? Ananami asked as the group stood behind Ananami with Naruto sitting down. Naruto gave a quick nod and the others placed their hands on Ananami's shoulder or chest. Now remember these won't be the real you just chakra clones. So depending on how much chakra you give me is how much time they can last. Everyone nodded and began to pour their chakra into Ananami. Naruto closed his eyes as he felt himself drift into his mindscape. 30. Kyuubi's eye opened just as Naruto and his group appeared before making him smile. Well if it isn't my jailer. Kyuubi looked at Naruto who looked calmly back. And you brought guests now let's see. Kyuubi scanned each individual with his slitted eye. Jiraiya Kushina and that cursed Yodaim Hokage spoke about you often. Naruto's eyes widened at his mother's name as he looked up at the fox who smiled down at him. Ananami Kushina always would cry in her sleep thinking how she thought her father died in Uzushio Gakur. You can try and taunt me, but it will not work, Ananami said with a twinge of anger in his old voice. Yes, but who said I was trying to taunt you? Kyuubi's eye drifted down to Naruto who was shaking a little. Naruto you need to calm yourself now, Ananami said with a firm voice. You knew my mom. Naruto looked up at Kyuubi who smirked down at Naruto with a sinister smile. Yes you could call it that if you consider being sealed into her knowing her. Kyuubi smiled seeing Naruto's look of shock in his face. Oh, yes boy before you she was the Jinchuriki of me. Naruto shook his head as he looked at Kyuubi with a look of determination that made Kyuubi's smile dwindled a little. Well I guess if she can beat you then that means I can too, Kyuubi roared at Naruto as it slammed itself against the steel cage. Don't act arrogant human. Kyuubi's eyes reflected nothing, but sheer hate. You are nothing like you dear mother. You are a mere fragment of my hatred you can never defeat me. Naruto smiled as he lifted his shirt up. I guess we're going to find out. Naruto held out his arm as a seal went up his entire length. Then to Kyuubi's amazement he slammed it into his seal holding him back and twisted it freeing him. I'm going to enjoy ripping you to pieces. Kyuubi took his paw and slapped the gate forcing it open. Then with a roar he sent a shockwave strong enough to force everyone flying backwards. Naruto was the first to recover as he turned and shifted his body so he would land on his feet. I guess I'm going to pull out all the stops against you. Naruto smiled as Kyuubi's eyes tightened into a sinister glare. Kyuubi threw his head back and fired a chakra ball that was sent flying towards them with enough force to rip apart the walls of the sewer. Naruto's eyes widened as he couldn't figure out a way to stop Kyuubi's attack until a yellow square-shaped barrier appeared in front of him. The ball of chakra smacked into the barrier and exploded making spider cracks begin to dance up its frame and tiny fragments begin to fall. I really didn't want to try, but you are too annoying to be left alone. Naruto turned to see Kakuiki who was standing with his hands held forward, but Naruto could tell he was almost done with all the sweat running down his face. I'm not done yet. Suddenly Naruto was encased in a barrier and was roughly thrown at the wall that suddenly shattered letting the aftershock hit everyone. Naruto could feel the barrier absorb the attack but still could see cracks form. Naruto turned to see Jiraiya right behind him using the barrier to stop himself from being blown backwards. 
Then Naruto saw Kakuaki suddenly fall to the ground and curl up like he was going to sleep as he slowly vanished. Everyone was wrong he is lazy. Naruto felt the barrier shattered and that was when he and Jiraiya made their move. Jiraiya grabbed Naruto's legs and threw him into the sky while he performed the Rasengan. Kyuubi glared at Naruto and took a swipe and caught Naruto sending him into the ground, but when he connected he vanished in smoke. Hey, Kyuubi. Kyuubi turned around just as Jiraiya slammed his giant Rasengan into Kyuubi's face. Now Naruto. Kyuubi was throwing backwards just as Naruto erupted out of the ground and took a hold of Kyuubi's tail. Kyuubi looked down to see Naruto start to drain his chakra, but before he could get up a cage of blades descended and pinning him to the ground. Kyuubi looked up to see Denpa sitting on the hilt of his dagger waving at him. I will not lose. Suddenly the chakra began to turn black as it entered Naruto turning one of his eyes black. I said it before Naruto Uzumaki you are, but a mere fragment of my hatred now disappear. Naruto felt his eye close when two voices called out. No Naruto. Naruto's eyes flew open as he stared into the faces of his father and a woman with bright red hair. He was no longer staring at Kyuubi, but a completely white area. You belong here. Dad? Minato looked a little shocked, but not at all the same. Mom? Kushina nodded her head which resulted in the two getting the biggest bear hug they ever had before. I thought I would never see you. Naruto gently cried as his parents patted his head. It's okay Naruto. Minato turned to Kushina. Honey would you mind restraining Kyuubi? Kushina smiled as she sent some of her chakra through Naruto. Everyone stared at shock as chakra chains erupted out of Naruto and tied the Kyuubi down. This chakra it's not possible. Kyuubi thought in panic. Kushina. Ananami said with slight disdain. I thought Minato would put your chakra in here so you could see your son. Mom dad I have so many questions. Naruto was hushed when Kushina gave Naruto a hug. I'm sorry Naruto. Naruto was confused as he looked at his father who looked away. If I was stronger you wouldn't be in the mess you were in. Naruto gently pushed his mother back and smiled at her. I don't blame either of you. This shocked both of them. I knew what you did was for the best of the village so the best thing I can do is make sure your sacrifice doesn't go in vain. Wait a minute how do you know so much Naruto? Minato asked with a curious gaze. Come with me and you will see for yourself. Naruto smiled as he went back into his body. Naruto opened his eyes just as the chains attached themselves to the ground. Kushina and Minato suddenly materialized besides Naruto. Kushina looked around until she saw a frail-looked old man that made her eyes water. Father. Ananami smiled as his daughter caught him in a hug. I thought you died when you made me get in the boat. Ananami gently hugged his daughter back. I'm sorry for making you worry so much. Ananami's eyes seemed to gain some light as he looked at his daughter. I guess it's time I enter this fight. Kushina looked at Ananami who simple walked forward while dropping his cane. I guess it can't be helped seeing how powerful you are Kyuubi. Kyuubi snarled as he broke free from his chains. Such a silly little beast. Ananami threw four tags in a circle around Kyuubi making Kushina's eyes widened. Father no. Ananami turned and smiled as he turned back to the Kyuubi who began to stand up. Fuinjutsu, Jikantishi, Sealing Jutsu, Temporal Stasis. Kyuubi gave off a roar just as it froze in place. If you want to beat Kyuubi I suggest you do it now and make it big. Naruto took one look at Ananami who looked to get older every second. Naruto use my chakra. Naruto turned to see Minato Jiraiya, and Denpa standing next to him. Naruto held out his hand just as the three pour their chakra into him. Naruto concentrated on his seal and kept pumping more and more chakra until he was holding a giant spiraling ball of chakra. I'm proud the way you grew up Naruto, Minato said this as he gave his son a final hug as he vanished. Kyuubi I have, but one request. Naruto jumped as he started to drain Kyuubi's chakra. Get out of my face. Naruto took the oversized Rasengan and shoved it directly into Kyuubi's face sending the fox backwards, but he left behind something when he went flying backwards his chakra. Naruto felt the chakra begin to entire his body giving him a ghost-like form just as the Kyuubi came out of the rubble with a growl. I cannot lose to you. Kyuubi threw his head back and created a giant-sized ball of chakra. May you have this much power even now. Naruto smiled as he turned his seal again making interlocking Tori drop pinning Kyuubi while the gate shut making Kyuubi glare at Naruto. This is impossible this Fuinjutsu in that new form he looks just like Rikudo Senen, Sage of the Six Paths. Kyuubi thought as his eye gently closed as he gently fell into slumber. Naruto turned around and saw Kushina with Ananami in her lap crying. Now now Kushina how many times do I have to tell you, Ananami said as he gently faded away. Crying never befitted you. 
This made Kushina cry even more. Why did you never try and contact me? Kushina's voice was laced with hurt as her father smiled. Because it was better that you look towards the future instead of being trapped in the past. Ananami gave his daughter one last kiss. But I always watched as you grew into a beautiful woman who married a man, who would make her happy, and had a cute baby boy. I was never for a second not watching you if anything I should be apologizing. Kushina looked down with surprise as her father smiled sadly. I watched as that monster of a man tore you away from your family. I was too weak I couldn't. Kushina gently silenced her father with a hug filled with love. You don't have to apologize. Ananami looked at Kushina with tired eyes. I know you would tired anything to get to Konoha, but in your current condition you couldn't make it in time. Ananami looked away, but Kushina turned his head towards her. But I'll never blame you for anything father. You watched over Naruto when he needed it most. You were his protector when his life was in serious danger and for that I thank you. Kushina kissed the top of Ananami's head and smiled down at him with tears in her eyes. I'll see you soon all right father. With that Ananami disappeared leaving only Naruto and Kushina. Naruto I don't have a lot of chakra left. Kushina looked at the cage just as chains wrapped around the cage to keep it secure. But I can make sure Kyuubi won't be getting out. Naruto nodded as his mother began to disappear. Naruto I will be watching you I promise. I just want to say a couple of things. Thank you for letting me be your mother, show everyone how strong you can be, and don't let that Hinata girl slip through your fingers. I would have liked to see you with someone with my attitude, but I can tell she has a fire in her that will make you stand on your toes, but there is one person I want to warn you about. His name is Madara Uchiha and he is a cold-hearted man who would do anything for the QB and all the power it would give him. Naruto looked at the ground then back at his mom. How do you know about that mom? Kushina's eyes filled with some tears as she spoke. Because he was the one who controlled the QB and attacked Konoha. Naruto's eyes widened at what she said. But don't go looking for him he is too strong for right now. I promise mom, Naruto stated, but deep inside he was fighting the urge to go out and look for this man. I love you mom. I love you. Son. Kushina smiled at Naruto as she gave him kiss as she completely faded away. 30. Naruto awoke to find an even older looking Ananami. What happened to you? Naruto ran at his uncle as he coughed. This is the price for using that Fuenjutsu. Ananami seemed to be fading away. You freeze time in whatever is in the circle, but the user ages 10 times every second he has it active, but I do have one thing left to give you. Ananami pressed a scroll into Naruto's hand. Open it and wrap it around your head the information will be transported into you. It contains everything about us, but most importantly it contains how we died out. Naruto's eyes widened as he looked at the scroll that contained what he wanted no. Naruto looked back at Ananami and saw that he was breathing slowly and looked even paler than before. Grandfather. Naruto dropped the scroll and grabbed his grandfather by his clothing making the old man flinch. Naruto I live this life far too long for my taste. Ananami looked at Naruto as his eyes lost its light. I've lived my life full of regrets, but hopefully passing my torch to you I can finally be free of those regrets. I have faith in you Naruto, but I want you to promise me one thing. That no matter what you see or hear in that scroll you won't let your anger get the better of you. Naruto looked confused for a second. I promise grandfather. Ananami smiled at Naruto as he gently closed his eyes for the last time. Everyone looked at the dead Uzumaki in sadness as Naruto gently cried over the last family member he ever had. 30. Naruto and the rest of the group made a burial for the old Uzumaki. Naruto was still clutching the last gift giving to him by his grandfather. After burying his grandfather Naruto asked Kakuaki what did he do in his mindscape. Kakuaki explained that he could mold his chakra into barriers and depending on how much he put into them defines how strong they will be. So what now? Naruto looked at Ishiki and saw that the other members of the small group that followed on Anami was looking at him as well. Why are you all looking at me? Ishiki smiled at that as Denpa answered. Because Ananami's last request before he sent us to retrieve you was that when he died to follow Naruto. Denpa watched as Naruto just looked at the grave once again. Look you don't have to decide now, but I think your path will become clear once you use that scroll. Everyone turned and left leaving Naruto with his grandfather's grave. Naruto looked at the scroll and sighed. No time like the present. Naruto sat down and wrapped the open scroll around his head. 30. Senji was sitting around when a bird flew by his ear chirping as it went by. Senji smiled as he heard the news. So Ananami is finally dead. Senji stood up and popped his back and continued on his walk. I guess that piece of the puzzle is solved. That was when he heard a twig snapping. Senji turned around and saw Pain staring at him with cold gray eyes. Oh, 
I didn't know you could change looks like that. The pain he was staring at had long hair tied in a ponytail with a fringe hanging down the right side of its head. What are you up to? Payne stated simply with a cold and calculated manner. But if I tell you then that would ruin the surprise. Senji smiled as Payne just stared at him. But I will tell you this it's going to be a blast. Senji turned around and ran into a multi-headed dog that growled at him. Make no mistake you cross me even for a second I will make you wish you were never born. Payne stared at Senji who smiled right back and nodded his head. I guess the same can be said for me. Senji moved to the left of the dog not even paying it no mind. I hope you meant your words Nagato, because I will be crossing Akatsuki very soon. This thought made Senji smile even wider and chuckle deep in his throat. Payne turned around only to see Madara staring at him with his lone eye. What are you doing? Madara asked plainly. I don't trust him. Payne let his summon go as he continued to stare at Madara. Something about him makes me angry and I don't even know why. Look I don't know what to do about it, but he is a member of this organization. Madara watched as Payne twitched slightly. But I don't trust him either Nagato. So I'm going to have Zetsu keep a very close eye on him. Payne nodded his head and walked back up to Amiga Kura with Madara watching him. 30. Ishiki and the rest of the group looked outside for Naruto only to see him in a circle of seals with the scroll around his head. So he's seeing what happened to his village. Ishiki looked at Naruto with some curiosity. I wonder what will you do once you see it Naruto. He looked at his brother who smiled at him before looking at Naruto again. So what do we do now? Kakuaki asked with a yawn. Everyone looked at one another with confused looks. How about we cook something to eat? And Matsuki asked just as everyone's stomach growled. I'll go get the food ready. Ishiki you're coming to help me. Ishiki was about to say no when Enmatsuki grabbed his arm and pulled him away with a smile. I will never understand those two. Denpa looked at Jiraiya who was scribbling on a notebook with a perverted look in his eye while Kakuaki found a nice boulder and was sleeping on it. Okay looks like I'll watch Naruto for now. Denpa jumped up onto the trees above Naruto and was currently looking down just as the seals began to glow. He's in. 30. Naruto felt himself being pulled into his mind until he opened his eyes to a beautiful country with flowing rivers. Naruto turned around and saw a couple of whirlpools out in the distance. I guess this is Uzushigakur. Naruto turned around and saw a couple of people walking through the village one of which caught his attention. Kushina slowed down. Came the voice of a much younger Ananami who came running up to try and catch his daughter. Don't be so slow dad. Kushina stopped and allowed her father to catch up to her. We're going to be late. My dad isn't going anywhere today. Ananami smiled as he picked his daughter up. Hey I know, but we rarely ever get to see grandpa. Naruto smiled as he watched them walk. I know that, but first we need to stop by the Fukage's office. This brought a frown to Kushina, but her father quickly tickled his daughter into a smile. Naruto followed them as they approached a small tower that looked like it was made entirely out of whirlpools. As they walked up the tower they heard slight yelling, before appearing in front of the Fukage's door they started everything. Came a very gruff voice. I don't know what you are talking about Senji, but you need to calm yourself. Came Uzushio's voice laced with authority and calm. I'm warning you this one last time Uzushio-sama. Senji voiced in self-contained anger. If you don't back away from them you will end up regretting it. And before Uzushio could answer back the door was slammed open revealing a rather old-looking man with black eyes. Kushina moved behind her father as she looked at Senji who stared right back. Having a good day Senji. Ananami watched as Senji frowned at him. You laugh all you want Uzumaki, but I promise you this little village will end up suffering because of your cage. Senji turned on his heel and left without further word leaving those unnerving words in the air. Chapter 23, The Traitor. Ananami watched as Senji disappeared before approaching Uzushio who looked tired and was rubbing his temples. Having a tough day. Uzushio looked up and smiled. Yeah Senji is causing problems as always. Uzushio looked down to see Kushina looking at Uzushio's hat with determination in her eyes. You're still after this hat are you? You know I'm after your position old man. Uzushio just smiled at Kushina who smirked right back. Kushina show the Gfukage some respect. Ananami looked at his daughter with a slightly stern look only to have Ananami laugh him down. It doesn't bother me in fact I find it quiet enlightened to see that someone sees that I age. Uzushio looked at Kushina with a smile as he waved her over. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I still see a young face staring right back. I know I'm getting older, but I still feel like and look young. He picked Kushina up and sat her on his chair and placed the hat on her head. Someday this will be yours Kushina. Kushina smiled up at Uzushio as she gave him a hug. 
The door suddenly opened and a breathless shinobi entered the room. Fukage. He gave a bow as he tired to regain his breath. What is it? Uzushio looked at him with curiosity as he looked at him with slight panic in his eyes. The patrol that we sent to Konoha never made it according to the message Konoha just sent. Ananami's eyes went wide as he looked at the messanger. What do you mean? Uzushio looked at Ananami as Kushina tried to understand what was happening. Did anyone make it to Konoha? Tell me. Uzushio quietly placed a calming hand on Ananami who looked at him with tears forming in his eyes. I'm sorry, but Konoha sent a party to look for them. The messenger reached into his pocket and produced a scroll and gave it to Uzushio. Uzushio opened the scroll only for a bunch of headbands covered in blood to drop on the floor. All they found was blood and headbands. Kushina looked at one particular headband with realization in her eyes. Dad isn't that mom's? Ananami looked down at a headband that had little charms hanging off the end that had the Uzumaki clan symbol. Ananami gently reached down and picked the headband up as tears began to fall. Kushina I want you to go to my dad's house now. Kushina was about to argue, but one look from her father told her that wasn't wise. After Kushina left Uzushio touched a seal on the side of the room that glowed to his touch. Before anything else could be said the room filled with three different people. One Naruto recognized as the younger Kakuaki wearing a bored expression. The other two were grown men making Kakuaki the odd one out. The biggest one was a tall man with dreadlocks and a muscle-built frame. The other man was a skinning man with blonde and black hair with a smile that was cold. Where is Senji Hitor? A burst of anger. Uzushio asked of the big man. I don't know what do I look like as keeper. Hitor looked around just realizing Senji wasn't here. What about you Shinja, sacred snake? Shinja just cocked his head and smiled even bigger. Shinja? Perhaps I saw him. Ananami grabbed Shinja by the neck as he continued to smile at him. Stop speaking in riddles. Ananami growled out. But I'm not speaking in riddles you are just not listening. Shinja looked at Uzushio with a hungry look in his eyes. He told me to tell you he warned you. Uzushio's eyes widened as a sword was ran through his stomach with Shinja on the other side. Now the fall of Uzushio Gakur begins. The Shinja on the wall suddenly exploded and sent Ananami flying backwards. Shinja looked at Hitor who grabbed Uzushio who fell to the ground just as Kakuiki made a barrier around Shinja who smiled at him all the more. You were always the weakest of us. Shinja blade suddenly grew and stretched until it broke through the barrier. I always hated that. Shinja pointed his blade at Kakuiki who was surprised by the speed the blade soared towards him. Kakuiki closed his eyes, but the blade never connected. He opened his eyes to see Hitor holding the blade back with his bare hand. What are you doing? Hitor yelled out getting angrier. Shinja smiled even bigger as the seal on Hiror's chest began to glow. You are one of us. Used to be one of you, Shinja said this so calmly as he swung his sword sending Hitor through a wall. Shinja approached Hitor who was pulling himself out the rubble when footsteps began to approach. Looks like we need to cut this meeting short. Hitor was about to attack when Shinja shrunk his sword to a dagger and cut the seal off his chest in a blink of an eye. Hitor let out a roar as he rolled on the ground as blood began to pour out. Shinja placed the piece of skin into a scroll and in a poof of smoke it disappeared. I guess this at the end. Shinja brought his dagger to deliver the kill when he found he was unable to move. He looked at his body to see he was covered in various areas with Kakuiki's barriers. Yeah it is. Shinja's eyes widened as Kakuiki waved his hand over the barrier and suddenly the barrier shattered. Shinja's blade fell to the ground with a clang as his the body kept shattering alongside the barrier. The doors were blasted open to see various shinobi armed with various sized kunai to see Kakuiki with three barriers around Hitor, Ananami, and Uzushio. They need medical attention now. Kakuiki watched as the ninja moved towards the down shinobi, but nobody noticed that Shinja's blade vanished in the hurry to help. 30. Hitor, Kakuiki, and Ananami were standing watching as the Uzushio woke up. Welcome back. Ananami smiled down at Uzushio who looked around in confusing. What happened? Uzushio asked only to see depressed looks on everyone's faces. Sorry, but Shinja and Shinji betrayed us. Kakuiki looked more tired than usual as Hitor placed a hand on his shoulder. He stabbed you with his blade that was coated with poison we were barely able to keep you from dying. He then proceeded to take Hitor's seal off his chest and blast Ananami nearly through a wall. Uzushio looked at Kakuiki and knew what he had done. You did what was needed. This only seemed to add to Kakuiki's despair. I know, but I wasn't fast enough. This confused Uzushio as Kakuiki continued. If I wasn't so slow I would have been able to stop his blade. I would have been able to stop him from taking Hitor's seal. I'm fine kid. 
Hitor lifted up his sleeves to show to identical seals on his right and left shoulder. The one on my chest was the main seal that gave me most of my strength, but I can still get plenty of strength from these two. And no matter how fast you were you wouldn't have been able to stop his blade. Uzushio tried to lift himself out of bed only to collapse. So what is happening? We know that Senji and Shinja couldn't act by themselves, Ananami stated getting a nod from Uzushio. So we sent a scout and we have ships sailing from Kaminari no Kuni, Land of Lightning. They are sailing in a way that is preventing us from sending a scout to message Konoha. What about a hawk? Ananami shook his head. We already tried as soon as it took flight a arrow flew and shot it down. Uzushio growled as he leaned upwards. Looks like we have war on us and Kumagakur is the one leading the charge. So what do we do? Put everyone who can't fight and some of our ninja on boats and send them in various direction away form the Kumo fleet. We need to make sure that if we fall then at least some will make it. I will go with the passengers. This made everyone look at Kakuiki with surprise expressions. The moment those ships leave they will be fired upon. I'm the only one who can create barriers strong enough to hold off a fleet until we hit land. Uzushio nodded his head and looked towards Hitor and Ananami. You know I'm staying. Hitor smiled like an animal. I'll stay, Ananami stated only for Uzushio to shake his head. You have a child to look after. Ananami was about to argue the point only for Uzushio to interrupt. This is not debatable. Ananami nodded his head. All right begin the loading the people aboard. Naruto looked on with sadness, but felt himself get pulled further until he was at the docks with everyone aboard the ships except for Kushina and Ananami. All right time to go Kushina. Ananami began to walk up the boardwalk only to get a kunai thrown into his shoulder and stomach. Daddy. Kushina stopped moving and went to Ananami who simple grabbed her and threw her at one of the citizens. Make sure she makes it to Konoha. The citizen nodded his head and held Kushina tightly as she tried to get out of the man's grip as Kumo Nin suddenly appeared behind Ananami. Damn we didn't make it in time. One of them said as he watched Ananami stand up while he made a single hand sign. Sorry, but you're dead. He suddenly found that he and his comrades were unable to move. Fuinjutsu, Jikantishi. Ananami growled this out as he turned to the Kumo Nin to see about 30 of them. I'm going to kill all of you in one fell swoop. The tags began to glow a different color I'm going to transport to a special little area. I hope you like the bottom of the ocean. Ananami began to wither suffering the effects of the Fuinjutsu, but pressed on. Fuinjutsu, Kukantani, Sealing Technique, Spatial Displacement. Suddenly the area behind Ananami was concealed in a bright light. When the light cleared the Kumo Nin were gone. Ananami fell to the ground in a heap as his breathing began to shorten until he was covered in someone's shadow. Look at all the trouble you cause. Ananami smiled as he recognized the voice. Shut up you Kaiken, Fusion Blade. This brought a chuckle out of the man making his blade jingle on its hilt as Ananami closed his eyes. What do you think should we get him out of here? Yu Kaiken asked himself. Oh, I don't know what do you think. Yu Kaiken answered himself with a sly smile as he picked Ananami up and vanished in a swirl of water. 30. The boat that contained Kushina and Kakuiki hit land only to see Senji smiling at him. Hello nice day for a boat ride. Kakuiki snarled at Kushina, but took notice that he was the only one who could mold chakra on his boat. Senji don't hurt them. Senji raised an eyebrow at Kakuiki. I'll come with you if you let them go. Senji rubbed his chin and a thoughtful look in his black eyes. Deal. Kakuiki dropped to the ground, but no sooner had he done that was he tired up and thrown to the ground. Now what to do with them? Damn it you said you wouldn't hurt them. Senji glared at him with a rage in his eyes. And I won't, but it will become troublesome if they go to Konoha and tell them that Kumagakur and I destroyed Kumagakur. Senji began to go through hand signs until he landed on bird. Everyone on the boat began look outward with a dazed look until their eyes snapped open. Senji-sama we don't know who, but someone is attacking Uzushio Gakur. A citizen screamed out making Senji chuckle inside. Don't worry I'll take care of it. Senji watched as the boat's door opened. Now get out of here before they find you. They all nodded and began to storm out of the boat with one person catching Senji's eye. Kushina. Senji made a move to grab her, but thought better of it. I can't get her now, but soon I will be able to attack. I just need to be patient. Senji looked down at Kakuiki who glared up at him. Now don't look at me like that I could have killed them all, but I didn't because I would benefit nothing from it. Senji reached down and picked Kakuiki up. He gave one last look as his old village began to go up in flame. I warned you Uzumaki now look at what happened. I must go plan for the next phase of my plan. Senji just smiled a cruel smile as he disappeared in a burst of flame. 30. 
Uzushio picked himself off the ground just in time to see Hitor fall after getting attacked by 30 different nins. It's over Uzushio everything is gone. Uzushio turned his head to see the E walking towards him with lightning dancing off his body. I just want to know one thing Reikage sama Uzushio smiled as blood dripped from his mouth. What is that? E took a few steps closer and looked at Uzushio. Why attack us? Because you are a strong ally of Konoha and we are in a time of war. E waved his arm at the destruction. This is just a way to gain the upper hand. I don't take enjoyment out of this believe me, but shinobi respect only one thing and that is force. This made Uzushio's face smile even bigger. Then I guess after this you will respect the dead. Ease I widened as seals began to crawl up Uzushio's body. You didn't forget who we are right. Then let me say it. We are Uzumaki, we never give up, we fight until then end, and we never die. Uzushio smiled as he said his finally words. Ura Shishu Fuenjutsu, reverse four symbol sealing technique. Symbols suddenly shot out of his body made out of blood that spread until it covered nearly the entire island. Everyone run. He screamed out as he vanished in a burst of speed. He looked back to see half of the forces he brought with him get concealed behind the black orb before it was all pulled into Uzushio's corpse. We are Uzumaki, we never give up, we fight until the end, and we never die. You are right no one truly dies so long as a single person remembers them and I'll never forget you Uzushio. He watched as Uzushio's corpse began to turn into dust and float away in the wind. Even in death you protect the Uzumaki's secrets. He smiled at that as he motioned for his troops to return to the boat not noticing the single house that was left untouched by everything. 30. Naruto's eyes opened up as the scroll fell from his head making everyone look at him. I saw it. Denpa and Ishiki looked down at Naruto with sadness in their eyes. Yeah it wasn't pretty, Ishiki stated as he sat down. Denpa was twirling a short dagger that Naruto took notice of very quickly. That's Shinja's dagger. This made Denpa smile as he caught the blade in mid-twirl. Yep. Denpa looked at the blade with a fascinated glance. Kensaku, Sever of the Heavens, that is the nickname to this blade. The name was lost a long time ago when Shinja got a hold of the blade. But how did you get a hold of it? Naruto asked still looking at the blade that stabbed Uzushio in the back. Well when the owner of this blade dies the blade looks for a new owner. Denpa gently stored the blade away into his cloak with a gently smile. But I can't use the blade the way Shinja did. He spent years finding all the tricks to this blade and all I've managed to find was that it contracts and retracts at alarming speeds. Naruto nodded his head then remembered the one man who saved Ananami. What happened to that Yuukaiken guy? This brought looks of surprise from both Denpa and Ishiki as they looked between themselves nervously. We don't like talking about him. Ishiki looked at his brother who just shrugged. It's not that it's bad, but it's just uncomfortable. So why could I see more than just Ananami's memory in this thing? Naruto held up the scroll and looked at Denpa for the answer. Well he placed a bit of everyone's memory into that scroll. Denpa smiled at Naruto with sadness. The reason why you saw the last moments of Uzushio is because Ananami placed a seal on him that would transport his last bit of memories into a scroll for him to view. Naruto just looked at the scroll with sadness reflected in his blue eyes. Listen we don't need an answer right away, but we will need one soon, Kakuiki said as he got off his boulder with a frown. I want to have some time alone. Naruto got up and walked over to a small hill that was little ways away from the cabin. Naruto sat down with his knees to his chin with a thoughtful expression on his face. Dad, Mom what would you do? Naruto asked as he slowly closed his eyes to think. I want to help Uzushio Gakura rebuild itself, but I'm a ninja from Konoha. What do I do? Why not try and do both? Naruto recognized the voice from the scroll and turned around to see a man with blue silver hair with a serpent-like smile and a tattered cloak wrapped around his waist. Yuukaiken. Naruto was stopped from saying anything else when Yuukaiken placed his hand on Naruto's mouth. Shh. Yuukaiken smiled at Naruto. If the others knew I was here it would just cause trouble. He watched as Naruto nodded his head. Now it seems to me that you should be able to do both. What do you mean? Yuukaiken just smiled and made a gesture at the small group behind him. The one thing that the Ochita is that they are ferociously loyal to the Uzumaki clan. Yu Kaiken sat down and watched as the sun gently fell behind the horizon. You can be a leader of a village and still be a member of Konoha. What do you think an alliance is meant for? To unite two villages together, Naruto stated in an obvious tone. Exactly, but to recreate Uzushio Gakur you need time. Yu Kaiken waved his hands in the air like he was calculated the time needed. Well, you have three years of training and you have four people who can help in rebuilding. Then you have Nami which might be able to help in the rebuilding process. 
So I would say approximately three years and two months for the new Uzushio Gakuo to be ready at the latest. Wait how did you know how long my training was? At this Yuukaiken simply smiled. Sorry, but that is my secret. Yuukaiken suddenly stood up and stretched his back. I'm off kid, but remember you can call on your allies to help. Wait why can't you stay? Naruto watched as Yuukaiken stopped and looked back with a confused look on his face. Because that would ruin the surprise I have in store for you. With that Yuukaiken disappeared in a swirl of water leaving Naruto behind with his thoughts. Rebuild Uzushio Gakur and stay with Konoha until it is finished. Naruto looked up at the sky. What do you guys think? A gently breeze blew through his air making Naruto smile. I thought you guys would like it. Naruto turned his attention down the hill and walked down it with a full smile on his face. Jiraiya and the others looked to see Naruto walking down the hill with a smile. So what have you decided? Naruto looked at the others and they smiled back knowing what he was going to do. We need to make a stop at Nami no Kuni. Naruto's smile grew even bigger with thoughts of rebuilding his ancestor's home. Chapter 24, Naruto's Return Hinata was walking around in Konoha with a smile on her face. Today Naruto is coming back. Hinata could barely contain her excitement when she woke up. She was now heading to the gate that was when she saw Tsunade waiting at the gate as well. Hokage-sama what are you doing here? Waiting for Naruto to return. Tsunade looked ready to call in a search if Naruto returned even a second late. He should be here soon. Hinata took to looking at the sky until she heard the unmistakable sound of footsteps. They turned to see four people approaching the gate. One was Jiraiya wearing a smile, but with a tired look in his eyes. The others was Ishiki, Denpa, and Enmatsuki all looked the same except for Denpa who took to wearing a samurai leg armor. The finally person had a staff on his back with a ring large enough to slip one arm through and was wearing a cloak with a hood pulled over his face, but Hinata saw the tufts of spiky blonde hair that brought a smile on her face. He removed his hood revealing the face of Naruto with longer hair that nearly fell over his eyes and ended at his shoulders, but at the very tips it had a red color making it look on fire. His cheek scars also seemed to have gotten deeper and his eyes still retained their blue color. He had his Konoha headband wrapped around his right arm, but on his left he had the Uzushio Gakur symbol. He was wearing a type of rope that nearly concealed his hands, but on his back and both sleeves was kanji. The one on his back was Nanemu de Fakusu, the fox with no name, but the two on his sleeve actually spelled one complete thing. The kanji on his arm when placed together was Senen no Hai, Sage of the Yang. What too much? Naruto smiled a little at seeing the faces of Tsunade and Hinata. Naruto what happened? Tsunade and Hinata said at the same time making Naruto chuckle a little. Well, I've been a little busy. Naruto looked at the length of his hair with a slight frown. Through I do wish I cut my hair a little. Hinata walked forward and looked at Naruto's hair. I like it long. Naruto looked at hair and saw the smile. I guess I can keep it for a while. Hinata quickly gave Naruto a hug with a kiss surprising Naruto a little. I missed you. Naruto looked at Hinata and smiled even bigger. Me too. Naruto hugged her a little tighter as he looked at Tsunade who simply crossed her arms and tapped her foot. Come on I have to go talk with Tsunade before she loses it. Hinata smiled while Naruto grabbed her hand. 30. So that is what happened. Tsunade calmly placed her hands on her desk while looking at Naruto who looked back with a tiny smile he told her everything except for the part about Kyuubi. That was something he needed to tell Hinata before long. So you're staying in Konoha until your village is done then you're going to become its leader. Pretty much the sum of it. Naruto watched as Tsunade went into a more thoughtful position and I would like this to stay between the Hokage and myself. I understand, but I will have to tell the council. Naruto nodded his head. I'm sorry, but are you ready for such a responsibility? Tsunade watched as Jiraiya raised his hand. I'm actually beating into his skull everything I know about being a leader. That was when Ishiki smiled. And we used to be in Uzushio Gakur so we can help in the running of it until Naruto is ready to run it on his own. Tsunade peered at him with a slight glare. Hinata was sitting on a chair with slight tears in her eyes. Naruto looked at her and tapped her on the shoulder. She looked at him while he motioned to the door and followed him out of the door. Tsunade was about to call out when Jiraiya stopped her with a shake of his head. I'll fill in the rest of this story. Tsunade took one last at Naruto before nodding her head. 30. Hinata was sitting on a rock while Naruto stood in front of the sun. So you'll be gone soon. Naruto looked at her and saw she was about to cry. Yeah but I need to check something. Hinata looked at him while he turned around. Tell me Hinata do you remember the red chakra I used to beat Sasuke in the Chunin exams? 
she nodded her head and remembered the malevolent energy just pouring off of Naruto. Well, you remember the QB. She nodded her head while Naruto sat down in front of her. Well, what they told us in the academy was a lie no one can kill a Baijuu. The only way to defeat it is to seal it within something. The Yodaim couldn't beat the QB, so he had to seal it within a baby. That baby was me I'm the Jinchuriki of the QB. Naruto waited for Hinata to say something, but she just sat there and looked at him with a small, but sad smile. I know. Naruto's eyes widened at Hinata's words. My father told me when you left for your training mission. He said he wanted to see how far I would go to be with you. Did you really think my opinion of you would change knowing that? Naruto turned his head answering Hinata with that little movement. Naruto I will always love you and only you. Naruto smiled as he looked up at Hinata. Thanks Hinata. Hinata gently slid down and sat with Naruto. But for this next part I need to talk to your father. Hinata looked at Naruto who was looking out to the horizon. Why? Naruto looked down and smiled even bigger. Because there is two ways you can come with me. Hinata's eyes held surprise and happiness. One is you, become an ambassador between the two villages. Two is that you marry someone in the other village. The last one had both of them blushing red. But we're still too young for that last one, but either way we can still spend time together. Hinata smiled and gave Naruto another kiss. 30. So he knows how to use nature chakra. Tsunade sounded astonished, but Jiraiya shook his head. No, but he did do something that I'm extremely proud of. Jiraiya looked on as Tsunade listened intently. He managed to fuse the Rasengan with his own elemental chakra. What? Tsunade stood up so quickly that her chair flew backwards. You couldn't even do that. I know, but he did it in a way I didn't think of. Tsunade's eyes widened as she realized what he meant. Seals. He did it with seals. He managed to combine the seal that helps him create his Rasengan with his wind-based seal. He is still on his way to a nature chakra seal to help complete his jutsu, but the thing is still one hell of a jutsu. What does it do exactly? Tsunade suddenly saw Jiraiya's expression change dramatically. Well I don't really know exactly. Tsunade eyed Jiraiya a little more. But from what I could gather it attacks on a cellular level almost like a poison, but much worse. It's almost like it's cutting his opponent with microscopic wind blades that just rip the enemy apart from the inside out. Tsunade thought about everything Jiraiya said about the new jutsu Naruto created. Does he exhibit any backlash from this? Jiraiya was thoughtful for a few seconds. You know now that you mention it he did say his arm felt like it was stabbed multiple times. Tsunade stared at him and he knew what she wanted. I need to see it. Jiraiya nodded his head and was about to get Naruto when Tsunade spoke. But first we have a problem. Akatsuki made its move on Suna and managed to capture the current Kazekage and Jinchuriki to Shukaku. I need you to bring Naruto back in here so I can tell him his mission. Jiraiya nodded his head and moved to the door to get out. 30. Naruto was in the Hyuga Manor with a clam demeanor waiting for Hyashi to speak to him. Naruto heard the door open and saw a Hyuga walk in with a slight smile. Hyashi-sama will see you now. Naruto nodded his head and walked into the Hyashi's chambers. Naruto saw Hyashi sitting with his legs crossed sipping some tea from a cup. Naruto. Hayashi looked at Naruto with calm eyes as Naruto swallowed. What did you want to talk about? I would like to ask for Hinata to become an ambassador between Konoha and Uzushiogakur. Hyashi's eyes narrowed slightly at the mention of the Uzumaki's home. You see I'm rebuilding Uzushiogakur and since Konoha and Uzushiogakur were aligned back then. I see, but why Hinata why not another more older shinobi? Naruto looked at the ground with a slight worried expression. Could it be that you don't want Hinata to be an ambassador, but something more? Naruto didn't say anything, but Hyashi could see the way Naruto flinched that he hit close to the mark. What would you do if I said no? Naruto looked at Hyashi and saw that he was staring at him with a critical gaze. Then I guess I'll have no choice, but to fight for her. Hyashi stood up and Naruto did the same. The two stared at each other for what seemed like hours until Hyashi spoke. If we fought you would lose. Naruto smiled and Hyashi looked on curious. Maybe I'll lose, but I will go down for the one person I want for this job. Hyashi looked on for a few seconds more. Fine she can be an ambassador until something happens, but when will this village of yours be done? Naruto thought about it for a few seconds before speaking. In about one to two months I would also like this to stay between us. You can tell the Hokage just make sure it discreet. Hyashi nodded his head and turned with a wave of his hand. Naruto bowed his head and left with a smile on his face. Hinata you chose your boyfriend well. Hyashi smiled as he went back to writing on a scroll. 30. 
Naruto walked outside only to get ambushed by Sakura who smacked him in the back of the head. You idiot you running around this village I had to track you by chakra signature. Naruto turned and smiled at her. Sorry Sakura, but I've been a little busy. Naruto rubbed the back of his head with a sly smile just as Jiraiya came in. Naruto Tsunade wants you to see her for a mission. Naruto nodded his head as he followed after Jiraiya with a smile as Sakura followed with a scowl on her face. 30. What? Naruto was looking at Tsunade with a look of surprise as he heard about Gara's capture. What do you mean he's been captured? Akatsuki attacked Sunagakur and managed to capture Gara when he went to protect his village. Tsunade watched as anger seemed to float into Naruto, but slowly it vanished. Suna has asked for you to be on the mission. Naruto nodded his head and turned to look at Ishiki, Denpa, and Enmatsuki. Enma can you come along? Enmatsuki smiled and made a tilt of her head. Why just her? Jiraiya looked puzzled by the choice. Because Ishiki is more of a scout than anything. Ishiki smiled at this. And Denpa is better with his brother than with anyone else. Denpa leaned against the wall and twirled A's dagger. So the best choice out of them would be Enmatsuki. Jiraiya nodded his head as Naruto went out the door with Enmatsuki in tow. He'll be a good leader with a little more experience under his belt. Jiraiya looked at Tsunade who nodded her head with a smile. 30. Naruto was waiting at the gate when Kakashi and Sakura joined him and Enmatsuki. Are we ready? Naruto asked as he saw Kakashi I smile at him. Then let's get going. Naruto turned on a dime and jumped leaving small impressions of his feet in the ground. Kakashi jumped after Naruto yelling out. We need to stop by Suna. Naruto turned his head to look at Kakashi. We need to treat Konkuro and get some info where Akatsuki headed. Naruto nodded his head and continued on his path towards Suna. 30. Orochimaru sat on his bed with a smile as he plotted the final piece of his plan. Soon Sasuke you will be mine, Orochimaru chuckled a little until he heard a sound. He looked up just in time to see a lightning spear shoot out of his door aimed at him. He managed to move his body missing the spear by mere inches. What the hell? Sasuke suddenly blasted the door opened and smirked at Orochimaru. He looked exactly the same except for a change in wardrobe and an open shirt that revealed his chest along with a giant jagged scar going down his chest. Sasuke discovered the scar when he came to Odo Gakur and changed out of his old clothing. Sasuke himself was furious to see that Naruto could have killed him, but still held his attack back. I think you've outlived your usefulness. Sasuke channeled more chakra into his spear. Another spear shoot out of the side and impaled Orochimaru in the side. You think you can kill me? At first Sasuke looked confused and smiled. I'm an Uchiha I think a pathetic snake could never stand up to might of the Sharingan. Orochimaru simple glared at Sasuke until he smiled. Sasuke glared at Orochimaru as he opened his mouth impossible wide as a giant white snake ripped itself out of Orochimaru's skin. Sasuke watched as the snake fell behind him and let out a long hiss. I guess I'll just have to show you. Sasuke stared at Orochimaru as his Sharingan activated. Orochimaru slithered over to Sasuke in great speed as Sasuke's curse mark slowly began to cover his body. Orochimaru slammed into Sasuke causing the area Sasuke was standing to turn into a small crater. Orochimaru was then thrown by a giant wing as the smoke cleared. Orochimaru reared upwards giving off a roar more of hiss making Sasuke smirked even more. Suddenly small snakes that made up Orochimaru's body suddenly flew forward to capture the Uchiha. Sasuke simply swing his sword and cut the snakes down. Time to die. Sasuke jumped forward and lifted his sword high into the air before swinging it downwards with lightning dancing on the blade. Damn. Orochimaru thought as the blade cleaved him in two separate pieces. Sasuke looked down at the pieces with emotionless eyes as he moved towards the door, but stopped when the pieces of Orochimaru began to slither back together. Sasuke turned around with an emotionless gaze when Orochimaru's snake mouth smiled. You can't kill an immortal. Orochimaru swung forward, but suddenly stopped when a man wearing a black cloak with red clouds and an orange mask appeared in front of him. Immortal? Madara answered in a taunting tone. You wouldn't know the first thing about being immortal. Orochimaru looked into Madara's eye and saw his Sharingan. Orochimaru suddenly found himself in a pit with Madara looking down at him. Now you will truly die. Orochimaru's eyes widened as a thousand swords fell from the sky at him. Sasuke watched as Orochimaru's snake body collapsed on the ground. You said you wasn't going to interfere. Sasuke growled at the elder Uchiha who turned to look at him. Yes sorry about that. Madara walked over to Orochimaru's body before sucking his body into his eye. But if you remember we had a deal. 30. Flashback. 
Three years ago. Sasuke was walking through the forest when he heard the woods crack behind him. He turned around and charged at Chidori with what little chakra he had. What he saw was a man in a black cloak with an orange mask waving at him. Who the fuck are you? Sasuke growled out making Madara back up in slight surprise. Is that any way to treat a fellow clan member? Sasuke's eyes widened in surprise, but it quickly turned into anger. How dare you call yourself Uchiha? Sasuke was about to charge when Madara removed a little of his mask to show Sasuke his black eye before it turned into a Sharingan. Sasuke stopped in his tracks while Madara smiled under his mask. You're really an Uchiha. Yes Sasuke. Madara placed his mask back on his face. But my entire family was killed by Itachi. Madara's eye turned upwards in a sort of smile. Yes, but under direct orders. Sasuke anger quickly turned to surprise. Don't you find it strange that he murder everyone in his clan except for you? He let you live twice he could have killed you at any moment and yet he didn't. Because he wants me. Don't fool yourself child, Madara said this in an angered voice. Itachi was ordered to kill your clan by the Konoha elders, because they were planning a coup on the village. Why should I believe you? Sasuke demanded as Madara leaned against a tree. Because it was I who helped him do it. Sasuke's anger returned in a fury as he charged Madara with a kunai raised, but before Sasuke could reach him Madara grabbed him by the throat and slammed him against a tree. One man could never kill off the entire Uchiha even if it was an Uchiha himself. So he came to me and I helped him with the mission. Why are you telling me this? Sasuke looked at Madara with his Sharingan blazing. Because I need your help. Madara watched as Sasuke laughed. And why should I help you? Because if you do I will help you in your revenge. Sasuke stopped his laughter and looked at Madara with confusing. You go to Orochimaru earn his trust then when I give the signal you attack him. Then when he is weakened I will come in to finish the job. Then and only then will I help you. And why should I trust you? Madara smiled under his mask. Because I have all the poof right here. Madara held out a folder and passed it to Sasuke who took it and looked it over. Madara watched as Sasuke's eyes turned from sadness to rage in a single second. All I have to do is betray Orochimaru and you'll help me. Madara smiled knowing he just hooked Sasuke. 30. Yeah I remember now. Sasuke looked towards the door and began to walk through the entrance. I think it's time I train you myself. Sasuke stopped and looked at Madara with startled eyes. You train me. Sasuke couldn't believe his ears. Yes, if you're going to get revenge on Konoha then you need more training. Sasuke thought about it for a second before he smiled a twisted smile. Madara took to going out the door with Sasuke, but never saw Sasuke's smile turn into a sneer. You keep making me stronger Madara, but you forget that you had a hand in my clan's destruction. So when the time is right I will kill you, Sasuke chuckled a little making Madara turn his head slightly to look at him, but in doing this he missed a figure run from hallway in front of them. Chapter 25, The Lost Naruto was tapping his foot anxious to get going as Enmatsuki gently tapped Naruto on the shoulder making him look at her. Please calm down a little Naruto. Enmatsuki smiled at Naruto and Naruto nodded. Suddenly footsteps could be heard making the two of them turn to see Kakashi, Sakura, and the newest addition to their team Chio. Can we get going? Naruto said this with a slight tone of impatience behind it. Yes Naruto we can. But as soon as the words left Kakashi's mouth Naruto jumped kicking up sand. I knew this was going to happen with Naruto. Kakashi apologized to Chio before jumping after Naruto with Sakura and Chio directly behind him. Kakashi finally caught up with Naruto and grabbed him by the shoulder. Naruto slow it down a little. Unlike you some of us don't have stamina like yours. Naruto turned his head and nodded his head though it was hesitant. Why do you care so much about our Kazekage? Chio looked at Naruto who stared at her with confusing in his eyes. Because I understand him better than anyone else. Chio eyes widened as Naruto continued to speak. Because just like him I hold a Baijuu, but it's more than that. I want to rescue him because he is my friend. Naruto placed more chakra into his feet and soared forward leaving behind his group. Damn it. Kakashi growled out as he forced more chakra into his feet, but before he could move Sakura grabbed him by the arm. What did he mean by that? Kakashi looked at her with sadness in his eye. What I'm about to tell you cannot leave here. Sakura nodded her head. The Yodaim couldn't beat the Kyubi no Kitsune when it attacked our village. So in order to make sure that his village would be safe he sealed the beast into a newborn. That baby was Naruto. Sakura looked at Naruto and remembered the red chakra that leaked out of him. So that's why he was always been alone. Sakura looked at Naruto with sadness. 
Naruto kept going through the trees with determination in his eyes. 30. Senji was sitting on a rock laying his back against the wall with an amused smile. So now that you have the Shukaku what are you going to do about the help that is coming? Pain's ghostly image stared at him for more than a second before he turned his attention back to the statue. I already have that taken care of, Pain stated while Senji shook his head with a smile. Why aren't you helping with the extraction anyway? Because it's clear you don't like me. Senji looked at Pain with his black eyes. So why would you want me near the very thing you want to extract? Pain narrowed his eyes at Senji, but kept his attention on the extraction process. Besides I don't have the patience for something like this. Senji got off his rock and turned around and walked out with Pain staring at him. Zetsu have you found anything about him? Zetsu looked at Pain with an almost apprehensive air around him. Well, no. Pain turned and looked at Zetsu who backed away a little. Almost everything about him has been destroyed and anyone who ever knew him has been killed. Pain was thoughtful for a few seconds before he spoke. All right go and track the movements of the Jinchuriki of Nibi no Bacon Echo. Zetsu nodded and left sinking into the ground. Whoever you are Senji I intend find out. 30. Naruto and his group stopped in as a lone figure stood in front of them. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he recognized the man in front of him. Itachi. Itachi looked at Naruto with his Sharingan active. I'm sorry, but this is how far you get. Itachi didn't move an inch, but gently began to raise a finger and pointed at Naruto. Except for you Naruto you are coming with me. Naruto smirked and charged at Itachi who simple vanished in a flurry of ravens. Genjutsu? Naruto gritted his teeth at his forgetfulness at placing a seal to stop something like this. He must have done it when he pointed his finger at me. Give up. Naruto heard Itachi's voice from behind Naruto. Naruto turned and saw Itachi floating above the ground with ravens for his legs and half of his waist. There is no way to escape. I don't know the meaning of give up. Itachi's eyes visible widen for just a second before going back to normal. If I gave up then I will never be able to get Sasuke back. Itachi's eyes narrowed at his brother's name. You should give up on Sasuke. Naruto was shocked at Itachi's words as Itachi stared at the sky. He has gone to Orochimaru and for that he has a chance of being corrupted further. Naruto stared at Itachi in confusing until he elaborated. Sasuke is still a blank canvas he can be colored by anything now. Naruto narrowed his eyes as Itachi who continued to speak. By the time you find Sasuke you might not like what you see. I don't care. Itachi eyes widened at Naruto's outburst. You might be ready to give up on him, but I'm not. Even if Sasuke turns into something evil I will still try and save him and no one is going to stop me not Konoha and definitely not you. Itachi continued to stare at Naruto with a calculated look. You speak of a pipe dream. Didn't I just get done saying I don't care how hopeless it looks. Itachi looked on as Naruto seemed to glow with power. I will try regardless of how bleak it looks. I won't go back on my word that is my Nindo. Itachi stayed the way he was for a second until Naruto saw something he didn't believe Itachi could do, smile. Naruto opened his mouth to speak, but found a raven shoved into his mouth. I hope you are correct Naruto. Itachi spoke as the Genjutsu area began to disintegrate. I'm placing my hopes into your hands. What did you do to me? Naruto coughed out as he glared at Itachi. I gave you something that I think will help you in the future. Itachi turned his back as the area began to shatter. But I hope you will never have to use. With that the Genjutsu shattered and Naruto found himself standing in the same field, but saw Kakashi fighting Itachi. Naruto looked at his hand and found a tag of some sorts attached. Naruto watched as the seals on the paper began to fade, but he saw it quick enough to see what it was. Transference seal? Naruto looked at Itachi and saw that something wasn't quite right. But what would he use a transference seal for? Itachi staggered a little as Kakashi tried to catch him with his Reikiri. Naruto took his staff of his back and spun it above his head before slamming the end on the ground creating a small hole. Time to end this. Naruto growled this out as he jumped into the air and gripped his staff in both hands. Kakashi and Itachi looked up just as Naruto swung the staff. The ring glowed for the briefest of seconds before wind formed all around the ring. Itachi's eyes widened as Naruto sent a giant funnel of wind straight at him. Itachi dodged out of the way and was happy he did so as the wind funnel slammed into the ground it began to slice the earth apart like it was being sucked into a twister of blades. Meet the new and improved Tenron. The wind continued to spin around Naruto's staff like a captured tornado. Now I'm afraid you're going to die here. Naruto swung his staff releasing the wind funnel at Itachi who dodged yet again, but was taken by surprise when Naruto swung the staff again in his new direction and sent the funnel there. 
Itachi went through hand signs until he ended on Tiger and spat out a straight stream of fire. The two attacks smacked into each other causing a crater to begin to form underneath the two. Everyone stood in amazement as Naruto's wind attack actually held off fire. What the hell is going on? Itachi thought as he took a closer look at Naruto's staff and saw that the ring was still spinning. That's it. Itachi ceased his fire and vanished in a burst of speed. Naruto looked around, but felt a hand grab his shoulder and throw him into a tree. Naruto looked up to see Itachi staring at him. Naruto smirked and swung his staff, but was surprised when no wind came out. Naruto looked at his staff and saw a chain wrapped completely around the ring stopping it from spinning. Rotation. Naruto looked at Itachi who stared right back. You placed a seal to keep the ring on your staff rotating when you first spin it above your head. Then a secondary seal takes in the wind it causes and sharpens it up until you swing your staff. Naruto smiled as you looked at Itachi. I didn't think you would find out so quickly, but it's too late. Itachi looked at Naruto with confusing. Because you never noticed the snake in the grass. Itachi's eyes widened as he heard the chirping of birds. He turned his head just in time to see Kakashi slam his reikiri straight through his chest. Blood poured out of Itachi's mouth as he smiled. What do you have to be happy about? Kakashi growled out as Itachi's head slumped over. Kakashi let Itachi fall to the ground only to see the face of someone he didn't recognize. I knew something was off about him. Kakashi narrowed his eye at the corpse. Kakashi looked at Naruto to see him looking at his left hand with a slight tone of concern. What's wrong Naruto? Kakashi did this guy do anything when I was trapped under his genjutsu. Kakashi looked a little worried, but answered regardless. Hey he managed to grab a hold of your arm, but we managed to get him away. Naruto's eyes widened for a second, but quickly fell back. Why did he do anything to you? Naruto looked up and smiled. No my arm just felt funny. Naruto smiled as Chio walked over to the body. So it was a transcription seal, but the question at what did he give me? Naruto wasn't paying attention to Chio's conversation as he had more pressing matters to deal with. Naruto took out some ink and drew some seals over his left arm and placed some chakra into them. Suddenly the seal the fake Itachi placed on him was revealed allowing Naruto to take a much more detailed look at it. Naruto scanned the seal and found nothing that could be linked to a tracking seal or something that would be overall dangerous. I'll just have to watch it. Naruto resolved finding no way to get rid of the seal. I'll just have to speak to Jiraiya when he gets back from his mission. Naruto heard twigs crack behind him and quickly hit his left arm as the seal faded back into the skin. Naruto are you okay? Sakura looked worried as Naruto smiled at her. I'm fine let's just go find Gara. Naruto walked past her as they began to move towards their newest destination. And Matsuki ran besides Naruto with Kakashi in front and Chio and Sakura in the back. And Matsuki kept making worried glances at Naruto until he spoke in a hushed voice. He placed a transcription seal on me. And Matsuki looked behind her to make sure the two behind them couldn't hear them. Is it dangerous? Naruto shook his head as he grabbed the nearest branch and used it to launch himself forward. No, but I need to figure out why he placed it on me. And Matsuki nodded her head. But don't tell anyone I don't want to worry them. And Matsuki was about to argue, but thought better of it. She realized one thing from the three years she has been with Naruto is that he is a stubborn kid. The group kept the run until they ran into Guy's team. What happened to you? Kakashi asked seeing the damp clothing and slightly torn shirt on Guy. We had a little problem, but nothing the springtime of youth couldn't deal with. Guy announced with excitement making a much smaller, but just as excitable version of himself to jump around yelling about youth. Naruto didn't pay him any mind as he stared at the giant boulder that sat in front of a cave with a seal on it. They're in there. Naruto bent down low as he growled almost predatory as he kept his eyes firmly fixed on the boulder. Kakashi glanced at Naruto with worried eyes, but glanced at the seal and knew what was needed to be done. 30. Okay is everyone in position? Kakashi asked getting various okays from Guy's team. Kakashi looked at Naruto who was in a run position ready to run and once the boulder blew. Remember what I said Naruto. Don't worry my clone will run in first. Kakashi turned to see Naruto smiling with Enmatsuki looking around with vigilance. Let's get this started. He got a nod from his group as Sakura pulled the tag off the rock as Kakashi and Naruto's clone charged in. One holding his Reikiri and the other holding the new Rasengan. Reikiri. Futon, Rasengan. The two attacks smacked into the boulder and with the combined power the boulder exploded. The group then ran into the cave only to see two members of Akatsuki. Well, hello, but you're a little late for the party. Daedara smirked as he gave Gara's body a slap on the face. Naruto's clone charged while pulling his staff off his back, 
but before it could reach Datara it has slapped away. Sasari watched as the clone disappeared in a burst of smoke. You know you should really watch your back. Naruto's voice came as he slammed his Rasengan into Sasari's back. Naruto watched as his Rasengan dug into Sasari, but instead of seeing blood he saw clay. Naruto's eyes widened as he saw his hand trapped in clay that was when he heard the chuckling. Now you can feel the true power of my art. Datara made a tiger sign and Naruto watched as the clay glowed until the entire area shook from the explosion. Everyone was in shock except for a smiling Enmatsuki. What do you have to be happy about? Enmatsuki didn't say a word she simply pointed to the cave ceiling Datara looked up and saw Naruto smiling down at him with wind already encircled around his staff. Hello. Naruto swung his staff at the stalactites hanging above the floor. And goodbye. Datara placed his hands into his pouches to gather his clay, but realized he wouldn't make it in time. Naruto watched as Sasori's scorpion tail swung above his partner and began to spin as a makeshift shield. Go Datara I'll handle things here. Datara smiled at his partner and pulled out a bird-shaped clay doll. Datara dropped it to the ground and was covered in smoke, but once it cleared Datara was standing on the bird with Gara in its mouth. Naruto and everyone watched as the bird took off into a hole in the ceiling making Naruto growl. Naruto glanced at Kakashi who nodded his head and the two took off after Datara. Sasori Simple watched as the two made their escape confusing the three women inside the cave. You're probably wondering why I let them go. Well it's quite simple really through he may be young Datara can handle himself. I would be more worried about yourselves. Sasori suddenly pulled an arm that had a gauntlet on it out and pointed it at the three. Time to die. Suddenly the studs on the gauntlet launched forward while breaking apart to reveal kunai with explosive tags on them. Look out, Sakura yelled out as she and Chio jumped to the sides, but Enmatsuki kept her place and only stared at the incoming projectiles. What are you doing? Enmatsuki closed her eyes and breathed deeply before opening them to reveal blood-red eyes. Sasori watched in fascination as her eyes flickered. Then before everyone's eyes the kunai in front of her were shredded to pieces like they were cut by a sword. What? Now what do we have here? Sasori stared at Enmatsuki who stared right back. It would appear I have quite a prize. Tell me how did you do that nifty trick of yours? Enmatsuki smiled as she shook her head slightly. I guess I should tell. Then she stared directly at Sasori with hate in her eyes. Since you're going to die here. I come from a clan that can make form our chakra into invisible blades that are then sent forward to cut down anything within the sight of our eyes. 1. Sasori smiled underneath his puppet's armor. And Matsuki continued to stare at Sasori and confusing. What's with the look? Sasori asked as Enmatsuki smiled a sad smile. Well I just told you what my Kekai Genkai is capable of. Sasori tilted his head a little. Yes so what? Enmatsuki smiled a little bit bigger. Well, you're standing within my eyesight. Sasori's eyes widened as his puppet was blasted by multiple invisible chakra blades. Enmatsuki smiled and was about to deactivate her eyes when a shape jumped out of the shredded remains of the puppet. Well, done. Came Sasori's voice as light hit his face making Chio eyes widened. I never thought anyone would destroy Hiruko so quickly. How are you so young? Sasori looked at Chio and smiled. What a shock to see your grandson again. Sasori reached into his robes and produced a scroll that he unraveled making the three shinobi go into defensive positions. Now from what you told me about that power I think I figured out some of its weaknesses. One you have to have your opponent within your line of sight to hit them. Two a Kekai Genkai like the Sharingan or Byakugan that can see chakra can easily avoid the blades. Three I would guess you're not a very good close range fighter. Now am I on the ball. And Matsuki looked on emotionless making Sasori smile even more. Now I don't pass he's a Kekai Genkai that can see chakra, but I do have one advantage over you. Then the scroll exploded covering Sasori and shielding him from view, but the smoke cleared everyone saw he had another puppet. This one had black hair with a purple tint and was wearing a black cloak. I have my favorite human puppet. He glanced at Chio and saw her shocked look as she recognized the puppet. Yes Grandma Chio it is the third Kizkij. Why Sasori why did you do this? Sasori frowned a little at his grandma before Enmatsuki's voice brought his attention back to her. Just because you summoned a new puppet doesn't mean it can save you. Sasori looked at her eyes as he saw the same flicker as before. Suddenly the puppet opened its mouth a black sand began to float out of it just as the area where Sasori was standing was blasted and turned into a dust cloud. Enmatsuki watched as the area cleared and saw something that shocked her. Sasori was fine he was even given her a little wave from behind the wall of sand. There is no way sand could protect you like that. Sasori actually chuckled at her words. Whoever said this was sand. 
Sasari looked at Chio and saw her glare. Let me explain what happened this at the third Kazekage's Kekai Genkai Satetsu, Iron Sand. You see the third Kazekage had the unique ability to convert his chakra into magnetic force. Sasari looked at the black floating substance with a dreamy look in his eyes. This isn't sand this is iron powder. And Matsuki gritted her teeth as she stared at Sakura and Chio who all nodded at her. Let's bring him down, Sakura yelled out as she charged as Chio placed chakra strings on her. Looks like I'm going to get a whole lot of practice, and Matsuki sighed as she was standing far away with her eyes trained on Sasori. 30. Naruto and Kakashi were chasing after the Daedara as Daedara began to make more bombs. Time to separate the two. Daedara dropped the spider bombs making Naruto's eyes narrow, but before he could do anything one of the spider bombs dropped faster than the others. Naruto turned and saw it was directly between him and Kakashi before it exploded. The force sent Naruto forward while Kakashi was sent backwards. When Naruto looked back he saw the spider bombs were now between him and Kakashi. Don't worry I can take care of them. Kakashi announced with some worry in his voice. Naruto you can do this without me, but I will be there soon. Just promise me one thing that you will be careful. Naruto nodded and began to chase after the giant bird with his staff in hand. Time to bring the bird down. Naruto spun his staff around until the end with no ring was facing Daedara. Daedara looked back and saw Naruto's staff began to glow with chakra making Daedara narrow his eyes. Suddenly the staff extended almost as if the staff was compressed into that small form. Daedara tried to move his bird out of the way, but the staff's end managed to impale one of the wings. Naruto smiled as he swung downward with his staff's end laced with wind chakra easily cut through the bird's wing. Time to get Gara back. Naruto thought as he ran towards the direction where the bird crash landed. Chapter 26, The Death and Return Naruto finally stopped on a tree branch to see Daedara picking himself off the ground. Enjoy your little trip. Daedara looked up and sneered at Naruto. I guess I'll just have to blow your little Freya. Daedara was interrupted when he was punched in the side of the face by a cage bunshine. Daedara flew backwards until he smacked into a tree making the trunk crack a little. He looked up to see the clone digging his way into the bird's head, but this just made Daedara smile. You won't make it. Daedara was about to detonate the bird when a giant funnel of wind came sailing towards him forcing him to dodge. Daedara looked at as his bird to see Gara with Naruto's clone making him curse, but that was when Kakashi came in with his Sharingan morphed into his Mangekyo Sharingan. Daedara narrowed his eye in anger at seeing Kakashi's Sharingan, but that was when he felt it. Kamui, might of the gods, Kakashi whispered as his Sharingan began to spin a little. Daedara looked at his remaining arm and saw that it appeared to be trapped in a vortex. Daedara made a move to get out of the way, but right before he was able to do so his arm was ripped off. Daedara's arm fell to the ground and twitched once, but before Daedara had time to react he was forced to dodge Naruto's staff. Daedara looked at his arm and gave it a quick kick into a nearby hole as he ran behind a tree. I guess I don't have much of a choice. Daedara looked at his down bird with a smile as he formulated his plan. 30. Sakura dodged a giant spinning triangle as Sasori continued his assault using his puppet, but at the same time he was using the iron to make a dome around him to protect himself from Enmatsuki's ability. Chio was helping Sakura as much as she could to dodge the iron-based weapons. Enmatsuki on the other hand had abandoned the idea of hitting Sasori and went after the third Kazkij, but whenever she was about to slice him apart Sasori would move him out of the way. Sorry to disappoint you, but I afraid he isn't done with his performance yet, Sasori teased as Enmatsuki missed the puppet once again. She glared at Sasori until she realized what was needed to be done. She grabbed Chio and began to whisper into her ear as she pulled Sakura back to listen in on the plan. Sasori's raised an eyebrow as he watched the three of them nod their heads. What are they up to? Suddenly Sakura ran straight at the third Kazekage making Sasori laugh as he pulled the strings needed to make the cube and triangle intercept her. Sakura smiled as she jumped over the two iron shapes only to see the rectangle head downward to crush her, but she was quickly pulled out of the way as she threw a kunai with ninja wire onto the third Kazekage. Sasori cursed as the wire began to pull the puppet towards the rectangle, but Sasori pulled on his chakra strings and the puppet lurched backwards until it was right above him. You can't beat me like this. That was when he noticed that Enmatsuki was missing. Remember always stay out of my eyesight. Sasori looked above him to see Enmatsuki on the cave ceiling with a smile as the eyes flickered. Hayakujin Ryoran, profusion of hundred blades. Sasori's eyes widened as the area he was standing in and in a ten-foot radius was reduced to rubble. Sakura and Chio raised their arms to protect themselves as bits and pieces of rock came flying at them. Enmatsuki on the other hand had jumped off the ceiling and landed in front of them with narrowed eyes as she watched the dust settle. 
when the scene was cleared the puppet was shredded to pieces only resembling wood chips than anything else. And Matsuki began to turn her back when she heard clapping. When she turned around she saw Sasori completely unharmed, but his Akatsuki cloak was ripped to pieces revealing his puppet body. I never thought you three would cause me so much trouble. Sasori smiled at his Chio's shocked face. What have you done to yourself? Sasori just tilted his head at the question. I turned myself into everlasting art. Chio looked at her grandson with sadness in her eyes. But I suppose this has gone on far enough don't you agree Grandma Chio? She nodded her head as she pulled out a pure white scroll. When she opened it there was a small explosion of smoke and Chio was surrounded by ten puppets each varying in size and shape. Shiro Higi, Juki Chikamatsu no Shu, White Secret Technique, Ten Puppet Collection of Chikamatsu, you used that specific jutsu to conquer an entire castle, but sadly. Sasori swung one last scroll into the air as it was opened. He then reached for his chest compartment and shoot chakra threads into the scroll. The three shinobi's eyes went wide as the entire sky was filled with puppets each carrying a different weapon in its hands. I used this to conquer an entire country. Behold Grandma Chiyomai aka Higi, Hiyaki no Soen, Red Secret Technique, Performance of a Hundred Puppets. The three of them looked at each other and nodded their heads as they got ready for the attack to come. 30. Daidoro was fighting his way towards his bird, but was having a difficult time considering that guy's team decided at that moment to interfere. Daidoro was running up a tree when he saw Rock Lee and right before he could do anything he delivered a swift a brutal kick to Daidoro that sent him flying towards the clay bird. When Daidoro opened his eyes and saw the bird he took the chance and bit off a piece of the clay bird before turning to face the group. Time to show you my art. Daidoro swallowed the clay and immediately he began to blow up like a balloon. I'm going to show you why my art is a blast. At the last word Daidoro exploded sending a giant wall of fire heading straight at the group. Kakashi sighed realizing that at the speed it was traveling they would never escape the blast. Kamui. Kakashi thought as his Sharingan began to spin once again. Everyone watched as the explosion inched closer and closer, but then it started to shrink like it was being pulled backwards. When the fire cleared everyone saw a small hole with air spinning around it before it disappeared. Kakashi collapsed on the spot, but managed to stay awake. I guess I used it too much. Before anyone could respond a giant explosion made them all turn their heads towards the cave. 30. Sakura was on one knee breathing hard surrounded by some of the destroyed puppets. Chiyo's puppets were all destroyed, but they took out most of Sasori's puppets. And Matsuki was laying against a rock with small droplets of blood dripping out of her eyes. Intriguing I never thought you would put up such a fight. Sasori looked around at all the destroyed puppets inside. And to think you destroyed every last puppet I brought with me. I guess I'll just have to refill later on, but first I have to deal with you three. This made Chio smile confusing Sasori. You may never tire because of your puppet body. Sasori's eyes narrowed at his grandmother's words. But, thanks to that you are still a puppet. Sasori's eyes widened as Chio swung her arm and threw a puppet arm that was carrying a sword at him. Sasori merely beat the arm away, but then saw the chakra strings. He tried to move his arm, but the strings jumped from the puppet's arm to his making it stop in its tracks. Sasori was about to charge at Chio, but was held down by Sakura who was using what little chakra left to hold him down. Sasori looked at her just as Enmatsuki rammed a sword through the cylinder with the kanji in his chest. Enmatsuki collapsed on the ground right after that and could only stare up at Sasori as purple blood began to drip down his mouth. He watched as chakra strings that were attached to Enmatsuki retracted to Chio. I put my guard down. Sasori growled out, but he still smiled at his grandmother. I guess I should have known you would have figured out my weakness. I'm sorry you turned out this way Sasori. This brought a chuckle out of Sasori as he collapsed onto his knees. I guess I should be proud that I fell to the one person who taught me everything about puppetry. Sasori's eyes dimmed as his life began to drain from his body. Goodbye Grandmother Chio. With that Sasori died with a smile on his face. 30. Gara's body was laying on the ground while Sakura looked at Naruto who was looking at his body with sadness. I'm sorry Naruto there is nothing we can do. Naruto approached Gara's body with his eyes closed, but when he opened them they were bright orange. Suddenly Naruto's body was covered in what appeared to be liquid fire, but Naruto had seals all over the front end of his body. Everyone watched in amazement as a nearby a small tree began to grow from the energy coming off of him. Is this the power of the Yang Chakra of the Kyubi? Kakashi thought as his eye widened. Naruto placed his hands on Gara's body as the chakra traveled down his arms and surrounded his body. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he felt nothing coming from Gara. Come on. 
Tears began to fall from Naruto's eyes as he still felt no change, but that was when withered hands placed their hands over Naruto's. Naruto looked up to see Chio who smiled and nodded her head. Kisho Tensei, one's own life reincarnation. Chio's hand glowed bright blue as the two worked together on Gara. That was when Naruto felt at a twinge of life growing inside Gara. Then before everyone's eyes Gara opened his eyes just as Naruto released the Kyuubus's chakra. Gara, welcome back. Gara looked at his friend to see tears still in his eyes. I thought you were really dead. Gara looked at Chio just in time to see her collapse, but before she hit the ground Naruto managed to grab her. I guess this old body of mine is finally giving up. Chio looked up at Naruto who began to close his eyes, but a gentle hit on his head stopped him. Don't waste your time Naruto. I'm not wasting my time. Everyone watched as Naruto began to speak to Chio. So long as you still have a single breath in your body I can keep you from dying. Yotan, Yang release, based on the physical energy that governs vitality. Naruto eyes widened at Chio's knowledge of the chakra sealed inside of him. In sort it can breath life into something with life almost like bringing the dead back to life, but you have to be quick enough. Too long and the remaining life force will disappear stopping you from bringing that person back, but I live long enough Naruto please don't do it. Naruto looked away as he looked at Gara who struggled to his feet. Kaze Kage sama can you forgive a silly old woman for what she's done to you? Chio sama I can never be angry with you. Chio looked into Gara's eyes as some tears formed in his eyes. I promise to tell everyone of your noble sacrifice. You will be Miss Chio Basama, honored grandmother Chio. At this Chio smiled and looked up at the sky as she closed her eyes and never opened them again. 30. Datara came into the Akatsuki with a scowl on his face as Toby carried his arm. What happened to you? Kisame smiled at Datara who glared at him. That fucking Uzumaki and Kakashi did this. At the menation of Uzumaki Senji came out of nowhere from behind Datara. Uzumaki you say? Datara jumped backwards from Senji's sudden appearance. Toby on the other hand turned and waved Datara arm at him. Where was he? Datara was about to speak when pain beat him to it. It doesn't matter we have the Nibi to capture first then we worry about the Kyubi and Hachibi. Senji looked at Pain and smiled as Pain glared at him. As you say oh mighty leader. Senji turned around still wearing his smile. Kakuzu walked down to Datara with a sigh as he took the arm away from Toby and began to sew it back to Datara. When Senji was out of sight of everyone his smile vanished as he began to formulate a plan. Okay time to take matters into my own hands. Senji pulled out a bit of cloth that had the Yozushio Gakura symbol on it. Uzumaki you're going to be in a rude awakening soon. He smiled down at the cloth and began to walk away when he noticed Kakuzu and Hidan. So already going after Nibi well I hope you don't mind, but somebody is going to be joining you. After that Senji snapped his finger and a frail looking man appeared before Senji. Zetsumetsu, extinction, I want you to follow those two and when they capture the Nibi I want you to place this somewhere Kumagakura's nins can see. Zetsumetsu nodded his head and disappeared with the cloth making Senji smile even more. This is turning into a great day. Senji walked away from the cave with a smile that would scare even the most hardened ninja. 30. After returning Gara to Sunagakura there was a huge celebration. People cheered and shook the team that helped bring their Kazekage back, but that didn't mean everything was good. After Gara told Suna about Chio's death the village was visible affected to know that one of the bed in the village didn't make it back. The burial had almost everyone in the village there to watch the ceremony. After the burial Naruto and the rest of the Konoha team had to get going, but before they did Naruto looked at Gara and with unspoken words shook his hand with a smile before leaving. Everyone teased Guy about being the slowest of the group as he was forced to carry Kakashi who couldn't walk from overusing his new Sharingan. Sorry Guy I guess I'm just not used to using this Sharingan yet. Kakashi closed his eye to show some guilt, but that didn't stop Guy from beating the young ones to Konoha. Before Kakashi knew what happened he was thrown into the air while Guy changed his backpack to his front. Everyone's eye twitched as they saw Guy now giving Kakashi a piggyback ride, but Lee merely took it as a new training exercise. See you at Konoha, Guy laughed out as he ran leaving everyone else in his dust. A grown man giving another man a piggyback ride. Ten Ten looked on as she tried to erase the memory from her mind. That's just not right. Neji. Neji looked down to see Rock Lee in the exact same position ready for him to get on. Hell no. Neji screamed out, but Lee quickly grabbed his reluctant teammate and held his legs. Come one it will help strengthen your flames of youth. Lee turned and smiled as Neji reeled his hand back. No means n. Before he could get the finally word out Lee took off in a full run and left everyone in his dust as well. Naruto just raised a single eyebrow and watched the two disappear from view. 
Naruto sighed as he closed his eyes as he tapped into Kyuubi's chakra. Naruto what are you doing? Sakura was suddenly lifted into the air along with the rest of the group by what appeared to be chakra arms. We can't be late to Konoha, Naruto said simply as he got into a running position. Sakura and Tenten looked at Enmatsuki who took to grabbing the chakra arm with a vice-like grip. Before they could do the same Naruto vanished in a yellowish-orange flash. Guy was in front of the student urging him on when he saw Naruto appear in front of him wearing a smile. Nice day for a run. Guy's eye twitched when Naruto vanished again making Guy challenge Naruto at the top of his lungs as he opened some of his chakra gates and vanished along with Lee. 30. The entire team made it back to Konoha in recorded time in about in 30 minutes all of them entered the gates. Naruto carrying Tenten who lazed herself using chains to the chakra arm, Sakura who used her strength to grip the arm, and Enmatsuki who just nodded off. Naruto laid the three on the ground as he released the chakra returning back to his regular self. Guy entered just 10 seconds after Naruto did making him drop to his hands and begin to run around the village on his hands. Naruto tried to tell him that he didn't have two, but he continued on with the perseverance of a man possessed. Naruto smiled as he shook his head as he turned to see Tsunade walking with Shizun with a troubled look on her face. You don't want to know. Naruto watched as Tsunade nodded her head and pulled out a scroll. Here this came for you from your village. Naruto took the scroll and began to read it as his smile grew. Good news. Yeah apparently they are ahead of schedule and need me to finalize a few details. He handed the scroll to Enmatsuki who read it as well. Apparently Kakuaki keeps falling asleep on the job. Anyway where did Ishiki and Denpa head off too? They went back saying they would be more of help there than here. Naruto nodded his head and stretched his arms as he got ready to head off again. That's when he remembered Hinata and before anyone could ask him anything Naruto ran off again. 30. Hyashi was sitting on a pillow watching the breeze blow through the trees when he saw Naruto land on his wall. Naruto what are you in need of now? Naruto jumped down and got to his knees looking at Hyashi with a calm look. Well, my village is in need of me to finalize a few details. Hyashi nodded his head understanding what he was getting at. And since Hinata is an ambassador between the two villages I thought it was best if I could take her with me to see the village. Hyashi sipped his tea and looked at Naruto with no emotion. Yes I talked with Tsunade and she approved of Hinata being the ambassador. Hyashi gently got up and looked at the sky. But I will warn you Uzumaki if she comes home with one scratch one hair missing. I will personally hang you upside down while the Hyuga clan uses you as target practice. Naruto nodded his head as Hyashi called for Hinata who came immediately. She saw Naruto and blushed as Naruto smiled at her. You called father. Hyashi nodded towards Naruto. He is going to his village and since you're the ambassador between Konoha and his village it is only best that you go with him. Hinata felt like jumping up and down in joy, but kept her emotions in check and nodded her head. Now go and pack you shall be gone for a few days. Hinata ran off to get ready that was when Hyashi struck. Naruto never saw it coming one second Hyashi was standing on the porch the next he had his hand on his throat forcing him against the wall. Hinata is one of the most important things in my life you hurt her. Hyashi just left the threat hanging in the air. Naruto nodded his head. I understand. Hyashi narrowed his eyes, but quickly released Naruto after hearing footsteps heading their direction. They both turned to see Hinata carrying a small scroll with a smile as she looked at her father. Ready to go Naruto. Naruto smiled as he nodded at Hinata and began to walk towards Hinata as he looked back at Hyashi who only continued to glare. 30. Naruto appeared at the gate with Hinata as Tsunade turned around. What's going on? Naruto turned to Hinata and smiled at Tsunade. Well, since Hinata is the ambassador between the two villages Hyashi and I thought it would be a good idea if she comes and checks out the village. Before Tsunade could respond they all heard the tapping of a cane on the ground. They all turned to see the old war hawk Donzo walking towards them. What do you want Donzo? Tsunade growled out showing her obvious dislike of the man. I only mean to see Naruto off. Donzo looked at Naruto who smiled at him making Donzo slightly confused, but he kept it hidden. Also if he is taking the ambassador to his village it only makes sense to assign a bodyguard for her. Tsunade's eyes widened as she realized what he was after. I have just the one in mind as well. He is one of my most trusted shinobis he is sure not to let any harm come to young Hinata. Suddenly a kid no older than Naruto appeared beside Donzo with a tanto on his back wearing a smile. This is Sai. If someone is going to be the bodyguard of Hinata it should be a member of the Hyuga clan. Tsunade butted in making Donzo turn to her opening his eye slightly. Welcome to the group. Naruto announced with the biggest smile as he offered Sai his hand. 
Everyone looked at Naruto in shock as he let the boy take his hand and shake it. You have a good grip I guess that comes from practicing with that blade of yours. Yes. Came Sai's solemn reply, but he still kept the smile up. Well then I'm glad to have you aboard. Naruto pulled Sai towards Hinata, but in that split second Naruto turned his body and looked Donzo straight in the eye and smiled even bigger. I thank you for your contributing to making sure that we get to my village safely Donzo-sama. At the sound of the honorific everyone was speechless except for Donzo who simply shrugged it off. You are quite welcome Uzumaki-sama. Naruto knew it killed him to say his last name with the honorific, but he gave the man a polite bow. Tsunade grabbed Naruto as he passed making him turn to her. Are you crazy? Tsunade voice barely above a whisper. He is only aligned with Donzo whatever Donzo told this Sai guy to do he will do it to the letter. I know, but not everyone deserves to be shoved aside just because they serve someone you don't like. Naruto smiled at Tsunade who looked at him stunned. I'll see you guys soon alright don't be do anything fun without me. Naruto smiled as Sai, Hinata, and Enmatsuki walked with him all of them doing the same. Be safe Naruto. Tsunade looked at Naruto as he continued on his walk towards the forest and to his village. Chapter 27, The Homecoming, Part 2 Akumo Ninja slowly approached the wreckage looking saddened and angered at the same time. There is no sign of yugito sama but we did find this. She handed E the torn cloth and when E saw the symbol the electricity erupted out of his body in rage. Where did you find this Samui? The blonde Kunoichi looked towards the small blood pool. Over there. Samui announced as she pointed towards the blood pool. So the Uzumaki knows about us and is now taking his revenge. E smiled, but this wasn't a happy smile this smile was filled with anger and rage. When I find you Uzumaki I'm going to rip your fucking head off. E screamed this to the heavens as Samui just nodded her head with a look of satisfaction in her eyes. 30. Naruto looked around with a confused look as the four of them were packing up their camp. What is it Naruto-sama? Enmatsuki asked as she watched Naruto shake his head. Nothing I thought I heard something right there, Naruto continued to smile as they continued to pack. Sai was already done and was currently drawing in a scroll. Hinata walked forward with a smile and saw his giant bird drawing. Oh, it's beautiful. Sai looked at Hinata and smiled. Thank you, but that is not all it can do. Sai held up his tiger seal and the bird stretched out of the page and grew until it was big enough to carry the four of them. That is some kind jutsu. Hinata smiled at Sai who smiled back. Why do you smile like that? Sai looked at Hinata in confusing until she went further. Naruto used to smile like that when we were kids. He would always smile even when he was hurt, but I could always tell he was hurt somewhere. She turned just as Naruto fell and somehow got his feet and hands tangled up in the rope. And Matsuki just laughed as Naruto asked her to release him from his binds. But now he smiles with real feeling not fake. Maybe you can as well when you find something that truly makes you happy. Hinata left with that to help her boyfriend out of his increasing struggle leaving Sai with his giant bird. Sai stared at his bird and watched as the ink shinned in the sunlight this made Sai smile at seeing his creation his art. How in the world do you get the ropes tied around your hands and feet? And Matsuki laughed as Hinata finally managed to free Naruto who grabbed the rope and stuffed it in the bag. Before Naruto could respond Sai had his giant bird land right in front of everyone with him riding on the back. I thought we could use a faster way of transportation. Naruto smiled as he sealed the camp gear into a scroll and jumped on the bird. Naruto then helped Hinata on board the bird as Enmatsuki jumped and landed just as the bird took off. The group looked at the forest as it flew underneath them, but when Naruto looked at Sai he saw him drawing in a black book. What do you have there Sai? Sai closed the book and looked at Naruto before looking at the book with a sadness in his eyes, but that quickly disappeared into nothing. Memories. Was the only word Sai said and the only thing needed to be said. Naruto looked at the forest below before looking back at Sai. I'm sorry. Sai turned to see Naruto showing generally care. If I may who did you lose? Sai looked at the book for a split second. My brother. Naruto held out his hand. May I look? Sai looked back at the book hesitantly before gingerly handing it to Naruto. Naruto flipped through the right side to see Sai fighting different ninja and then taking their equipment after each victory, but that was when Naruto found at the middle of the book two unfinished pages. The book had another person with grey hair fighting various ninja doing the exact same thing Sai did. Naruto handed the book back to Sai who took it back before stuffing it back into his bag. What happens at the end? What? Sai looked at Naruto confused. Every story in every book has an end, Naruto said with a sad smile. So what happens when you two meet in the middle of the book? 
I don't know I guess after his death I forgot what was going to be the ending, Sai stated this without any sign of emotion. Don't worry I'm sure it will come to you. Naruto patted Sai on the back with a comforting smile. And I'm sure he is proud of you regardless of what happens. Sai looked at Naruto with slight surprise in his eyes, but that was when Naruto smiled and pointed downwards. We're here. Everyone looked and saw Nami no Kuni's bridge with Tazuna, Ishiki, Denpa, Haku, and Kakuaki all waiting on Naruto's arrival. Sai's bird landed gracefully on the ground and let the group off before it turned into a puddle of ink. Tazuna walked up and shook Naruto's hand as he wasted no time and began to lead him away from Nami no Kuni. They continued to walk until they came to a tree stump that looked like it was hit with a lighting bolt. Ready to see the work we put into the new Uzushio Gakur. Naruto smiled and held his hand out to Hinata who took it with a slight smile. Naruto touched the stump and mumbled a single word, but despite Sai's hearing he couldn't make out the word. Suddenly Hinata and Naruto vanished in a swirl of wind making Sai look at Tazuna. You're next, Kakuiki mumbled out as he grabbed Sai's arm and dragged him to the stump. Sai felt as if he was being dragged into a whirlpool, but as quickly as it began it was over. Sai opened his eyes to see that he was on another island, but this one was populated by beautiful trees and streams that ran through the village. The village itself wasn't anything special if anything it looked like a small town, but with two differences. One was the tower that stood above the rest and the wall that surrounded it. Sai continued to look around until Naruto tapped him on the shoulder. Don't get too distracted. Naruto smiled at Sai who continued to look around with amazement. How do you keep it safe? Naruto looked at the area Sai appeared where the seal glowed. That is the only safe way to get here and the location of the seal at Nami no Kuni keeps changing. Sai looked at Naruto confused by what he meant by the only safe way to get here. Naruto smiled and gently turned Sai until he faced the sea and got a shock. The island the village was on was surrounded by giant whirlpools on all sides. If they attempt to get here by water they will never make it far. What about the air? Naruto just smiled and winked at Sai with a mysterious look in his eyes. Oh, I have plenty of ideas for that. Naruto turned around just in time to get tackled by a group of kids. The children all began to jump up and down on Naruto asking him to play with them. Sorry I've got to go and take care of some unfinished business. They all let out a collective sigh. But Sai here will be more than happy to play with you. What? Sai looked at the group of kids as they charged and pounced on the root nin. Naruto watched as Sai struggled to get out of the children's grasp only to get pulled back. Naruto laughed as Sai began to beg Naruto to help him. Naruto left Sai with a wave as Sai tried to get out of the children's death grip. Naruto kept walking until he came across Haku making some ice pillars. What are you up to? Haku turned and smiled at Naruto. I'm trying to finish this jutsu I've been working on. Naruto walked over and touched the ice column and immediately pulled his hand away. Think you made it cold enough. Naruto complained as he began to rub his hands together to warm them up. At any rate how at the air defensives? Haku smiled as he pointed to the second tallest building. It will be done in two days. This brought a smile to Naruto's lips as he gave Haku a handshake before departing. 30. Senji smiled as Hidan and Kakuzu returned with Yugito. Did everything go okay? Senji raised an eyebrow while looking at them. The two of them glared at Senji who simply smiled at them. Why didn't you go with us? Kakuzu growled out as Senji smiled even bigger. It's not my job to babysit you little runts. Hidan pulled out his scythe and took a swing at Senji who gently sidestepped the blade. He reached for Hidan's neck with a cold look in his eyes, but Hidan was quickly pulled away by Kakuzu. Now is not the time. Kakuzu announced as he held his teammate on the ground by black thread. That was when they heard footsteps and when they looked up they saw Pain and Konan looking at them. What is going on here? Senji reached down and picked Yugito and tossed her at Pain's feet. Those two succeeded in capturing the Nibi. Senji turned and walked away with his hands in his pockets. Suddenly Tobi came running at Senji with joy in each of his steps. Senji I want to show you something. Senji's eyes narrowed as he looked into the lone eyehole of Tobi. Please. Senji just grunted and followed after Tobi with a disgruntled look on his face. The two continued to walk until they were both out of eyesight and hearing range of the rest of Akatsuki. So Tobi what is it that? Senji grabbed Madara's arm as he went to punch Senji in the face. Now that wasn't very nice little Madara. Madara growled and yanked his arm back. You are starting to ache on my last nerves. Madara just looked at Senji as he chuckled a little. I'm sorry, but I don't give a shit. Madara and Senji just stood watching each other. Madara slowly began to walk towards Senji with his Sharingan active. How about a deal then? 
Senji looked at Madara with amusement as Madara stood within grabbing distance of Senji. Sorry no deals. Senji suddenly grabbed Madara's arm making his lone eye widened. What you didn't think my jutsu wouldn't negatively affect yours. It takes you a second to activate yours, but the moment you stepped into my personal space the time went up. Madara simply smiled under his mask as he vanished in a poof of smoke. Cage bunshine huh? Senji turned to see Madara standing a good distance away. You want to fight me don't you? Madara announced with amusement making Senji smile. Yes I do. Senji was about to charge when Madara disappeared into a vortex only to reappear in front of him. Senji's eyes widened as Madara brought a kunai up to his throat in a blink of an eye. There I win. Madara looked up at Senji with a smile behind his mask. Little Madara is all grown up now Senji. Madara turned and began to walk away. But I will now be watching you like a hawk Senji. If you so much as step one toe out of line I will kill you on the spot. Senji watched as Madara vanished making Senji touch his neck to feel some blood dripping from the wound. Senji continued to look at the blood on his hand, but then he smiled. That was quite the jutsu Madara. Senji's eyes reflected nothing, but happiness and a little envy. I guess that is just something else to add to my list. Senji began to laugh as he walked back to the hideout. 30. Naruto opened the door to see piles of scrolls unopened and opened everywhere. Naruto looked around and suddenly he came face to face with the owner of the building. She was hanging upside down looking at Naruto with a stern look. Where have you been? She dropped to the floor with an eyebrow raised. She was a thin woman with grey eyes and long blonde hair that fell to the small of her back. Sorry I ran into some trouble with the kids wanting to play. Naruto smiled as the woman scowled and went back to the table. So what are we missing Hanko, Ash Cat? She just looked at him before looking around with a worried look in her grey eyes. What's wrong? I didn't want to put it into the message in case it got intercepted, but you may have a small problem. Naruto took a chair and sat down listening to Hanko. Well, we sent a man to go talk to the villagers in Yokakes, cross winds, but on his way back he heard something very disturbing. What? Naruto looked on with every increasing curiosity. Apparently he decided to take the short route to Nami no Kuni and went through Kaminari no Kuni. Naruto's eyes started to widen as Hanko went further. Now from what he heard while gathering the supplies he needed to get here is that their Jinchuriki of Nibi no Bacon Echo was captured. That wasn't what caught his attention it was when he said an Uzumaki killed her and that the rakage was going to rip him apart for it. I've never been to Kumagakura though. Naruto jumped out of his chair while Hanko tried to calm him down. What evidence do they have that supports this? They found a cloth that had the Uzumaki clan symbol something that only a member of the Uzumaki clan would wear. Naruto gritted his teeth in anger as he paced the room. You have to be careful Naruto, because the rakage is now looking for you and he is out for blood. Naruto looked at her and nodded as he made his way to the door only to be stopped by a kunai. But since you're here you can help me in getting the rest of these scrolls done. Naruto smiled at her as she held up three more kunai with a sweet smile. So thing, Naruto said with a nervous smile as he created two cage bunshines to help out. 30. Two hours later. Naruto walked out of the office flexing his wrist as Hinata came running at him with a smile. You need to go see Sai. Naruto was confused but ran in the direction he left Sai. When he got there he was unmerciful tackled by Hinata. Hinata put a finger to her lips as she pointed out the bush she had tackled Naruto into. The children Sai was supposed to play with was in the multiple arms of a giant octopus almost like a swing. The children were all laughing and had smiles on their faces, but that was when Naruto saw Sai. He was standing just a foot or more away from his creation with a small little girl. You sure? Sai nodded and gave her a small push towards the octopus. The octopus turned one eye towards the girl as some water was gently splashed on him by Sai. The octopus gently lowered his arms to allow the girl to get on. When she got on the octopus began to swing slowly at first seeing the girl frightened, but as she slowly got more comfortable he began to swing a little more. Naruto continued to look at Sai as he saw a smile spread out on the young boy's face. That was when Naruto and Hinata decided to come out of hiding. Sai turned and saw Naruto giving him a small wave as Naruto approached him. Hey Sai you having fun? Just doing what you order me to. Naruto looked at Sai who still supported his smile. But that's just it Sai I never order you to watch and play with them. Sai's eyes widened a little at that as Naruto reached and grabbed his black book out of his bag. And even if I did you are enjoying yourself because you have a true smile on your face. Sai looked away as Naruto pressed his book against his arm. I think you know the ending to the book now. Sai grabbed the book and watched as Naruto walked away. He opened it to the middle of the book and flipped it between the two pages seeing himself and his brother fighting that was when it hit him. 
Sai smiled down at the empty spaces and took out his pen. Naruto walked with Hinata hand in hand as they walked through the village seeing nothing, but happy contented villagers. Hinata smiled and rested her head against Naruto's shoulder causing him to smile. A lady selling flowers gently picked out a couple of roses and gave them to Hinata without any charge saying it was for a lovely couple. This made both of them blush as they continued on towards their destination. What Hinata saw took her breath away as she looked off a cliff that overlooked the sea with the sun just hitting the water casting an orange glow everywhere. The two gently sat down and looked out to sea with smiles as they leaned on each other. This is beautiful Naruto. Hinata finally said as Naruto gently rubbed her shoulder. I was thinking of building a house somewhere near here. Hinata smiled at the thought as the two continued to watch as the sun went down. That was when they decided to go and fetch Sai and get some sleep before they leave tomorrow. When they got back the octopus was gone and so were the kids, but Sai was still there laying on the ground with his book on his stomach opened. When Naruto opened it he saw the ending of the book it showed him and his brother shaking hands as they smiled at each other. Sai gently opened his eyes as Hinata shook him awake. Come one sleepy head we need to get to the hotel. Sai nodded as he stood up and saw Naruto hand him his book. He would be proud. Naruto smiled as he patted Sai on the back. Now let's get something to eat I'm starving. This made the two laugh, but at the sound of his laugh Sai stopped. Where did that come from? Sai was confused until Hinata tapped him on the shoulder. You okay? Hinata looked at Sai with worry as he smiled. I'm fine just not used to laughing is all. Hinata smiled at Sai as the three of them continued on to the hotel to get some room service. 30. E was seating in his office when his assistant walked in. Rakage sama I have something that might just calm your anger. E just glared at his assistant who just smiled. We know who he is. This made E jump to his feet and suddenly be right in front of the young woman. Who is he? She could see in his eyes that he was both excited and anger to know who killed Yugito. Naruto Uzumaki, she said this plainly as he eased back as he stared out the window. One of your ninja managed to overhear a group of merchants talking about a new Uzumaki. So after convincing them he managed to get his full name. What about his location? This is where she grew quiet. What is it? Well before he could continue the merchants apparently had some bombs with them. He immediately knew what happened. But with his name we can at least know who we are looking for. Rakeage was quiet for a while making the assistant nervous. What's wrong? I think I know where to start our search. He looked at his map and saw the image of Konoha. Sir you can't be serious. He turned to her with hate in his eyes. We went to war against Konoha before they aren't just going to let us just walk in. Who says we are just going to walk in? He walked behind his desk and sat down. You're suggesting we go to war with them. He looked out the window. I'm not suggesting anything, but we are paying Konoha a visit. The assistant knew it was useless to argue with E and simply bowed her head and walked out. I'm going to get my hands on you Uzumaki and then I will avenge you Gito. E looked away just as lightning flashed in his window. 30. Naruto awoke with a strange feeling that something bad was going to happen, but he ignored it to make sure Hinata didn't worry. As Naruto got out of the bed there was a knock on the door. Naruto opened the door to find a man covered in grime and soot as he carried in bag that jingled with each step. Kensa, heavenly chain, I see you're doing well. Kensa looked at Naruto with brown eyes and nodded his head. Yeah I finished the project you assigned me. He took out two arm guards that fit around Naruto's arm completely. The guards had the Uzumaki symbol engraved onto the sides and was a pale blue color. And Uzushio's guards? Kensa smiled as he put Naruto's arms through the metal guards who was surprised by how light the two things were. I used the pieces as the base just as you requested. Naruto smiled as he looked at the guards. Almost a year into his training Naruto tried to find out how much the arm guards could take, but after just two attempts the arm guards shattered. Naruto not wanting to lose a family heirloom decided to keep the pieces until he could find someone to repair them. This is probably one of the best work I've done in a while. Thank you for giving me the privilege Naruto-sama. Naruto nodded his head as Tensa headed for the door still wearing a smile of pure joy. Naruto sat down while he took out some ink and began to go to work on making some new seals on his new addition. Naruto heard the floorboards creak and turned to see Hinata fully awake rubbing the sleep from her eyes. Hey, sleeping beauty. This brought a smile and blush to Hinata's face as she gave Naruto a kiss. You ready to get going? Yeah all I need is to change my clothes. She turned as she grabbed her clothes and went into the bathroom. Sai woke up from his bed and set out to get out of his clothes and into fresh ones. So when are we going? Sai asked as he stretched his back and looked at Naruto. As soon as Hinata gets out. Sai nodded and sat down on the couch. 
Naruto narrowed his eyes as he couldn't shake the weird feeling he was having. All I can hope is that it's just a worried feeling about getting Hinata hurt, Naruto continued to work, but all the while he kept getting distracted by the weird feeling, but little did Naruto know his feeling would soon be proven true. Chapter 28, Senji's Plan Naruto, Hinata, and Sai approached the gates of Konoha when they saw three people waiting for them. As they got closer they turned out to be Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Danzo. Welcome back Naruto, Tsunade said with a smile. I hope everything went okay with your trip to your village. Yes everything went fine. Naruto smiled at everyone including Danzo who only narrowed his eye at him. Through I do have to spend a lot more time over there now. With that said Naruto handed Tsunade his Konoha headband. I'll still be sticking around for at least one more week, but I won't be able to perform any missions. Tsunade nodded her head and took the headband from Naruto. Danzo made a small motion with his hand to Sai who knew what he wanted. I must be off. Sai gave a small bow to Naruto before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Naruto looked towards Danzo and noticed he was gone as well. Good luck Sai, Naruto mumbled under his breath. 30. So did you do what I requested? Danzo looked down at Sai's bowed form. Did you set up the observation seals around his village? Sorry Danzo-sama, but he kept me too busy to do anything. It wasn't a total lie he was busy doing other things. I was expecting as much. At this Sai raised his head to look and saw Danzo drumming his fingers on his cane. A good leader never allows a strange shinobi to wander his village without being followed or took the precautions to make sure he didn't do anything to hurt his village. Danzo was about to turn around when Sai opened his mouth, but quickly closed it. Is there something you want to ask Sai? Sai looked at the ground and closed his eyes. I wish to stay as the bodyguard for Hinata. Danzo eye opened and narrowed at the young root member. That would be the best course of action, Danzo continued to watch Sai with a calculated gaze. Very well you may remain as her bodyguard. That was when he saw it. Sai's mouth turned upwards in a very small smile. Thank you Danzo-sama. Before Danzo could say one more word Sai vanished. Danzo contemplated what he just saw as he began to walk through the darkness. 30. Pain looked up just as Kakuzu and Hidan walked in. Where have you two been? Well he decided to kill a Konoha nin. Hidan pointed at Kakuzu who was busy training to destroy a rock by crushing it. But sadly we didn't get to keep his body since his team and some other people decided to crash the party. Pain narrowed his eyes as he turned to see Senji sitting on a rock with a smirk. Okay, but time to capture the QB. Senji stopped his smile and looked at Pain. Hidan, Kakuzu, and Senji will go and capture him. Understand. The three of them nodded and Senji looked the happiest out of all of them. The group slowly made its way out, but not before Pain gave his last order. But draw him out of Konoha. You three can't fight all of Konoha by yourselves. The three of them were confused about how to go about that, but nodded their heads regardless except for Senji who simply smirked even bigger. I guess it's time to stop pretending, Senji chuckled as he followed his partners out the door. 30. Naruto was sad to hear about the death of Asuma. He was a man of his word someone Naruto could respect and now he was gone. Naruto went and talked with Shikamaru and heard how he was planning out how to get the two Akatsuki members back for killing his sensei and Kurenai husband. Naruto left Shikamaru and went to the forest to work on his new seal. As the day progressed Naruto realized how dark it was getting and decided to turn in when he was tackled from behind. Naruto looked up to see Hinata smiling down at him. Naruto smiled right back and gave Hinata a big hug. What are you doing up? Naruto finally asked as Hinata kissed him on the cheek. Well, I thought you could use some company. Hinata leaned up until Naruto could sit up with her. So what are you or two? Hinata looked at all the trees around them and saw that most of them were crushed by some sort of force. I'm working on something secret. Naruto gave Hinata a playful smile. So no peeking. Hinata smiled even bigger and gave Naruto another hug, but this time the two didn't separate just sat there watching the sun as it went down. 30. Shikamaru was waiting at the gate with Choji and Ino. So are we ready? The two of them nodded and was about to head out when a voice stopped them. And where do you think you're going? The turn to see Tsunade. We are going to avenge Asuma's death. Shikamaru announced with no hesitation. Don't be stupid. Tsunade stopped when she heard footsteps approach behind them. She turned around to see Naruto, Hinata, and Kakashi. What is it you three? We're here to help. Naruto announced shocking everyone except for Hinata and Kakashi. Since Enmatsuki had to stay to fix the village up and provide some protection I wish to help them. Tsunade was about to protest, but Kakashi beat her to it. 
You can't tell him what he can't do Hokage-sama. Kakashi gave her a sad eye smile. Tsunade looked at the ground with sadness in her eyes. Fine, but you six be careful. The group nodded and began to exit the gate when Naruto asked the question. So what are we going to do first O oh leader of ours? Naruto smirked at the tired frown he got from Shikamaru. The group stopped short of the village and Shikamaru began to explain the plan that now included Naruto, Kakashi, and Hinata. After completing the plan Naruto smiled at Shikamaru and nodded his head. 30. Hidan was in front of Senji and Kakuzu fuming over having Senji in their group again. You know you should be watching where you're going, Senji said plainly as Hidan turned and glared at Senji. Shut the fuck up. Senji shrugged his shoulders as he continued to walk. I should kill. Senji suddenly grabbed Hidan and threw him into a tree cracking it just as kunai with explosive tags were thrown. I told you watch where you're going. Senji closed his eyes and suddenly everything seemed to slow down as Senji slowly opened his eyes and gently grabbed one of the kunai and threw it at the others making them explode. Now come out. The six-man team emerged from the forest wearing scowls. Now we can talk like civilized people. Senji smiled a sinister sneer as he looked at the group. Shikamaru who the hell is that? Kakashi asked as he looked at Shikamaru who shrugged his shoulder. I don't know he. He was interrupted by someone pushing past him. Senji. The group looked at Naruto as he pulled off his staff and slammed it into the ground. When he looked at Senji his eyes turned from blue to reddish-orange just like a fire was lit in his eyes. Uzumaki. Senji's sneer turned into a grin as the two groups just looked the individuals. Suddenly in a flash both of them were charging at each other. Senji pulled out a scroll that turned into a giant double-sided axe. The two swung their weapons and with a clang created a small crater underneath them. Nice strength. That means this is going to be fun. Senji and Naruto jumped backwards just as Naruto began to spin his staff. Senji watched in fascination as Naruto's staff suddenly became a small twister. Naruto what's wrong? Hinata screamed out over the wind screeching. Naruto turned to her and slowly turned away. He was the one who instigated the death of my clan. Was the only thing needed to say. This brought a smile to Senji's face. Why are you smiling? Naruto growled this out as he prepared to cut Senji in two. It's funny. This brought a confused look to Naruto. It's funny because judging from the tone in your voice you think you can beat me. Naruto suddenly vanished and was above Senji swinging his staff in a downward arch. Suddenly the area Senji was standing on was consumed by a small dome of wind. The groups all watched as the wind began to rip tiny chunks of earth out of the ground and slice them in two. As the wind began to die down the group saw Senji holding his axe to block the staff as Naruto simply glared at him. That was fun. Senji pushed forward and Naruto, to his great surprise, was sent backwards his feet skidding across the ground. Naruto looked behind him just in time to he was about to smack into a rock. Naruto used the momentum from the shove and back flipped over the rock and landed on his feet behind it. Naruto swung his staff at the boulder and sent it flying at Senji who brought his axe down and cut the giant rock in two. Naruto looked around and saw his friends all looking at him with worry. I'm fine. Naruto simply said as he walked towards Senji. How about we take this elsewhere? Senji grinned even bigger, but before anything could be said Hidan suddenly jumped from the tree he was hiding in and brought his scythe down. Naruto saw the blade shine, but he wouldn't be able to react in time so he braced for the impact. Kakashi suddenly appeared behind Hidan and slammed him with his Reikiri straight through the back. Blood shot out of Hidan's mouth as Kakashi swung him away from Naruto and towards Senji who simply sidestepped his comrade. Naruto are you okay? Naruto gave him a nod as he turned his attention back to Senji. What do you say? Naruto watched as Senji placed the axe on his shoulder with ease. Sure. Kakuzu grabbed Senji by the shoulder and spun him around until they were facing each other. We are supposed to. He was interrupted by Senji kicking him in the stomach and sending him flying into a boulder. I don't care. Senji's statement shocked everyone. I never was a part of Akatsuki and you know what I never was. I had my own reasons to do what I did and it was this, kill Naruto Uzumaki. Everyone looked from Senji to Naruto who just stared each other down. So where would like your grave? Naruto gritted his teeth, but turned and looked at his group. I promise to back in just a second. Hinata just cried some tears as Naruto smiled at her. I promise I'll be back safe. He walked towards Hinata and gave her a kiss and turned to see Senji patiently waiting. Come on. Naruto disappeared in a burst of speed with Senji right behind him. A crunching of rocks singled that both Kakuzu and Hidan was emerging from the craters they were slammed in. Hidan's neck was broken from the impact, but was no correcting the odd angle. 
He reached up and grabbed his hair and with a sickening crack he fixed his neck. I told you he was trouble. Hidan looked at Kakuzu as his brown color receded. We'll have to inform our leader about this. Kakuzu cracked his neck as he loosened up for the fight ahead. Choji made his hands grow to an immense size, Ino had backed into the tree line to provide backup, Shikamaru took out Asuma's trench knives, Kakashi had a kunai out, and Hinata activated her Byakugan. This is going to be so tedious. Was Kakuzu's response as he changed back to his brown color. 30. Naruto stopped on a bearing landscape with nothing around except for dead trees. This is good enough. He turned to see Senji sitting on a rock with his axe in the ground. How can you be so calm? Because I expected you to be older, Senji chuckled at the thought. But instead you're a kid, albeit a strong one, but still just a toddler to me. I hope you won't back down just because of that. Naruto brought his staff down as it was turned into its twister form. No I still plan on grinding you bones into dust. Senji got off the rock with a smile still plastered on his face. But I won't have the luxury of playing around with you first. Naruto's eyes narrowed at Senji's choice of words. I do have one question for you. Senji stopped walking towards Naruto and tilted his head to one side. I read your old file when you were in Uzushiogakur and you were the most praised ninja they had. Yeah so. Senji's grip on his axe handle tightened. So my question is why did you betray your home? This brought a small smile to Senji's face as he looked towards Naruto. Well if you beat me then I will tell you. Naruto nodded his head and charged just as Senji did as well. The two swung their weapons at the same time and both were consumed by the small explosion that was created. 30. Kakashi narrowly missed getting his head chopped off by Hidan. After Naruto went with Senji Kakashi managed to kill Kakuzu, but he just stood back up. We've got to separate them. Came Shikamaru's reply as he was standing back observing the way the two fight. They use each other to a point that it is second nature. If we can get those two away from one another then we stand a better chance than fighting them together. Kakashi nodded his head as he looked at Hinata and Choji who nodded as well. The three charged at Kakuzu who was surprised slightly by all of them attacking him. Kakashi opened his Sharingan eye and Kakuzu watched as it morphed into his Mangekyo. Kakuzu remembered what Datara told them about Kakashi's Mangekyo power and quickly got out of the eye's line of sight, but that was when he noticed the shadow right above him. He looked up to see Choji falling towards him, but before he knew what happened Choji transformed into a giant that crushed Kakuzu. Hidan was about to charge in, but suddenly found that he couldn't move. He looked down and saw that his shadow and Shikamaru's were connected. Gotcha! Shikamaru announced as he made Hidan drop his weapon. Shikamaru looked towards Kakashi who nodded his head. Shikamaru turned and smiled a small smile at Hidan. Let's take a walk. Shikamaru began to run towards the only forest for that could be seen. A sudden groan got everyone's attention back on Choji who was slowly being lifted up into the air. Get off me! Kakuzu threw Choji into the air with great strength and watched as Choji smacked into the earth causing the entire ground to shake. I don't have time to play around. Suddenly Kakuzu took off his cloak and revealed four different masks with one of them broke. The mask suddenly began to move and push against Kakuzu's skin until they ripped out of his back. Suddenly Kakuzu had four different creatures each with a different look to them, but all of them made out of that strange black thread. Kakuzu looked at the one that had the broken mask just as it fell to the ground and slowly turned into black mush with only the mask showing that it had been there. You destroyed one of my hearts I guess I'll need a replacement. The tone of his voice sent shivers down everyone's spines. Stay on your guard. Kakashi narrowed his eyes as one of the creatures opened its mouth. Suddenly a fireball appeared between its two jaws. Scatter. They all narrowly missed the giant wave of flame that nearly engulfed them. The group didn't have time to stop as another masked beast opened its mouth and shot lightning at them. Doton, Katon, and now Rayton. Kakashi couldn't believe what he was seeing. This one shinobi had already used three of the five elemental chakra. This guy is dangerous. Kakashi growled out as he saw the final mask open and unleash a giant wave of wind that uprooted all the trees it came into contact with. Kakashi knew he was in trouble he wouldn't be able to dodge the attack, but just as it neared Hinata jumped in front of the attack. Hinata get back. But Hinata didn't listen she stood her ground as she entered a stance Kakashi never saw Hyuga use before. She began to spin her arms around in a crisscrossing manner in front of her body. Shugo Haki Rakuju Ion SHO, protection of the 8 trigram 64 palms. As Hinata exclaimed her jutsu's name she had created a wall of what appeared to be a fence made out of chakra. The wind attack smacked into it and Hinata almost knocked back, but she dug her feet in and held her ground. Kakuzu narrowed his eyes as his futon attack slowly died out along with Hinata's attack. 
that is some defensive move you got there kid, Kakuzu said with a note of respect in his voice. But that won't save you from this. The futon mask and the katan mask suddenly opened their mouths and fired their attacks together. Everyone watched as the fire began an inferno that turned the remaining trees into ash. The three shinobi realized the trouble they were in, but before the attack could hit they heard a new voice. Sutan, Hanryu, water release, tearing torrent. A giant wave of spiraling water smacked into the fire wave and the two battled it out for dominance, but the water eventual won out. Then two newcomers came to view one of them Hinata immediately knew who it was. Sai. Sai turned and smiled at Hinata. I'm you personal bodyguard Hinata, Sai said simply, but when he turned to Kakuzu his eyes became hard and his smile turned into a frown. And I won't let anyone hurt my friends. Hinata eyes widened at Sai's words. After Sai finished his book Naruto approached him and offered him his friendship. Sai was confused he didn't understand what Naruto meant by that, but after a few minutes of talking and convincing Sai became obsessed to see what friends were all about. Naruto spent a few hours telling him that learning about friends isn't something you can read, but something you find in your heart. Sai spent some time trying to figure out what Naruto meant, but after his words Hinata realized he must know what it means to have friends. The other guy had Kakashi breath a sigh of relief. Kenzo, heavenly creation, I'm glad you're here. The man turned and smiled at Kakashi. Actually it's Yamato now. Yamato turned back to the man before them as the thread creatures drew closer to him. But before we do anything else let's take care of him. The group nodded their heads and stared at their opponent. 30. Hidan watched as Shikamaru finished laying out the kunai bombs. You really don't want me to go anywhere do you, Hidan stated as Shikamaru retracted his shadow. But you made a mistake thinking I couldn't handle myself. Hidan suddenly whipped out a long spike and charged at Shikamaru. Shikamaru pulled back as the blade passed by his face, but not fast enough. When Shikamaru looked up he had blood dripping down the side of his face. Hidan smiled at the blood on his weapon as he licked it and turned into a skeleton-like figure. Time to die. Shikamaru watched as he stabbed himself in the chest right where his heart was, but Shikamaru just smiled as a small vial ran down his hand. What the fuck did you do? Hidan screamed with mounting panic and anger. Well, when Kakashi stabbed Kakuzu through the chest he took some of his blood. That was when Hidan realized what he had done. Sorry, but you just killed one of your teammates' hearts. Hidan ripped the spike out of his chest and had a look of pure hate in his eyes. I'll still kill you fucking heretic. Hidan charged, but didn't get far as ninja wire wrapped around his entire body and attached all the explosive tags to him. No I'm afraid you are the one dying today. Shikamaru threw Asuma's lit lighter at the explosive tags just as the ground below Hidan collapsed revealing a pit. As the fire touched the tags the force of the explosion shook the ground as pieces of Hidan fell into the pit. Shikamaru looked over the edge and looked down at Hidan. I will kill you. Hidan muttered as he watched Shikamaru pull a kunai out of his pouch. I will. Shikamaru's eyes widened as Hidan's head vanished in a puff of smoke. What the fuck? Shikamaru looked around, but couldn't find any sign of Hidan. Growling to himself Shikamaru ran in the direction of Kakuzu and the rest of his group minus Naruto. 30. Kakuzu's Raten mask fell to the ground to everyone's great surprise. Damn it I knew you did something to me when you stabbed me. Kakuzu glared at Kakashi who only I smiled at Kakuzu. Suddenly the two remaining masks jumped and began to merge with Kakuzu making sick ripping sounds in the process. When it was all over Kakuzu stood looking at the Konoha shinobi with his two masks on his shoulder and black thread all around his body like tails of some sort. I'm ending this now. To everyone's surprise Sai walked forward as he bit his thumb and pulled out a scroll. Kushios no jutsu. Sai slammed his palm on the ground and in a giant cloud of smoke he brought out his summon. The octopus was larger than last time and had spikes at the end of each of its tentacles. Sai opened the scroll and wrapped it around the octopus's head while water gently poured out of his head. Now you die. Sai looked at Kakuzu directly in the eye as everyone else prepared to do what was necessary to finish this man off. 30. Senji evaded Naruto's wind funnel as he smiled as blood dripped from a cut on his head. Senji was about to charge when a puff of smoke appeared next to him. When Naruto looked down he saw the head of Hidan who looked around confused. You what did you do? Senji smiled as he picked Hidan's head up. You're not looking well today, Senji chuckled as Hidan growled. How am I here? Hidan watched as Senji's smile grew. I placed a regular transference seal on your head when you weren't paying attention. Senji began to throw Hidan's head up and down. Now you are nothing, but a useless head. Fuck you. Hidan screamed out. I will kill you for what you've done to me. No you won't. 
Senji simply said as he threw Hidan's head and caught it by the back of the head. I'm afraid you are the one to die. He squeezed the head causing it to explode covering Senji's arm and hand in blood, skull, and brain matter. Naruto stood there in shock at what he just saw Senji do. WH? I already said why. Senji turned his smile to Naruto. I was never a part of Akatsuki my only reason for joining them was to get closer to you. The reason why is so I can kill you. Now that Hidan is out of the way we can stop holding back. Naruto gently placed his staff on his back while he gripped his right arm. Senji held out his axe and grinned like a man possessed. Naruto created his futon Rasengan as Senji charged forcing Naruto to charge as well. Senji swung his axe just as Naruto threw his Rasengan forward. The two weapons met and then with a force of a small bomb going off both Naruto and Senji disappeared in dust and rock. Alright guys, that's it for the video. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. As always, the rest of the story is already out over on Patreon, link to that will be in the description. Anyways, until next time, peace.